The following program is a collection of stooges talking about happenings in the sports world. It is meant to be comedic informative. The opinions expressed on this show do not necessarily reflect the beliefs of their peers, their boss, or ESPN. There may be some cuss words because that's how humans in the real world talk. If you are young, please seek permission before watching any further. Hey! Why? Let's go! This show stinks, and the fact that you listen, we are very, very thankful for it. Ah! The all-time leading tackler for the Green Bay Packers, you pick! Damn it! Be a friend, tell a friend something nice it could change their life. Hello, beautiful people, and welcome to Radio Row here at the Mandalay Bay Convention Center on this WWE press conference mayhem, Radio Row Thursday, February 8th. This sir starts now. Football. One of the longest titles we've ever attempted Ooh. on this particular program, and we are so incredibly lucky to be back live here at Radio Row at Mandalay Bay Convention Center as the atmosphere has picked up. The superstars have started to pile in. The shows from all around the globe are broadcasting from right in this room. Room, and we are so thankful to be one of them. Now, I'm not alone today. No, no, I'm with a great, great group of characters. Oh, yeah. Obviously, the Toxic Table is here at Boston Connor and at Ty Schmidt. Con man, one of your best shirts you've ever put on, pal. Yeah, yeah, this, this is what I've been kind of talking about. Okay, <laughs> I've been saying about these Super Bowl shirts, and you guys are saying, hey, are you blowing your load too early? Are, are you wearing mm. stuff that I you, did hear people saying sh- that. you should be of, saving? Of- no. I'm not, okay? These are this shirt I got in August. This has been sitting Ooh. in my closet for quite some time. I've been looking at it for a while. I believe it shrunk a little bit over that time period. Uh, I thought about wearing it last night to you 2 I decided not to. Thank God I didn't do that because that would have been a huge win <laughs> of a good shirt. But, <laughs> what? Uh, I mean, I'm this feeling great. I'm we're feeling a minute 50. Yeah, I mean, you know it's coming I'm early. feeling great. I'm feeling good about where we're at. <laughs> Thursday is always a crazy day. That's why the title the show is such a is such a long and elaborate thing because of what this yeah. Thursday yeah. is going to bring. So I'm I'm feeling fantastic, and you know Vegas is really really taking over a little for me. I, I'm just loving it right now. Yeah, Vegas has had you for the last uh, few days. Yeah, uh, yeah, Ty Schmidt, you've certainly had a time here in Las Vegas <laughs> as Absolutely. well. First time we've seen you on this set, not in full hockey pads. Great shift yesterday. Hey, I appreciate yeah, it, boys. Thank you, boys. You've really yeah. been giving your all, and uh, I think Vegas has been the perfect host for a Super Bowl. Yeah. Without a doubt, they should do the Super Bowl here every single year. I mean, yeah, my voice is a little raspy. Okay, and it's, <laughs> it's it's a a battle just getting out here and not sounding like a complete asshole. But <laughs> boy, we've uh, we've had a, a pretty good time the last couple of days. We have. Last night was awesome. So fun. Um, the sphere is incredible. <laughs> it really the sphere is. The sphere is phenomenal. It is every, every. The sphere is the show. Yeah, it's everything. It's cracked. Well, up. Um, listen, I don't want to offend. <laughs> Okay, that's not what we're trying to do. We're not trying to get up here and offend people and make people <laughs> upset when we got the Super Bowl no. just a few days. Positive vibes. Uh, positive, positive vibes. Positive vibes. Good vibes. Positive yeah. vibes. I'll be honest. I thought I was a, a U2 fan <laughs> going into last night's show just because you kind of get swept up in the pomp and circumstance and everything, and it was really cool. Um, I, I realized pretty quick. I'm, I'm not a U2 guy. <laughs> in fact, I'd, I'd go as far as to say U2 sucks. No. <laughs> Ty. I, Auto? Jeez. Ty. Do you, do you have any idea? It's all right. Well, it's all right. right. It's all right. We didn't hear that song. Did we, hear that? we didn't. And that's the problem um, <laughs> is the set list was we even asked Foss, who's a top uh, tier. Generation. Oh, yeah, generation. Uh, fodder. YouTube fan. It's fodder. 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 YouTube fan. Asked him afterwards. I was like, hey, shoot me straight. You know, I know we're all kind of giving you a tough. How was that? And he was like, boy, that was a letdown. It was a letdown. The set list was no songs that we knew. It's I mean, for two knew. hours straight. Twenty five songs. I legitimately didn't know one word to but any of the songs. Sphere was awesome. Sphere, Sphere was, was awesome. Sphere was awesome. Sphere is incredible. Sphere was awesome. Let's, let's, the technology's great. Unbelievable. Let's I'm maybe, excited to see another band in there. Bingo. Yeah. Let's maybe let's maybe cut the residency short. You know. <laughs> Bono. Go 
go figure something out. Okay. <laughs> what? What Jesus. we saw last night. I, I wasn't the Bono. I was, uh, uh, you know, I was cracking up in my own head. Like, what do you Bono mean? Bono waltzed wrong. onto that stage last night and owned that place. Floated. Did he? he did. Did, was it Bono? Because I'm not sold. I'm not sold. All right. Let's, you we're not doing that this. Stage we're not doing this. I, I didn't don't. expect it was going to be a minute 15 into this. We're going to bring it up. You couldn't help yourself, obviously. I, mean, I was doing? trying to give you a nice Super Bowl welcome what? with that T-shirt. And all you can say is, happy you didn't waste this shirt on that stupid YouTube what show if, last what night. What do I said, what have we been so juiced up to do for so long? Go to that mother f- sphere. And oh. what do we do? Way we, to do that. Good we discipline. Go, we go to the sphere right off the bat. Nightmare. Hey, you're parking over here. No, just well, you're parking over there. Okay, sphere. Well, it looks cool. Before the show started, there was a bird flying around up there. Yep. And obviously, as you two gets going, whoa, you got like 75, the 80 yards. Cool. The sphere yeah, it is, is yeah. very cool. It's a live stream, that, too. That thing, whatever this is pretty trippy. Here. This is wow. pretty trippy. Is a tribute to Elvis in Vegas, I believe. Yeah, and the sphere is the show. So if you go there, know that the wall is what we're here for. I don't think right. you two knows the sphere is the show. Now, they also, they put a thousand words in front of our face to start this thing where I thought they were trying to hypnotize me They're with that activity. Uh, yeah. But then Bono came on afterwards and says, oh, about love. I'm like, well, you just had 2,000 <laughs> negative words right, right in front of my face. But then he started. Yeah, doing oh, yeah. <laughs> little. Gallivanting around. And it, I mean, looking at the camera halfway through and. Oh, there you are. <laughs> yeah, that was, I mean, he does. That was awesome. He's a showman. He's a showman. He's a showman. He's a showman. Ba- 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 is a showman out there. He's a showman for sure. But, but, but they should have played a song that people know yeah. for two hours. I mean, and when we first we we've been doing the hello hello bit oh, for no. for four months, doesn't play it. That's what the first song for a concert. If you make that yep. song, boom, because you can say hello hello. But who are we? Hello. we We've only been one time. I'm sure they understand more. Let's move along here. One half of the hammer. Ah, Cowboys Tone Diggs was there. He loved what Bono was putting down last I, night. I loved his vibes, the way he moves. It reminded me of uh, Fokker, Meet the Fockers, the dad who does the chup- Chupacabra dancing. That was awesome. And like, Dustin Hoffman? Just the, yeah, play? just the way he vibed was awesome. First 10 songs, didn't know one of them, but it was awesome because the sphere was the show. And then they decided they were just going to put Bono's big face up on the, the back oh. wall for five songs of the slowest songs that we've ever heard. And no, they did not use the wall for 45 minutes straight. That, yeah. was, that, that was a miss. At all. That was a bad idea, especially with us rolling in there tired. Now, I will say, yeah. one of us had a whole round of golf with Phil Mickelson. Oh, yeah. And then an incredible Bellagio dinner. Yeah. Having oh. maybe some of the greatest 24 hours in Vegas, he saw Bono in the sphere in golf shoes. Ladies and gentlemen, Darius Ball. Legit. Wow. Thank you much, much for yeah. that. Spike still had it on. <laughs> um, I think Dana said use about 5%. Of the um, yep. capabilities, I think, so. I, I, think yeah. I think I'd agree with that. I think I, he left us hanging with some of the, some of the gimmicks that I thought he could have went a little further with. Uh, the songs I didn't come in expecting to know a bunch of the songs. I expected to know at least at least two. Right, how, give me two. How was Phil Mickelson? I mean, Phil was awesome. We started when he came on the show. He was great, but in person, you know, super approachable. So played nine with him, the front nine with him. I actually had to warm up in the bay right next to Phil Mickelson. Obviously, he's a lefty, so he's legit staring right at me. Nice. So, of course, pitch a wedge, get the first one. Shank it, yeah. of course. <laughs> I mean, so much dirt came up. It was all over with quarter zip. Uh, probably flew in his eye. Worst start possible. The worst start possible. Uh, my caddy was like, hey, I was. I knew that was going to happen. Anybody, that would have happened. And, uh, you know, Shank went in, tried to get a practice screen a few minutes later. Not went into his area. He didn't really say anything until about you know three minutes later. Like, hey, just want to let you know I saw that. I saw <laughs> it. Uh, but nobody cares how you play today. Let's just have a good time. But um, most importantly, I played my best golf. I didn't. I didn't embarrass the program. Man, hey, we appreciate that. Yeah, 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 yeah. I held it down for the cool. Multiple compliments and lessons from Phil. Uh, Drake May was out there as well in the group. Will Levis and then uh, Harold Varner on the back now. So real golf. quick, uh, we'll talk about. Varner, third hour or something like yep. that. And we certainly <laughs> love the way he golfs, and we appreciate his mentality. Yep. Phil Mickelson, sweet. We'll continue to learn, hopefully. Mm-hmm. You were with Drake May. Yeah. Big topic of conversation coming up to draft yeah. week here. Yeah. You, you spent how much time with Drake May yesterday? Probably four and a half, five hours, maybe. Damn. With Not only Drake, uh, his father, his agent, um, his uncle. Okay. Um, and we hated him? Honestly. And uh, this is what front offices are for, coaches. This is what the process is for. And uh, he's, you know, in the top two or three names in the draft. I take him one. Okay, we okay. love him. We loved him. We didn't hate him at all. We but loved him. I, I take him one. You know, we know what it is. You wouldn't be in that conversation to be one of the top picks if you didn't have the talent. Uh, big, big country boy. 
big guy, you know, loves ball, talked about ball a lot, talked about his time at UNC. Um, his family was awesome. A lot, a lot of shit talking from the family, which I love. I yes. grew up like that. Brothers, uncles, pops, you know, go talk shit. Hey, Drake, at some point you're going to get back in the game. Okay. We're going to play from this Titleist 4 all day. Okay, nice. We played from the, uh, the tee shot, wherever had the best tee shot out of the three of us. So, um, top. You top guy on the board for me. Okay. Now, hey. I, hey, I spent four and a half hours with, with Jaden or Caleb. It may, you know, it may sway, but where I'm at right now, as far as being in the locker room, Chuck, AJ, Pat, you guys know, hey, it's more than what happens on the field. It's locker room guy. Hey. Put on the ticker. d yeah, yeah, said yeah. Drake yeah. Main, number one overall pick after me. golfing with him. Today. Take Big yeah. news. And That's huge news. That's breaking speaking news. Of, yes. Speaking of, his, um, who was it? Either his dad or his uncle. Oh, hey, they all look hey, the same. Hey, tell Pat. Hey, don't short my boy Drake now. Whoa, 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 <laughs> whoa, whoa, whoa. I'm, he, I'm he, on his he, side. He's the one. So I don't know what you've been saying, what, what's, but he big he lost, fan of you, he obviously. Lost, but, he uh, lost in a non-sold-out stadium against a team that didn't even have 30% capacity. Can't have that happen. Yep. Can't have yeah, that yeah, happen. Yeah. We're on national championship run. But with that being mm -hmm. said, he had offers to go play for teams that had a lot more talent than that UNC team, and he refused to do it, which leads even more into the type of duty. Like, yeah. I, I, everybody's thinking once they meet Drake May, it's going to be like, uh, yeah. okay, yeah. he's... Right? Yeah. Huge. Big boy. Big boy. So Will Levis was there too, so he was, you know, they're comparable. And so I would say Drake right now is a little little more lanky, but um, you can see in probably two years he, he'll look like a Justin Herbert, you know, type of guy. I'm happy you had a great 24 hours. Yeah, it was awesome. Uh, AJ Hawk is here, Super Bowl champion. Baby, AJ. Oh, AJ, you had sunglasses on at one point during, uh, <laughs> during U2 last night. You're a noted U2 fan. We're pumped to get in there. Uh, I don't know if that's the case. I, I am – a fan of YouTube. I'm still buzzing. This what an amazing show all, all the way around. I feel like I don't know what Ty's doing. What the issue is? Vegas has been pretty ridiculous, AJ. Um, yeah, sphere is amazing. Well, Sphere is amazing. The show is amazing. The, the Sphere is amazing. Yeah, the sphere, sphere is awesome. Best part about yesterday, though. Oh yeah. Going to the Bellagio. Yes, oh, it was. Oh, a couple God. private Hands tables. Yeah. And then we had dinner on the fountain. Yes. Like, actually on the fountain. Ocean's 13, we felt like. Bingo. It was like a oh, wedding yeah. rehearsal dinner was set up yeah. for us because there's an Italian man who has coached football for 36 years, 18 in college, 18 in the NFL, who's been – That's the, that was the view from dinner. We were on <laughs> the fountain. That's our table. There's one man sitting at the head of that table. That's our coach, the people's coach, John. Yeah. 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 What Chuck, you love this town, huh? Thank you oh. for the hookup last night at Bellagio. That was awesome. It was Bellagio Bob. <laughs> oh. Yeah. That what a awesome. setting. What a setting. That what a, what a night. They should have gave Bellagio Bob the power of putting on the first show at the Sphere. Boom. Instead of you two. Yeah. <laughs> Bellagio Bob would have had that thing together. For, for, sure. the, for those that don't know, Bellagio Bob is an Ohio guy who hopped on a motorcycle after his stint in the Navy, rode it to Vegas, sold it, started as a busboy at the Bellagio. Now he's like senior player personnel yeah. 30 years later. Wow. Runs the place. And he had his radar on the table. And the reason why we were connected is because... Ming, yeah. Ming. Yeah, Chucky Pagano. How about those seafood platters we oh. walked into? The they were, first time in my life. They were going to pick the shrimp off of the... I'm sitting right next to platter, less than two feet away from platter. Waiter goes, would you like a shrimp with tongs on the <laughs> shrimp? And he's, I was like, are you going to put that on my plate right now? He's like, absolutely. I'll even detail it. I'm like... I can do that, thank you. <laughs> so he went away. I grabbed the It was like first class. Thank you so much for the yes. hookup. Oh, the blackjack was room, a, unbelievable. Uh, the vibes in there were high. Great vibes. Yeah. Martinis. <laughs> the espresso martini. Oh, Some cigars. Oh, I didn't fall asleep till I think three or four a.m. Yeah, that's hard. Wired. Well, you didn't even go to you too. You, yeah. you I think you kind of knew so, what was coming. Yeah, <laughs> sounds like sounds like I didn't miss much, huh? Well, well, the sphere. The sphere is the sphere. incredible. The sphere's cool. The sphere's cool. The sphere's you saw, cool. Yeah, you I mean, saw more than Bruce, though. Yeah, Bruce fell asleep third song. Oh, Lord. Yeah, that guy right there. Woke yep. up in the van on the way home. That guy right there. Yep. Uh, too many milligrams. Is that, what, is that what I was? <laughs> yeah, that's what it was. Bruce right now actually standing next to Vince from Colorado. I don't know if we can pan the Vince from Colorado. Left. Has a couple medals on him right there from the Special yeah, Olympics in uh, golf and skiing. Yeah. That baby Vince. Oh, yeah. That baby Vince. Yeah. Yeah. Hell yeah, Vince. What Vince part is, of Colorado is Vince from? Vince, what part of Colorado? Uh, Colorado. My, uh, Colorado Springs? Yeah. Colorado Springs. And the skiing, what, are we doing loot? What is the skiing? Uh, giant slalom is oh, when I got nice. it. Ooh. So that's a... Uh, like Schifrin? Uh, it's uh, <laughs> smaller turns. And then golf, you, you're you better than Darius and Phil Mickelson? 
He did pretty good with that swing. Did Phil help you out with that? He did. He helped me out a lot. He's a 10 handicap, so you're definitely better than me. Yeah, well, he's got a metal around his chest playing golf. Yeah, three of <laughs> we, we certainly don't. Hey, Vince, we appreciate you, buddy. Hell yeah. Happy pants, dude. A couple of Irish lads next to him from Pro Football Ireland. Got a chance to talk nice. to them. I guess there's four Irish lads uh, play, who played rugby and some that are kicking footballs at the combine. Ooh. Wow. So the kicking and punting position is continuing to be one of the positions that is kind of exposing more of the world to American football. And while global expansion is certainly something Roger Goodell wants, he's also actively trying to eliminate the kickoff. I heard. Did you hear I that? Heard. He threw the punt play in there. Just out of nowhere. The kickoff, we got to figure it out. And the punt, too. It's like, Raj, Can't have it. we need not do that. But before we get scared about what the future looks like, football, let's talk about this weekend, Chuck. Yep. We're closer to the game than we were the last time we talked to you. Have you heard anything from either of these teams this week that makes you lean one way or the other? Do you think these teams are locked in? How do you see it going, this standpoint, being a coach on a Thursday of Super Bowl week? I haven't wavered at all with my pick. I don't think I'm going to give that out right now. Oh, that's good TV. You know what I mean? Great Isn't it? That's great TV. That's good TV. That's good TV. Well, you've taught me a lot. Yeah, well. Chuck. All you boys have you're really helped me. You are Very, coachable. very coachable. Haven't Unlike you some of your boys. Mm. Oh, you're talking about the Bailey, Blackjack Bailey table. Comas. Oh, Lord. Yeah, his talk was ashen hit on 16. the team. He oh, wanted wow. to hit an 18. Yes, he did. What? Yeah, Versus yeah. six. Dealer was showing a six. Yeah, so to be fair, it does make sense. <laughs> Bill's an absolute wild card on the table. Wow. You no, know, it's the thing about it though is he's such a wild card that it's almost consistent. Every single time he was up, we did not know what he was going to do. He's got twenty. All right, we don't know. We have no idea if he's going to hit, thinking he can pull an ace here. That's the type of player he was. That's the murderer. In he had twelve, and uh, <laughs> he had twelve. Maybe, maybe he's cerebral out there. He would have twelve. Dealer showing king. We don't know if he's taking a card. Wait, there's a chance he does, he? and he does it. He pat, he stay. Bill, but, you were on third, mind. right, Pat? You were on third, right? Was he right next to you? Or, or who yeah, was he it? was right. Yeah, I was directly paying for everything that Bill did. <laughs> Screwing stay. you as well. Yeah, I wanted to give him a scoff. <laughs> Right on the back of the neck. Yeah, you told talking Bill early, just follow me, boys. We don't need to be doing anything crazy. We need to be doing this thing right. And he was like, okay, okay, I got you, coach. Coachable. And the very first thing. Yeah. No, no, I'm hitting that. No, you don't do that against a six. Chuck, try to kick him off the table. I would have too. Smart. The yeah. dealer, the dealer's begging him. We're all begging him, right? And he goes, no, hit. Should have put a Bust. cigar out on the top of his head. Like, well, there was that a time last fun. night during the U2 concert where somebody had a flashlight on Bill's head. I think it was Phil. Yeah. yeah. That Phil had a flashlight on Bill's head, and it was actually radiating to the sphere. Yeah. Light bulb. Yeah, it was pretty good. He was actually one of the bright spots of last night. You can, really, yeah, you can say that. If you will. Uh, let's talk about some more people chit-chatting about the Super Bowl for the first time. Newest episode of the New Heights podcast has come out. We saw Jason Kelsey last night, We actually. did. As he was going into YouTube, he actually chats about it in this particular clip. You get a chance to hear why Travis Kelsey maybe has an added reason on why he wants to win this game so much. Is this different in any way this year? I feel like it's exciting, man. The first ever I agree. Super Bowl in Las Vegas, Nevada. The biggest entertainment mecca in the world. It's built for this. It's literally <laughs> built for the biggest stages. I've been when you guys are in Tampa. I've been when you guys are in Miami. I've played in Minnesota and then obviously played last year in Arizona. This is pretty cool. This is nuts. <laughs> <laughs> this this is pretty cool. I'm going to go see you two tomorrow. I mean, I know you got a game. Uh, to uh, well, well. This is going to be a blast for all the people enjoying this one. Honestly, it just makes me want to win it that much more, man. Yeah. It makes me want to be on the right side of the history books and uh, be able to say I won the first Vegas Super Bowl ever. The NFL is going to enjoy having this place as the home. Oh, I think this is, gonna, this is the first of many. Yeah. This place is built to host events like this. Just what we've been through as a team to get to this point. Uh, to get back to the mountaintop that uh, that we desired, that expectation was set the minute that we won it last year. It's been a fun ride up to this point. An exciting opportunity to win the Super Bowl it just makes you want it more than ever. I didn't even think of the angle about wanting to win the first Vegas Super Bowl because there's people from Vegas here that are pitching like, we should do this every year. Yeah. Yeah. This is where the Super Bowl should be. And I think if you look around, even if you paid 60 grand for a concert you left early from, <laughs> you're thinking to yourself, yeah, Vegas might be the right home for this entire Money. place. Yep. Legit. It yeah. feels like the perfect Absolutely. Toast for this entire thing. Absolutely. And, I mean, we all wrote this team off, right? You did. Yeah, I didn't. Well, I did. I did. 
No, no they're they're actually, right actually actually but remember, it was week yeah. after week. Okay, they're gonna ch- they're gonna flip. They're gonna hit it. They're gonna hit their stride. They're gonna turn it on. They're gonna start catching balls. Kelsey's gonna start moving around like Kelsey can move around and catching balls. And then it was like week after week. Like, what the hell happened to this team? And then all of a sudden, bingo. What is that? My, coaching. What's how that? Do, how do you do that, Chuck? Yeah, you, coaching? Uh, coaches all the time say, oh, you can't just all of a sudden decide they just to turn fig- it on They right figure now. themselves out. Andy Reid is, I mean, first ballot Hall of Famer, right? Yes. I mean, bar none. They just figured it out. I said, okay, this is who we are. This is who we Rasheed Rice comes into his own. Kelsey starts playing. Mahomes is, you know, arguably the best player in the game right now at that position. Yeah, and as long as you got that dude, and they start in the defense, like – Spags doesn't get enough. They start talking about it. he doesn't get enough credit. But what he did with the defense all season long, he carried them. And then they started to click. And, and the playoffs to go go to Buffalo and win that game and then go to Baltimore. How about freezing like I, cold against Miami? You remember that? Yeah. Yeah. Miami yeah. didn't want any of it. But they were had to play in that mm-hmm. freezing cold as no. well. If it and then go beat a Baltimore team that we thought was the very best team was in something. the National Football League with yeah. that defense and, and Lamar. And just, I mean, they couldn't do anything. If it wasn't. No, they didn't try to, you know, should have ran the ball, obviously. Yeah. That well, have, Rosh that told him not to. Yeah, That's right. Who? And if it wasn't for the defense, Chuck, like all year long, like there was a lot of games that they were winning when they were scoring 20 points. Like if it wasn't for the defense, who knows what their seed would have been? Who knows what their path would have been? How much different? Now, they probably could have done the exact same thing no matter where they went. Obviously, they went into Baltimore. They went into Buffalo. But the defense, yeah, they carried them all year. Absolutely. I think they've given up, what, three points in the fourth quarter through the playoffs? Yeah. I mean, ridiculous. Good. Absolutely ridiculous! I can't wait to. See, I can't. It's going to be fascinating. There's so much, so many explosive players going to be on that field. Oh yeah, for both sides. And it sounds like you know Wilkes got after that defense. Mm. Oh really? After after the oh, run? Oh yeah, he called he called him out. Packers lines after Packers lines because he can't stop the run. What do you say? There was some breaking news, Chuck. No, it was was on here. It was an effort thing, wasn't it? It was effort deal. There was a couple runs, especially on uh, Jamison's end around. They went for a touchdown. Jamo. There's a bunch of guys like right there that you think NFC Championship game, right? I'm laying out. I don't care. I'm gonna die before I let this guy score. And it was like, holy crap! Gibbs run. Just watch him run in. Yeah. There, there's a lot of those like loafs, if you will. Just to, at least from what you see from Niners Twitter, of people not very happy. Yeah. Can't have that. Like, I'm a huge Gibson fan, right? Sean. Yeah. 31. He's a Wyoming Cowboy. Okay. He's an alum. I had him in Chicago. He is a stud. But, I mean, come on, Gip. Can't have come on, Gip. <laughs> and the NFC Championship. Come on, Gip. So you heard, so is this breaking news that Steve Wilkes got after his defense? I think, I feel like I, just Everybody out. here heard it. He called He called him out. He put the plays up. And, and good for him because a lot of guys won't do that. Got to do it, though, at, uh, at that point, yeah. Okay, look. Really? This is how we're going to roll? Yeah. You want to talk about explosive plays? How about I'm being on a hot mic? <laughs> Talking about your future. Yeah. This morning on oh. Up and Adams on Close. FanDuel TV, Baker Mayfield was mic'd up talking to uh, Steve, Steve Young. Young. Steve Young yeah. And uh, it was kind of off air, but it was certainly on feed. And uh, did we just learn that Baker Mayfield's going back to Tampa? Woo. You listen. People. You know, most people, you know. Why, why is it whenever I'm in interviews or in crack down, yeah. I get like a million messages? I appreciate that. But you get a million messages all the time. No, not all the yeah. time. Get some pieces back. We should slate maybe because. Settle in there, make yeah. a career. Exactly. Can we slate? That's awesome. Yeah. I think we should. Hard to do, <laughs> it is. Way to go. I, I started it. there. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Okay, so we'll run it again. A lot going on. Yeah. Ronk and Kay in <laughs> right, the yeah. front screen having a convo. Exactly. Uh-huh. If you look right over, right behind Kay Adams there, you got Steve Young and Baker Mayfield. Yep. And you'll hear him settle in, get some pieces back, have a career yep. there. Bingo. That's where I started there, Steve says. If you're listening for it, you'll hear it. Chuck probably l- l- slipped by there the first time. Let's run it back. This hot mic me. thing has really captivated the internet, obviously. Oh, yeah. people. Most people, you know. Man, why, why is it right. whenever I'm in interviews or in a yeah. I get like a million messages? I appreciate that. But you get a million messages all the time. No, not all the yeah. time. Get some pieces back. We should slate maybe because. Settle in there, make yeah. a career. Exactly. Can we slate? That's awesome. Yeah. I think we should. Hard to do, bro. It is. Way to go. I, I started it. there. Yeah, that's right. That's right. 
That's right. That's right. That's right. What do you say? Steve said. <laughs> Steve said have a career there, right? And yeah, they, settle yeah. in, have Baker a career there. Confirmed it. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Uh-huh. Yeah, because you know Baker still has what another ten years left if he wants it. Yeah, he's sure. what twenty eight. We forget right. about Jeez, how quickly right. he was bounced around like after that? all the success at Cleveland that took place. Wins a playoff game for them. Not. Nah, we don't like him. Get him the hell out of here now. Cleveland is in a situation hmm. again and again and yeah. again. Right. Sure. And again. Right. And again. That's Cleveland. Right. Since then, football gods might have seen it all take place. He goes down to Carolina. He's on a scout team. He's rushing punts. He lied. Yeah. He's, he's, on, he's rushing punts. Hit but scout team. Yeah, absolutely. With wow. no helmet on. Oh, just Delta. trying to be a good teammate. Then he goes over to Los Angeles Rams, remember? Mm-hmm. Wins a game on two days notice yep. on Thursday Night Football with McVay. And wait a minute, wait a minute. Goes to Tampa, plays his best football. It's like this dude's career has already been whoom, wham, pow. And now Steve Young's like, feels like we're in the right spot. And he almost confirms it. Now, He's not going to say, Steve, that's stupid. I'm not going sure. to Tampa. <laughs> so, and he probably doesn't have a clue there. But it is nice to hear, I assume, if you're a Buccaneers fan, like, yeah, Baker definitely wants to come back. And he's looking at this as a long-term type situation down there. Absolutely. We know a lot of guys on that staff, obviously. AQ knows what's going on inside that building. Joey Gilbert, offensive line coach down there, is now at Carolina. Went over with Canales, right? Mm-hmm. Him and uh, Harold Goodwin. You remember Harold, right? Goody, yep. Yeah. So those guys, Joey told me, like, not once, but a thousand times, what a good dude he was. From the minute he stepped into that locker room, he endeared himself to that team. He ingratiated himself. They took him in. He took care of that old line. Um, and they just, they love him. They, they kill for that dude. I think we love him, too. Yeah, well, oh, yeah. yeah. I mean, he stopped by yesterday with that advanced auto parts. That was maybe the best pitch we had heard so on Radio Row. Yeah. Incredibly efficient. And we saw the, uh, the pictures from the Pro Bowl with him and Tristan Wirfs. Just pounding around to you know two peas in a pod. That's the guy protecting him. Now if they bring Mike Evans back, that's kind of the big two. You know. Yeah, he's up, right? Yeah, yeah. he yep. is. Uh-huh. And uh, him, Michael Pittman Jr. Yep. Yeah, Justin yeah. Jefferson, T. Higgins. Cal- Calvin Ridley, T. Higgins, T. Higgins, Calvin Ridley. Decent little wide receiver class out there. Yeah, pretty good wide receiver market yeah. coming in. Normally, we're looking at the young bucks coming in the draft because the young bucks have done great. Is- it's like right now you can get probably what are they going to make there? All those guys, fifteen. It- yeah. 20? I mean, Odell yeah. got, what did Odell get? 13. 15. And all 15. those guys have been much more productive lately. Younger. Ode- like, like Mike Evans has had never had a non-1,000 yard season. So he's going to get like, what, 25 million a year? Well, yeah, Whew. at least. And then Pittman and, I mean, Ridley. and As a Colts fan, hey, see you, Vince. Congrats on uh, the gold yes. medals. Oh, yeah, hey, Vince. Look at the golfer Vince. and a skier. That's athlete. Don't go together. Brain. No. Athlete. As a Colts fan, I want to let everybody know, Michael Pittman Jr., just terrible at football. If you're a general manager <laughs> around the NFL, this Michael Pittman Jr. guy, mm-hmm. just terrible at football. Don't try to sign him. Don't. don't. He cares about farming. Doesn't, doesn't really care about ball like that. Yeah, it's like his. he tries to work too hard. It's like yep. we get it, dude. Yep. He's like too humble, like, bro, okay, you're a wide receiver. Mm-hmm. Too you dedicated. Know? Seems to be the only one that just shows up every single day for the Indianapolis Colts. Tough. Yep. That feels like a guy we need to keep. <laughs> Michael Absolutely. Pittman Jr. needs to stay. What do you pay a guy like that? Well, well he could have utilized, and I'm not going to dive into all the business that happened with the Indianapolis Colts, but, like, when Jonathan Taylor decided to, like, kind of hold the Colts hostage a little yep. bit, like, Michael Pittman Jr. was our best weapon. Yeah. Like, and most consistent, showed up, new coach, right. new offense, new quarterback, and he was, like, the guy. He could have, in that moment, been like, oh, yeah, me too, by the way. Yeah. yeah. I would like to do Didn't this. Didn't hear a peep. Not a one. Yeah. It's like, and I, Jonathan Taylor got his money. It worked out for him, whatever the case. Does Indianapolis like Jonathan Taylor right now? I don't think so. But if he has a good year, he's all over. Absolutely. Back. It's okay. Jonathan Taylor. We're yeah, lucky absolutely. to have it. Was it. He did his business move. He did what he had to do. But, like, Pittman could have done all that. Yep. Pittman could have done all that if he wanted to, especially at that time when they had no other weapons and it was a brand new head coach. He chose not to. I love Michael Pittman Jr. I'm a big, but I do think we should still get another one. Yeah. Like, yeah. I don't know how Chris Ballard does it, but if we get, if Michael Pittman Jr. was to have somebody else, yeah. I don't even know what would happen to yeah, him. Yeah, I mean, I, love, I loved what I saw from the rookie Josh Downs uh, last year. Great well. so piece. I think he'll be a weapon uh, in that slot, can make uh, make things happen with that ball in the hand. But Mike Pittman, I mean, I think he was like top five in targets uh, last year, which a lot of people don't know. Big guy, you can, he can attack you on all three levels. Good run after catch, get it yeah. downfield. We did draft Alec Pierce in the second round a couple years ago. Got to see so much. It's a huge year for him. But, yeah, you can't have enough enough weapons in the league, in today's league. Michael Pittman Jr. will dive into contact. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. He, he oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Everything it you happened. want about him. Casey everything you want a wide receiver, Michael Pittman Jr. <laughs> is the guy. Now, another wide receiver that has everything you would want is the guy that's the best in the game, some people say. Most people would say top two. Justin Jefferson talked to our friend Adam Shine, oh. Shine on Sports, about his contract situation. 
We do not have that clip. All right, we will get that for the next hour, which is good news. Uh, anyways, he said, yeah. You know, Shine kind of set up the question as, we're going to break the bank, right? We're going to yeah. do this? And he was like, yeah, I mean, we will. <laughs> and uh, I think he thinks that Minnesota's going to be able to get a deal done. Obviously, everybody assumes that Minnesota's going to want to get a deal yeah. done with Justin Jefferson. But the thought of him maybe getting 35, 30, you know, yeah. Seriously. whatever he's going to get, he, you're building a team around Justin Jefferson, yeah. I think. Absolutely. And, uh, you get a young quarterback, I guess, in there. I don't know. Yeah, who's the quarterback? Does, he, does Justin Jefferson want to resign in Minnesota? They give him 35. I mean, that kind of kind of helps his cause, though. If you don't have that oh, long term, does, but does he yeah. want to go play with like an established vet quarterback? So it's a really good vet. question. If he's going to get 35 million, 40 million, yeah. he knows that quarterback is not going to be a known name. True. Yes, exactly. But he, you yeah. know, like he, he, yeah, when I mean, they're who, paying him that money, they're saying, "Hey, you're going to have to make it work." Yeah. With whoever we're able to afford yeah. at quarterback, because then you're choosing to build the team around. Yeah. The, in now. If you just so happen to draft the guy at the last pick of the draft, and you sure. only owe him eight hundred thousand. <laughs> yeah, be smart. That would be right. That would be kind of the Good ideal plan. situation. Blueprint. Joining us now might be a guy who has the answers, ladies and gentlemen. It is a real dream to have him here at Radio Row. I don't think the NFL folks ever thought this guy would make his way over here. No. Oh. He's got his own set in a hotel closet, I believe. That's sweet. In a hotel room, and also outside somewhere here in Las Vegas. He's been on TV talking about football every single day for at least eight hours a day. Ladies and gentlemen, the incomparable Dan Orlovsky. Yeah. Oh. Oh. How do you have a, you got a banana gun? Look out. Uh -oh. Potassium. Look out. Potassium. What's up, buddy? Good to see you, baby. How was yesterday? Awesome. Yeah, what? Say that word again? Huh? Okay, hello. How are you? <laughs> yes, that was awesome. Oh, Dan. Thank you. What's up, Dan? Good to see you, pal. Where'd you go, Dan? All right, all right, Dan. A lot of love. All right, Dan. Good to see you. <laughs> nice. Thank you very much. Way to go, Dan. Dan. Yes. Way to go, Dan. Yesterday. Homage to Drake. Is that a banana, banana in your hand? We'll hands? get three of them, though. Damn, we'll Tape three together. <laughs> I want to get a shot in. I want to get a putt in. She just <laughs> ruined She's Damn, really your bad. hair is She's terrible. Really now. Uh, you got, that that's good. Amanda. She is awesome. Uh, yeah. Amanda is awesome. Go. She tried to troll you a little bit with what she just did with your hair, though. Dan, thank you for joining. Dan or Loss, why are you doing this? Oh, Anno. Oh, Anno, we don't need to do the eating while we're on the air thing. Anno? Sensual? What are we doing? <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> gun it at him. You're going to take the strings off the <laughs> side there. Can I just oh. gun it at him, please? <laughs> You would miss me. I would, but still, you'd probably be like, ah! Dan, we have missed you, by the way. It's great to see you. It's great person. to be with you guys. Yeah, where are you? So you have been, uh, you guys are at the beer garden? You're the worst person on the planet. Where are you guys at? <laughs> Just so I know. Um, they're at Beer Park. Beer Park. That's cool. That's, where the, where that's the, the right spot to be. Like the little setup is. Is that where, do they have another radio row there? Or? <laughs> a lot of foot traffic. Yeah, a lot what of people rolling around. No, no radio row over there, bud. How's the weather? Is it pretty good? I haven't been over there yet. Did I go there after this? We saw Stephen A. Was uh, oh boy, he had a sweet jacket, yeah, he did. Did. cool Dressed like in purple. purple. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. How that happened, Dan? What do you? How do you think that takes place? What do you think happens there? With Stephen A.'s outfit or the set? Just the whole thing. Yeah, I think one. We thing were there in the past. Oh, uh, I think we were there last year for the Pro draft. Bowl. Oh, draft. Draft was here last year. We were there for the draft. Okay. Like it's just the easy way to get it set up there. Yeah. Oh, the easy way. Well, welcome to Radio Row, man. It's yeah. beautiful. What a dream to have you here. It's beautiful. Yeah. Really it's great honor. to be here. Uh, we're talking about um, wide receivers that are in the market. It's a pretty good wide receiver free agency market, and we're trying to guess how much money they're going to make. Justin Jefferson was talking to Adam Shine on uh, Sirius XM earlier. Break the bank. Talking about breaking the bank, and then we started chit-chatting about, like, well, if you pay a wide receiver a bunch of money, like, they're going to have to, and I guess they paid Tyreek, and you still got Tua, who is the top five pick, but, like, if you're going to pay Justin Jefferson, you're not going to be paying the quarterback then, right? That's what we're assuming there, Dan? Are Correct. you assuming the same thing? Yeah, I mean, if you're Minnesota... I've said for like a year now, dude, like what's the number one way to keep Justin? Like that's the only thing that matters. And that's why I think you're going to at some point have to make a jump with quarterback as good of a player as Kirk is. But you're not going to be able to afford or, or afford both Justin at a high number and Kirk Cousins at the number that he's probably going to be able to command in free agency. They're saying $40 million a year or something like for that? For Justin? Yeah. For Kirk. At, at a minimum. How many years do you think? Three? Yeah. Probably, around Probably three with the whole fully 50. guaranteed thing again. $50 million? Dollars? I'll say, I think Russ closer to 50 than 40. 35. Coming what, off, what a, a, coming Bur off Bur that injury. Burrow just got 55. Hurt Buddy, got what? You're saying Lamar? Joe Burrow. You can't, you Kirk, can't put Yeah, but that's the that market. Category. That's the market. But Kirk, we had a 
Great year. Great year. Yeah. Kirk, Kirk, yeah. Played, yeah. Kirk played at a high level. But Kirk's not, fresh not, out of the quarterback series, too. He looks awesome. Tore yeah. pay yeah. Millies. $50 million. What do we, if they don't pay him, when is Kirk do ever get? signed a deal and we're like, oh, Bad that deal. was less than what we expected. It's always <laughs> well, like, whoa. Minnesota's going to have to make a move at quarterback. Like last year, they tried to go up to get Anthony. And at least that per reports, I don't know if those are 100% accurate, but they tried to go get Richardson. I could see them moving up again this year. I saw someone, maybe it was Chris Long or Kyle Long, said entertaining of trading Justin Jefferson to somebody, New England, yeah. and going up and getting a quarterback for that. You know, like trading Justin for that high pick and going to get a quarterback. So what's New England? They're not getting a quarterback? Oh, yeah, you're the guy that says they don't need a quarterback yeah. up yeah. there in New England. Got back. They got the number three overall pick. There's allegedly three NFL gonna, guys. You think quarterback's going to save New England? Buddy, it's they haven't be, had yeah, a quarterback. Yeah. Start the savior. Absolutely. Start the comeback. Before yeah. a $35 million receiver would. Happened with the Chargers. Same Dan, they, they had guys that were scoring – that would score less on that quarterback carnival than everybody else that was out there playing quarterback. Yeah, yeah. There. I could probably. They got Bailey Zappi up there. He couldn't even get it to the four, they were saying. They yeah. couldn't even get the ball to the four. They have enough. Very tough. They didn't have, no, they Not just juice. stunk. That offense just stunk. The, the it, worst, I mean, it's the worst offense in the league. They're, they were the first team ever to hold three straight teams to 10 or less points and, and lose league. all three games. Like, you need a quarterback, Dan. I, I mean, we could have Randy Moss and Justin Jefferson, <laughs> but who gives a shit? If we don't have a guy that can throw, and it's the first yeah. time they're at three, yeah, this is the highest no, offense with, we'll ever be. I, you know? I'm, I'm with that, but that offense didn't stink just because of the quarterback. I agree. So it's if taking a quarterback at three, I say this all the time. Give me the last top five quarterback that flipped a bad football team. C.J. Stroud, okay. Yeah. Joe Burrow, that Cam Newton. Sure. And they've happened recently. Cam okay. Newton. Cam. Burrow. But Cam didn't run. do it immediately in Carolina. Well, I saw him yesterday. Six, six wins, rookie of the year, and then Burrow. a couple years But they later, got to 2015. It just doesn't yeah, yeah. happen that much. It's Andrew true. Luck. Andrew Luck. Yeah. But, but that yeah. wasn't a bad Pretty team. That was the Peyton year. We're number 32. We're number 32 out of 32. On a t-shirt. It was on a T-shirt. I saw it. I seen the shirt. I still got it. That was, that was the big, Peyton year. Big four. Like that was. Was that? That was the Peyton year. You think Peyton was the only one that was cut from that team? They painted the walls, brother. You weren't there. They were all cut. There were 40 guys in that first team meeting. That's all that was left. Yeah, you can have damn. 90 in that off-season program. We had yeah. 40 guys in that room. Yeah, so Andrew You already said C.J. Stroud? Yeah. Stroud. Oh, yeah. Stroud, Luck, Joe. Just doesn't happen that often. That's what I'm saying. It's like for all the quarterbacks that do get picked in the top five, more often than not, like those guys are – those aren't the saviors that maybe their talent – uh, it should allow them to be because the team around them is so poor. All right, Darius Butler golfed with Drake Bay yesterday for four and a half hours. And give me, Phil, give me some thought on his personality. Love him, love okay. him, but be a guy. I think guys rally around. Uh, loves, you know, loves ball. Not really caught up in a lot of the other, you know, won't be high maintenance. You know, not to say that you know the other guys are or will be, but um, awesome, awesome big dude. Awesome he said number one. Big. He said number one overall pick. He said takes him number one. I don't know how you guys feel in the media about. Caleb Williams, you've probably seen him play more than I have. Uh, but after spending that time with him, once again, the build, obviously he has the skill set, the personality traits, I think, yeah. when you're coming into a – because when you come into a locker room as a top three pick, which we assume he'll be, a lot of things are going to be handed to him. You're going to be the quarterback of the team. You're going to have to be in that leadership role. Um, so I just think kind of like those things, I think he fits that build. When teams sit down with him, and the people around him as well, his family, his, his representation, I think they'll fall in love with him. As well. I've said for months now, don't lock Caleb in at number one. Mm -hmm. I, I just, I honestly believe that. Because as talented as Caleb is, I think there's stuff that teams are going to be, you know, like diving into to figure out. I called some of Drake's games in college. Mm -hmm. He's Big Ben to me. Like he is... Oh, and he's 6'5", wow. big, big 225, big, 230 now. And still you can tell he'll be – He can he'll, put on 20 yeah, pounds yeah, exactly, easily. Yeah. He's a, like, like one of those athletes when you watch him move, you're just like – he's a little bit not refined. He's sloppy mechanically at times. Um, but he is a freak. Is that and good or thing, bad, though? Is that good because you can take him and – Yeah, I mean, higher. I think that's always good because you can't – you can't teach the stuff that Big Ben had. You can't teach the stuff that Josh has. You can always get guys mechanically to be more so, consistent. So but can CJ, you know, can CJ you know. Patrick yeah. Mahomes, all these off, like he's Drake May, I believe, great basketball player as yeah. well. I think baseball player yeah. as well. So like all the off script plays, I think he can also make. Which Caleb is what everybody yeah. yep. kind of putting over so much. It's like this dude's six foot five, two hundred and thirty five pounds, and once you see like his. His family, his brothers yeah. are all massive houses. Yeah. And they, you know, Gamers too. I, I, think, I think the consensus amongst a lot of the decision makers, at least, are like, hey, 
if you do pass on Caleb Williams and he ends up being, you know, this generational talent, because you got people on record on wax saying, hey, I'd take him over Peyton Manning if, it, if they were in the same draft. Andrew Luck. Cam John Elway. Like, so Trevor he's Lawrence. Of that ilk. So that's his, you know, potential, which is wild to say in my opinion. But I think – I think he still goes one because of those things. You don't want to be that person who passes. I think teams legit. I think, yeah. I think no. that that's plays the into dumbest it. thing in the world. I think it plays but into it. it. Does it happen though? With, they, hey, I don't want to. We look terrible. For it happens. Bryce Young, Young. especially Man, Bryce, yeah, Bryce, Bryce, Bryce Young, Young. Bryce just, Young, it Steph it Curry. Happened. Yeah, it just happened with Bryce Young. <laughs> I don't think Carolina took Bryce Young because they were scared that he was going to be really good if he went too. I think Bryce Carolina took Bryce dumb. Young. You were so high on. That coaching staff and every piece that they surrounded Bryce with, right? Totally, yeah. Like Charles. you were there, you were you almost took the, a job with them, right? Yeah, I had, had a conversation. With them, right? Yeah, I was shocked at but that coaching staff. Glad you didn't, I bet. Yeah, I bet you're pumped. Yeah, thank God. <laughs> you didn't I was just two last night. You should feel good about that too. I was just shocked at that. It was so bad, so quick, you know. And I think part of it was the. The offensive line underperformed in Carolina at such a such a shocking Big level. Like that, that offensive line was going to be or, or thought to be so much better, and the offense never changed throughout the year schematically. I hate when coaches go from you call plays to you call plays <laughs> back to you calling plays. Um, I still think Bryce is going to be a really good player. Absolutely. You believe in Canales? You know him well. You I don't know him? know him well. I do know this. I like the fact that. Because everyone automatically goes like, hey, what's he going to do for Bryce Young? I don't even think it'll be about Bryce. I think it'll be about the offensive line. I think the thing that he did with Baker was they didn't hold the ball. Like, they got the ball out of Baker's hands. They don't stress the offensive line in that capacity. You guys know that. So not stressing the offensive line would be a big deal. But I, I've said this, Coach, 2025. Don't talk to me about Bryce Young until 2025. Yeah. That roster, is, it, offensive line-wise, needs to be rebuilt. Nobody weapons, wants to weapons hear that, too. though. Dude, weapons, too. When, you go, I mean, no, when okay. you go number one, nobody right wants to hear that. No doubt. You know what I mean? No doubt. But that's why that we get impatient 20, in this league, Dan, Dan, what, don't you think what C.J. Stroud did down there in Houston is going to set an unrealistic expectation for every fan base? New uh, England. For instance, the Colts. They got Anthony Richardson down there. He's a rookie the same year as C.J. Stroud. Yep. Good. He had five touchdowns in the first four weeks, and we never saw him play football again. Beat Stroud. He was hurting four out of the five of the games. Never saw him play football again. Very excited for him to come back. And will he survive? We don't know. We'll find out. We hope so. We certainly hope so. But we're looking down there at C.J. Stroud. Houston, we're like, oh, the next 10 years in Houston are a problem. You're saying that that is not a real thing we should label on anybody. Like, Bryce Young should not have that expectation. Because look at that Houston roster. Yeah. That, that Houston, Houston roster. roster is way better than that Carolina roster. Now it is, but it was crop. Every No name wide receivers. Yeah. We had no idea who those guys were before the year started. No Brown. We had no clue who anybody was. Well, I think part of it is. And it became. Well, uh, oh. part of it is we didn't know who Tank Dell was going to be. It was obviously a really part important part of the football team. Nico. Nico Collins went from this. You know, like, I think Nico was a fourth or fifth round pick to, I mean, he's played himself into being a number, like a real number one conversation wide receiver. The thing that... Schultz. Schultz well, Schultz was a good player in Dallas. Yeah. I think yeah. the thing that, like, got lost in the conversation offseason-wise of Houston was that offensive line was so much better than Carolina's. They got Tunsil. Their interior three are freaking awesome, and their right tackle, who stayed healthy finally, was a really good player. So, like, that's the, the yeah, difference. Yeah, but Slowick, too, right? And doesn't he deserve it? That, there was unknown of how good Bobby Slowick was going to be and yeah, all Yeah, but that. can't they make the offensive line better? Houston? Offense coordinators. Yes. Oh, yeah. Someone, but that's still a good group. Like, that offensive hot line's potato. a good group. You write it on your hand, right on your hot potato. <laughs> Isn't that what you used to write on yours? Hot potato. <laughs> Get that ball Is that out. What you Get, Get it out. Hasselback, when we remember when Matt came in. Oh, buddy. Matt has. Get it out. Gone. Well, you got to have people not. to get it to. Like again, that's the. That, oh, that's, we ran more slant flat. Right, but <laughs> Carolina doesn't have. They didn't have people to get it to. Yeah, Thielen. What do you mean? Yeah, Adam Friday, Thielen was always open. Baker was Seven, always 11. open. Hayden Baker Hurst was really good on uh on third down too. I know he's getting the ball out a lot. I think probably his best career year, career year across the board, but especially on third down, those situational. So that that. But well, what did they do on third down? They would put Mike by himself. Mm -hmm. They would put Chris Godwin away and say, "Cool, if you're gonna double Mike, we'll throw it to Chris or Otten. If you're gonna play Mike one on one, we'll yep. throw it to Mike." How about how about Baker Mayfield hot mic earlier? You see that with Steve Young? What did he do? Uh, him and Steve Young hot mic on Up and Adams having a pretty genuine. Yeah. I yeah. like it was pretty pretty real convo. Yeah, yeah. High level. You know, in the middle of all the glitz and glamour and shine and everything, uh -huh. Steve Young and Baker had a moment. It's two people being They had a humans, real moment yeah. there. Coming oh. together. Ladies and gentlemen, forget all that. <laughs> oh my God. Holy shit. Holy shit. <laughs>
Your mic's off. We can't hear anything you're can't saying. Hear, oh, there you go. There it is. What's going on, brother? Look at wow. my goodness. Ladies How big a place do you need? Are well, we back in COVID where you can't interact? With I, I don't know. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Kurt Warren. You yeah. get to sit down. I get, I get the mic over Hall of Famer. Kurt, Kurt, Hall of Famer. Kurt, there. Kurt, if it means anything, if we knew you were going to be here, we would have never booked Dan or Lux. <laughs> <laughs> don't say you, you that. Be. Dan is great at what he does. <laughs> we agree. We, yeah. Yeah. We, talk, we get to talk to Dan a lot. We are very thankful for that. Dan makes us love Dan. We don't get to talk to you that much. I know, but I would sit down with Dan every day if I could. We, we, so would we. You on text messages. We love talking ball. We love talking ball. Do you guys see the world the same way? How you doing? Coach, uh, no, well. we never see it the same way. We, yeah. we go back and forth, but, but that's the fun part. How you doing, Coach? Hey, doing okay. Great. So yeah. you and I actually tweeted you yeah. uh, about Jared Goff's ball flight. Mm -hmm. You know yes. about like, hey, why is this guy not throw a spiral? Right. I didn't know if it was motion, grip, everything like that. Some guys can really spin it. Like Dan went over that quarterback carnival the other day. Spin it. Hell yeah. yeah. I know. I mean, it's some, High score. Yeah. Why, why do you think some guys throw ducks? Like Peyton threw ducks, but they were. Yeah. Literally I, pinpoint. Right, I, I threw ducks too, and so I, I do think a lot of it has to do with release, um, and, and whether you come down on the football or come a little bit more sidearm and let it slide off the ball. I used to have the point of my, you know, my, my index finger on the point, almost on the point Terry of the football, kind of like Terry Bradshaw. So sometimes when you don't let it, it doesn't come off clean. You almost come down through it, and so it comes with a little different flight. But does it really matter? As no. As long as it's where it's supposed to be? See, you guys are all about what looks pretty. Who I'm you guys? Don't you guys. I'm all about production. You're talking about Dan Orlovsky. You're talking about Dan You're talking about production, yeah. right? He's directly does mentioning you. Just, no, does does he's he's talking there. about your yeah, bullshit. Yeah, yeah, Brock yeah, Purdy's like an asshole. Yeah, go ahead. If you want to ask Kurt about that, actually. Yeah, what do you think about Brock Purdy? And with your throwing motion, I know it's different in your grip. Was there a coach ever that tried to change that and get you to do it like, I guess, he wanted to coach other guys? No, I mean, I think the bottom line Again, it was production. As long as it was successful, I'm not going to change what you do. I took that, you know, that kind of point from uh, from a high school quarterback that I was watching that really spun it really well. So wow. I thought, wow, that's cool. Let me try that. It didn't work quite as well for me. But no, nobody ever asked me to change that. In terms of Brock, uh, I think Brock is playing really good quarterback. Uh, I would tell you that I think over the last year and a half, he's played the quarterback position as well, if not better than anybody in the league. It looks different. Yep. I get it. I understand that it looks different than other guys. But Dan will attest to this. When you, when you watch the tape and you, at, you see what they're asking him to do, you watch every play, you watch the concepts, he is making some really, really tough throws. He makes them look easy. He makes them look like, oh, everybody could do that. Everybody couldn't do that. You couldn't plug even some of the better quarterbacks in our league. I don't think you're plugging them into this offense and you're getting some of the same throws. They might still make some plays around it, and they've got great players, but he's playing really, really good football, and he doesn't get credit for those things that, unless you're a quarterback, unless you know what's going yep. on, he should get credit for. Did so you, I'm, en I'm enjoying watching did it. Did you take some of that same flag? I know a lot, it's a lot bigger now, social media, everything, TV. Yep. When, when you were running the greatest show on turf, Bennett, yep. you had unbelievable Hall of Famers right. around you. And play caller. I, yeah. I would say that there. I think there was two things that were different. You know, the first thing was the first year I came on the scene, you know, I threw 40 touchdown passes. So Jeez. nobody had ever done that except Dan <laughs> Marino. But, but what I'm saying is I elevate, you know, my, my game was a way above other quarterbacks. So, yeah. so I got recognition for that because nobody else was doing it. Brock has been really good, but kind of in the same category as a lot of other good quarterbacks in the league. The other thing is when I was playing – Everybody looked like me. Mm -hmm. Like every quarterback was a drop back quarterback. Yep. Was Correct. a non athletic quarterback. He doesn't look now, like the freaks. The, the more norm is the Lamar Jacksons and the Josh Allens and the Patrick Mahomes and the athletic quarterbacks. Yep. So now he's kind of the minority in terms of, okay, not the big arm, more of a pocket passer. And so different eras, I think, they didn't look at me as, you know, anything different or yep. they didn't knock me because I looked like the guys that were playing at that point in time. And, and so I think we can all understand when you look at it athletically, Brock Purdy doesn't measure up, you know, athletically to these other guys, whether it's arm strength, whether it's size, whether it's athleticism. But to me, it's about what do you do in the position you're in and how do you play football with what they're asking you to do? And as I said, Brock's played that position yeah. for a year and a half as well as anybody in the league. Why can't we just credit him for that? Yeah, Dan. Yeah, you said him. Why don't you yeah. credit him, Dan? Uh -huh. I think part of it is because when people watch the, those oh, I'm happy guys, you just oh, admitted yeah. that you were one of the haters. Exactly. About okay, time. about time. This is good. Uh, I'm not going to let you do that. I'm not going to let you do it. You started it. You started I the whole it. thing. I, I actually got confirmation it was somebody else. Oh, who was it? I think part of it is because 
when you watch those other guys play oh, as a fan geez. at home, it, they go, I, that, I can't do that. I feel like a lot of right. fans at home watch Brock playing back. I feel like I can throw that pass or of do course. that. I, I have a question for you. So the way that I kind of look at it, Kurt, is this. Like when it comes to elite, franchise, whatever, when things aren't ideal around you, our left tackle's out for a couple weeks, our number one receiver's not going to play, our defense got 35 hung on them three, week, three weeks in a row. Like, Can you play at a level where we do or have the chance to win games? Right. Or when things are ideal around you and you're in a good place, good play caller, good talent, do we win a ton of games? Yeah. I think Brock's firmly in that latter group. Or like sure. Things are around him, they win a ton of games. Right. I don't know if he'll ever get into that other group. Hey, well, I, I, don't, I don't think yeah, that's, that's a good point, Dan. But, but, but we, don't, <laughs> we, don't, we don't know, and we don't have to know yet. Sure. I mean, you know, I say it all the time. Tom Brady wasn't that guy until year four, year five. Ben Roethlisberger wasn't that guy until year four or year five. This guy's in his first year and a half, and he's done exactly what he's supposed to do. I fully agree with you, is that those guys, those dudes, the franchise quarterbacks are the guys that can say, I can carry us with my right arm. Right. If we got to throw 40 times or if we have to be a throw first team, I can carry us. Yeah, those are those guys. And when you have a pocket passer, like myself, I had to have more things right around me or be able to do certain things in the pocket because it broke down. I couldn't run around and make a play where we you can't run, Kurt. You uh, can't move. You can't no. move. Maybe, yeah. Yeah. Maybe yeah. faster yeah. than Dan. Yeah. Maybe faster than Dan, but not, but not very fast. That Most of the people here but, are. But more things had to be right Everybody. to be able to be that special player. Yeah. You know, it doesn't mean you're not a special player, but more things have to be right when you're standing in the pocket and you got to throw it or you got to make a tight throw. Um, but the thing to me with Brock is he's going to have his opportunity. There will come a time where he doesn't have all this talent around him, the ball's in his hands, and then he can write the narrative. Why do we got to write the narrative now? Yeah. Why do we have We're to say you the story. are or you're not right now? It's a year and a half. Let He's him finish his story. Let him exactly. finish his story. Let him finish his story. Speaking of story, you're here for, I just got told, bingo yeah. moment. There's a million dollars being given away. Is that right? Well, possibly. Possibly. we got to gotta earn it. You guys play bingo growing up. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah I yeah. played bingo play. growing up. I went to the church every Wednesday with my mom. She would buy the cards. I'd get to take home whatever I want. You're taking so, trolls and everything? You got little lucky charms you're taking out there? I did not have trolls. I just had those, you know, sticky. Stamper. Dauber. Stamper things, exactly. Okay, but I everything mean. I won, so you couldn't wait for that bingo moment, right? Bingo! But I feel like Super Bowl is kind of like that. Every year, we have certain guys that have their bingo moment. Mm -hmm. I had mine in Super Bowl 34. Mm -hmm. I helped some other guys in some other Super Bowls I was in. But, uh, you know, you have your bingo moment. So what we're doing, Bingo Blitz, download it, free app, uh, free uh, registration to to, to make an account, and then if one of these defenses have their bingo moment and set a record with eight sacks, eight sacks. So again, Jeez. Dan, if I was playing in this game, I would not be promoting this because I wouldn't want to get sacked eight times, but if one of these quarterbacks gets sacked eight times by one of the defenses, we're giving away a million dollars to one of those account holders. So Ooh. that would be their bingo mm -hmm. moment, kind of like I had my bingo moment on Super Bowl Sunday. Happened. What? That ain't no. happening. Chuck, hey. Chuck, we're waiting for eight, big eight, eight sacks. Well, hey, the eight Super sacks? Bowl, the Super Bowl has had know. seven sacks four times. Oh. We saw more than eight sacks at least five times this season alone. So numbers. I get it. I get it. It numbers. sounds like a yeah, lot. Maybe but, don't be a hater, yeah. Chuck. Yeah. 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 Shut your mouth. Yeah. I hope I hope so. I hear it's a to win a million dollars. No, you don't. Sounds like you don't. But I think they're going to take care of Bosa, right? They're not going to let him sack anybody. No. What about Spags? All That'd that, be hard. All that I think if yeah. Kansas City would be the team to get it. Yeah. Okay. I, I mean, Chris I mean, Brock, Brock's going to be a, a great a game manager. He's going to get I'm rid here. of the ball. Kurt, we're thankful that you're a part of yeah. giving away a million bucks. Yeah. Don't go. listen Let's to do Chuck. It. Chuck Pagano just. He's, he's an old guy. He doesn't get it. I mean, he's a defensive guy, too. Like, I don't want any of these quarterbacks to get sacked eight times in the biggest game, but. If somebody wins a million bucks. Bingo! 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 needs that moment, man. Are Didn't still... Burrow get sacked seven against Tennessee a couple years ago in the Nine. playoffs? He got sacked seven times. Uh, no, he got sacked seven the by the Rams in the Super Bowl. Nine times against Tennessee. Yeah, seven times oh, yeah. by the Rams in the Shoot. Super Bowl a couple years ago. I'm a yeah. misspoke. It happened. It sounds like you did, yeah. Chuck. Yeah. Just yeah. like what you were saying at the blackjack table to Bailey McComas yesterday. Well, hey, Kurt, you still playing hoops every day? You look good. I have not Sweet played track. in a while, but I need to get back at it. Doug what are you Gottlieb doing? Are you keto? Are you up. doing the, uh, the Brecca? Are you in a cold I'm just, stuff? I'm just doing stuff, man. Working out. Just we, we, when are we line dancing? 
You come to Arizona. You didn't come out with me last year at the Super Bowl. I, I <laughs> reached out to you, told me you were coming. You didn't come. Yeah, but wait for the Cowboy hat. Pickleball. Whatever. Play but, hey, Pat. you come to Arizona. We're pickleball. Ball. I'm in. I pickleball. I got pickleball, too. We can pickleball. Ooh. Then we can go dancing. We're in. I'm in, man. Whatever you want to do. You're the Let's man. Go. Hey, you gotta call bingo! Me you got to call me back. All right, you're the man. Right. Ladies right. and gentlemen, legend. Good to see you guys. Super Chop. Love you, Kurt. Hall of Fame. Thank you. The thing about the random stop by is by incredibly cool people like Kurt Warner is I don't know all the titles that they have, sure. all the trophies. Sure. Yeah. So I just start assuming. Yeah, Hall of Famer, yep. Yeah. Super Bowl champion. Yeah. Hall of Famer. High call, yeah. First balloter. MVP. MVP. Yeah, the guy won Super offense Bowl. MVP. Yep. Super Bowl MVP. Greatest show on turf. Most show. Phenomenal call. I was going to talk about the Miami Dolphins team trying to be called that again and then them inevitably failing if he took that as compliment or not. Did you drop your banana? No, it's, I ate it. Good. Walking away with you. Tired banana. Hey, whoever. Uh, do you know how to play blackjack? I do. Let's yes. Go. Saddle up, Daniel. Let's go, Daniel. Easy. Welcome to the Thunder. Are we doing like real money? Sure. I don't have any cash on me. All right, we'll just put you your. You want to borrow? How much are you playing for? I'm gonna say these are $10 chips. Okay, so how many chips? $10 chips. Boy, put one out there. Sky off the table. How done? We got four kids, dude. I'm guessing Dan's got the first two nickels he ever made. <laughs> Hold on, can I cut? Chuck, Chuck, Chuck just with a <laughs> nuclear bomb dropped on Orlovsky's dome right there. Nine, nine. I'll hit. Ooh, 20! Wow. Yeah, yeah. You're going to roll me real money here. 14? Don't be a seven. It is. Bust. <laughs> Son wow. Dan That's, That's the first, 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 first winner. That's the first winner. First win. First win. All right, you owe me 50. I'm going to go run it back, run it back. All right, bad decision. Shannon Sharp did the same thing. Yep. Fool. <laughs> oh, no, Dan. Oh, Dan. Split him, Dan. Split him. Split him. He can't. It's, split him. He can't Bailey split five. Would double down split him, Dan. What would you like, Dan? Seven. Hit. Fifteen. Double down. Hit. Gotta hit it. Too many. Thank you. Oh, Get idiot. the hell out of here. Oh, idiot. No. Oh, right. yeah, see ya. Dan, the time's over, 16 funny beat man. You. Wow, this guy sucks. All right. Tough Thanks, break Dan. for the boys there. Yeah, you owe me 50 bucks, too. Um, as the hour wraps up, what do you got the rest of the week? NFL Live? Go uh, from here, Sports Center, Sports Center, NFL Live, Sports Center. Um, I'm doing some stuff with TCL. And then NFL Live, Sports Center, all that stuff. And then call the game Sunday. You're, oh, for Australia or something. Australia, Let's New Zealand, go. and all your cruise ships. That's Sweet. awesome. That's Sweet. Go. That's, That's go. awesome. Have you got to meet with the teams and everything? No, we don't, because it's we, we kind of let the the main broadcast handle that. They don't want to meet with us, you know. Like they they don't want to meet with anybody. So. Whoa. They want to meet with you. You're yeah. Dan Orlovsky. No, they want to meet with Romo and Nance, get all that done. And well, the Niners probably don't, because you started the Brock Purdy stuff. Oh yeah. Yeah. True. They're probably like, don't let that son of a bitch in here. What are you doing? Another one. I would love to do another real for real though. Do you and hey, Mad Dog fifty right? You and Mad Dog make up? Hey, that's a good yeah. question. Oh, Great yeah. question. Hey. Oh yeah, so you and Mad Dog, oh. I saw. You guys are Mad Dog right? and I Loving made up. up. I actually made him throw another fifty bucks. I made him throw uh, yesterday. What the fudge, dude? Come on. Whoa, Whoa. Oh, that was close. Whoa, that was easy. Watch your mouth. You made that was close. Game. So you guys are good now? Yes, sir. All right. I, uh, we no, a little these sensitive. These are twenty fives. <laughs> I was sensitive in the moment. Baby deer. Oh, you're being soft, is what they said. I have skin like armadillo. Ooh. I'm going to stay. Did you want to smack him in the mouth when you saw him, though? 18. Good 18. You, we're back to even. Um, I wanted it. I wanted I was pissed. My wife was mad, too. That's Another that's 100 down. D. Nah, we, we got to go to a break. You owe me 50. No, I don't. Yeah, it's you, just a $100 hey, remember, hand. Yeah, remember, seven. Dan, like what you say, write, think about me is none of my business. True. Still coaching you, bud. Boom. He's always Get it in. Be coachable, Dan. Get it in here, Dan. Team on us, Dan. Team on three. One, two, three. Team! Thank you, Dan. Have a great week. You're going to call the game phenomenally. We know that. How about you get a chance to see one of your heroes through Kurt Warner? What a first hour here at Radio Row. I believe the next hour we're on ESPN, too. Oh. Pretty massive guest. Mm. Oh, yeah. A couple of them. Yeah. That's why I couldn't come on at 10 o'clock. Yeah, I was wondering time. if I could come on at 10. Uh, <laughs> oh, this no, right Dan, here. you can't. All right, I'll, I'll stay. Hour two on the other side. Be a friend, tell a friend something nice. Take three. 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 a crowd of about 30 people moving through the back end of the business field here. And in the middle of it is this black Samoan man who has become the most famous human on earth. Great guy. 
Ladies and gentlemen, the GOAT, Dwayne The Rock Johnson. There's thousands and thousands of people skipping class to come see your big ass. Listen, there is thousands and thousands of you skipping class. It doesn't matter if they go to class. Moana is one of the best animated films of all time. What? Okay, can't, can't wait for the live action. Thank you, yes. But we, you're welcome. We talk about Moana. What can I say except you're welcome? And we talk about Moana. Honestly, listen, kid, I could go on and on. I could explain every natural phenomenon. Yeah. The tide, the grass, the ground. Oh, that was Maui just messing around. I could not even let it buried its guts. Sprouted a tree, now you got coconuts. What's the lesson? What is the takeaway? Don't mess with Maui when he's on a breakaway. Oh. And the temperature here on my skin oh. is a map of the victories I win. Look where I've been to make everything happen. Look at the me, 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 just ticket it, tapping. That's it. Wow. <laughs> On the Samoan side, Polynesian side, we have a word called mana. Mana is spirit, mana is power, mana comes from in here. It's the thing that gives you goosebumps, it's that thing you feel, it's that thing when I walked out and we felt this thing, this yeah. is mana. Yeah. mana. This is mana. 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 It, mana. It's very, very, very real and you could feel it. Wow. Little things like I don't get driven anywhere, I don't want to get driven anywhere, I don't like chauffeurs. Keeps me in my way, just a little grounded, like yes. I could drive myself everywhere and not telling some guy, hey, take me here, take me there. That is something I'm going to start saying like, yeah, because when they open you your door, you feel so bad. I can open my own door, dude. They're trying to be courteous, it's their job. But also, the day I stop opening my own door is the day I become a big old bitch. Here we go. That's a cup. Oh. Oh. Iconic sound, you guys know it. Oh! This special Terramana toast goes out to Passion. Congratulations on your show. Very proud of you, very proud of all you boys, and to all of you. We love you guys. Thank you for the support. Keep kicking ass. Cheers. In my world, when I sit down and we're talking about movies and all this other shit, it's never this. It's never this, this, back with the boys, and you. So, I appreciate it, and this one's to you. Thank this you, boys. You, pal. Cheers. You. The following program is a collection of stooges talking about happenings in the sports world. It is meant to be comedic informative. The opinions expressed on this show do not necessarily reflect the beliefs of their peers, their boss, or ESPN. There may be some cuss words because that's how humans in the real world talk. If you are a young, please seek permission before watching any further. Hey, why? Let's go. This show stinks, and the fact that you listen, we are very, very thankful for. The all-time leading tackler for the Green Bay Packers. You pay. Your friend, tell your friend something nice could change their life. Hello, beautiful people, and welcome back to Radio Row here at the Mandalay Bay Convention Center for Super Bowl 58. Hour two on this glorious Thursday starts all right now. Football he is the reason the entire world is here. My guy Vince just handed me a T-shirt on the other side, the Special Olympics champion for golf and skiing. I appreciate oh, yeah. that. It's fascinating the amount of humans you see here walking around. We just had a conversation with Kurt Warner. He was just there. <laughs> Ocho walked right behind him, didn't get a chance to chat with him, let alone the crew that is joining me here on this phenomenal set, that Mystic Creative Studios. Yep. Created with the help of obviously the team at ESPN. Uh, Super Bowl champion, all time leading tackler for the Green Bay Packers, AJ Hawks here. AJ. Oh, Darius sure. J. Butler is here, fresh off a of golf round with Phil Mickelson. Yes, sir. Still on the high. Right. Still on the high. 36 year football coach, people's coach, Chuck McGall is here. Oh, hey, Chuck, you called out Dan Orlovsky there, didn't you? Hey, you, you a little bit JJ Watt called out Jake Glazer yesterday, and then you just said, wait, Dan, did you say Carolina was going to be good? Did, 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 you said that to uh -huh. Dan. <laughs> What's up, Black well, I mean, outspoken about it, right? How great that staff was. Yeah, and that was at the beginning and, of the year. That was like seven staff. months ago. You're like, well, let's get it. Let's remember. Let's remember. Do you have a little heat with Dan Orlovsky? A little bit of... No. Love Dan. No. 
That's why, hey, that's why you love this show. We don't just talk shit, you know, far away. If you come in, show up, I'm, ask him right in your face. Turn it up a little. Change skin like an armadillo. Yeah. JJ Watt and Jay Glazer yesterday was awesome. Ooh. That was interesting. That was yeah. that, that was that was interesting. I've, you could feel it all the way over here. You know, it was where AJ <laughs> and you were. And it was it, it was on. That I was side. sitting in the hotel room. And feeling it. Yeah, you should have seen how I felt here because Jay Glazer turned his back to me, so I couldn't even save him, you know? So they're oh. both looking back. So I was over here at Glazer. I actually said Glazer because I said Jay, yeah. but it's JJ and it's Jay. Mm -hmm. so, so neither of them were listening in there. It was quite a scene, but I'm happy we settled it. It seems like it got settled, handled pretty good. You think? Uh, <laughs> right under the bridge. Chuck, what'd you say about Dano? He's got the first two cents he ever made, or? First two nickels, he's still got in the bank. <laughs> well, they say he doesn't spend a single dollar. That's one no, half of the hammer. God. Cowboys Town Diggs. And then one half of the toxic table at Boston. Connor Ty Schmidt is in the back going to the bathroom. We yeah. will have him back soon. In a matter of moments, we will have a uh, guest on here. It's a pretty big deal. Yeah, it, big. Don't know if that chair, <laughs> now that I'm looking at it. Don't think so. You know, I, I, I'm not 100% David sure. David Baker's sure. coming on? No, Hall of Fame Baker is not <laughs> going to be uh, on the program, but it's another massive man. Speaking of massive things, a lot of stories uh, happening here in lovely uh, Las Vegas. Andy Reid has given us updates on Tony, Tooney, and McKinnon. Is anything big we need to know about uh, anything for those injuries? Uh, it, doesn't, it doesn't feel like Tooney's going to go. Uh, allegretti has been getting the starters reps. Uh, as far as Tony, uh, that's kind of seems up in the air. We're not sure what's going on there, but Niners are pretty healthy. It feels like it feels like out overall pretty healthy game, which is all you can ask for really in the Super Bowl. Yeah, anytime you're not talking about injuries, it's good. Yeah. You yep. know, especially in the NFL, but we're in the Super Bowl, so normally the two teams that make the Super Bowl are going to get lucky with an injury situation. Remember the Niners, they lose Trent Williams and Debo in the middle of the season. It gets real bad real quick. 0-3, oh, bang, bang, bang. This team's dead. They're all the way out. They've remained relatively healthy since then, Chuck, and that's a massive deal to make it this far. Yeah, I, I think that defense, they had a bye right after those three losses, I believe. Then they yep. went, into, went into bye week, made some adjustments. Wilkes did some – they were still trying to – communication, what kind of scheme, this, that, and the other, following to make a Ryan's. Oliver out at nickel, moved uh, Lenore yep. into the nickel spot. I like Guys started getting after the quarterback. Bunch of pressure. Wilkes came down, down to the field. They, they figured it out. AJ, when you guys won the Super Bowl, you got hot late? Were you hot all yeah, year? Yeah, we what had to was win uh, our last two or three just to get into the playoffs and then win three road games in the playoffs. I, I love that. What we had to do. That's kind of what the Chiefs are doing right yeah. now. Yeah, absolutely. And you don't. We weren't like the villains, like the Chiefs. I don't feel like, but it's definitely like a bunker mentality situation everywhere you go. And each week, I think you win on the road. Your team gets more and more confidence. Yeah, and the Chiefs team didn't need to find more no. reason to get confident, but they feel like they are the most confident right now. Absolutely. I mean, it's obviously it's not scripted, right? We know that, but this has uh, played out perfectly for the AJ. Chiefs. Where Andy Reid does not have to de-recruit his guys and tell them, hey, you're terrible. Everyone else is saying great things about us. No. People outside are already saying, we're sick of you guys winning. Let's let somebody else win. So they don't, like, he doesn't even have to fuel them. They get that easily from the outside. Andy loves that, right, Chuck? When on Tuesday night or Monday night, they're getting booed out of an arena whenever they get to Las Vegas for the Super Bowl? Absolutely. Stoke it. Yep. Just keep <laughs> stoking that fire. What do you think? He's, he's pulling up headlines? He's pulling up clips, letting them know what people are saying about him? I don't know if Big Red, if Coach Reid has to do that, really. Nope. I don't. I don't think so. He's just like, I got Pat, <laughs> I got Spags, I got this do, defense, do, I got Chris Jones, I got Kelsey. Do coaches get worried though when they are, like we say the rat boys and Nick Saban thing? Don't coaches get more and more nervous the more you win and the more everyone on the outside is telling you how great you are? I know every coach I've ever had, they are scared to death and they're they're puckered and they're paranoid. Tell you when you everything's going well because they don't want you to read your clippings and hear all the great things. No, abs absolutely, but. This team is, I mean, veteran-led. They just got great leaders. You don't hear anything yeah. that where guys are talking like, "Yeah, we're this, we're that." They just kind of like keep their mouth shut. Pat always says the exact perfect thing when he's yep. on the mic. But there they for a little do. bit, he did. Remember, he almost fought a ref this yeah. year. Yeah, it's good though. Well, that and which I like. Yeah, that, I like that, it. That's like the new Chiefs, which you love. If you know, I mean, a guy hasn't seen the field since that. Well, I mean, he, he had a baby. He had a baby. 
the well, guy had carried oh, Shanghai right. baby. Okay. Kind of hurt. Right, didn't he? He hip and injury. Yeah, yeah, he had a yep. child, though. But he did have a kid. For personal mm -hmm. reasons. We're happy for him. Of course, he also is, is that what it was? What's that? Is that what it was? Well, there was a live that happened. I mean, we yeah. don't know. There's yeah. a couple things. That's the, we, we don't know the full story of it. Seems like a fascinating, he's going to get a ring, they win. Yep. Which oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. I think he'll probably be great. I wouldn't for. be surprised if he gets, a, I wouldn't be surprised. I know a lot of people probably would if he plays and gets a couple of touches game. We know Andy Reid, if you're up, it's a chance. You're going to get a chance to touch the ball in the game. We saw uh, McCole Hartman, who had that big fumble um, near the goal line Buffalo. Mo Mo I'm one person at home. Like, why the hell is he even getting a touchdown here? It's to be Kelsey, Pacheco, Pat. Like, those are probably the only three guys to touch the ball. But you saw it last year. I think Scott Moore yep. got a touchdown with a similar player as Kadarius Toney. So I wouldn't be surprised if he gets in there and somehow uh, gets, gets his hand on the ball and makes a big play. McKinnon, too, they're saying uh, because he did practice, so they're thinking that he might go, at least has a better chance than Tooney, and that if that was the case, he would probably get that spot over Tony. So well, I agree. Not a and, lock yet. and Sky Moore just got activated off the IR, so who knows what's going on there, too. How about, like, MVS becoming a guy? You know what I mean? Because Ty's not up here right now, but, boy, Ty's, like, that's the MVS story, whatever. He's open, he's deep, and then for whatever reason, it just doesn't happen. This year, though, biggest play of the year. They drop it right into a bucket. He makes wow. a huge catch for them. Rasheed Rice is playing the best football he's yep. played. Travis Kelsey's playing better than he's ever played football before at this level Definitely of being good the last three weeks, whenever it's all heightened. And now he's talking about winning the first ever Vegas Super Bowl, the mecca of entertainment, and want to get into it. It's like all eyes or on the fact that the Chiefs seem to still be the Chiefs. Yep. Oh, and, boy, we, there was a lot of people that lost that that faith through a large portion of the season this year. Well, and it, we always – or not always, but we've been comparing them to the Patriots. And, like, you look at what happened with the Patriots those last two Super Bowls. Like, the, the whole deflate gate thing, that was a huge motivator. And that wasn't even from the public side of it. Like, they're just feeding off what the public and the Niners now everyone wants them to lose – this bad like this really is probably the most motivated they've ever been and like we've said all week the most complete they've ever been like yeah. this really might be the best Chiefs team we see you want to talk about being motivated from the public how about a man who's known by every single public that exists hell yeah without further ado this is a big moment <laughs> huge this is a big huge. this is a big really big this is a big big me. moment this is a big moment Ladies and gentlemen, oh. if you smell what the <laughs> rock is cooking, yeah. let's go. Twin yeah. the rock, let's concert. go. Let's go. How are you? Is that chair big enough? Legit. Is that chair big enough? I, I so, man. Yeah, we might have to. Good to see you. Great to see you. Dude, Daps. Daps all around. Up, yep. Daps all around. Con. Good to see you. Daps all around. How we doing, Dwayne? Good to see you. How we doing, Dwayne? Got to be Good to see you. Oh, watch don't the Don't roll your ankle. Don't roll your ankle. ankle. Now he's got mana. He saw it. Yeah. He's always got you in his wear. So much mana. Hey, dude. I would like to say that since we started the show, this was the crowd that was out front. <laughs> uh, but this is certainly not the case. That is certainly not the case. Everywhere you go, there is a buzz. There's an electricity, especially now. Congrats on just crushing life, bro. First of all, from all of us to you. Now, uh, you're going to have to hold that mic, though, so we can hear. Yeah. Yeah. You're going to have to hold that mic. You're going to have to hold that mic. Yeah, we can't hear a word you're saying. Yeah. Well, that's it. You, you want mine? You want mine? Do you want to wear this? Oh. Hold on, though. I didn't think this would fit the head. Seriously. You're hey. muted. You're, you're, oh, can we no. turn this guy's mic There's on? There's a button on there, I think. Should I just give him mine? No, it won't work. Go ahead, scream into that thing. How about now? Oh. Jeez. Oh, my. <laughs> <laughs> it's going very well. It's cool. Yeah, it is. It's still rock. There we go. All right, here we go. Can we turn on the headset thing? How's that? Hey! Oh, oh, let's God. go. Oh, hey, we smell. We smell. We smell. We smell it. Smell All right. It. We smell it. Um, congrats on everything. Thanks, Obviously, brother. incredibly busy. You're a board member now on like a Fortune 600. Co Let's go. Come on now. Oh, thank you, boys. You're thank a founder of UFL, you. one of the new league, spring leagues now joining with USFL and the XFL. You're going there. Yep. And also, you're the biggest conversation in uh, 
in professional <laughs> wrestling. Again. How do you feel about the world right now? Feels like the rock is on top, uh, like you always have been, but it's very loud right now with you. Do you feel that? Do you sense that? And how do you feel about it all? I feel it. I sense it. I feel it every day. I'd like to think, you know, we try to keep our finger on the pulse of, of what's going on, whether you're in entertainment or not, of just the stuff that's going on around you. Uh, there's been a, a lot of big developments, a lot of cool stuff that I've been lucky enough yes. uh, to experience these past couple of weeks. Member of the board of TKO, uh, complete full ownership of the name The Rock, which is a bit, as you guys know, huge, huge. Deal, oh. deal. Um, and of course, uh, asking the question now: If The Rock goes out to eat, does he sit in a booth? No. Does he sit <laughs> at the bar? No. Nope. Or does a rock sit at the head of the table? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that place went crazy. Oh, oh, they, went, they went nuts. So, yeah, there's a lot going on. And, yes, of course, as, as what you're talking about, in our world of professional wrestling, which we all love and enjoy, uh, in our world of WWE, that's one of the best parts about it is when you can anchor in to the passion of the fans. Yeah, today we got a press conference, 4 p.m. local, we got 7 p.m. Eastern. Man. It's yes. going to be T-Mobile, free to the public. It's free to the public. Gonna it's be Super Bowl weekend. <laughs> Here we go. And history is going to be announced. I history is going to be made. Cody Rhodes is going to make his decision on who he's going to face oh. at WrestleMania, even though we all have a feeling of the direction that that is going. So I cannot wait. Okay, so a lot of people talking about you being back, especially for WrestleMania, part of this press conference. Yeah. You've always been in shape. So I think us as wrestling fans have never been like, well, The Rock's not in shape. That's why he's not coming back into the ring. Is it schedule? Is it a point of your life? Is it a reflection point where you're like, I need to go back home and prove some stuff to myself and to everything? Or why do you think now is the time to be back in wrestling as big as you are with the WWE? Um, a few things, though. You, you, you talk about uh, getting in shape and ring shape. As you guys know, football players, like, man, it's, whatever it is, the sport that you do, you do it, you love it, you leave it, it's tough to come back to it, right? If you guys had to put the pads back on, lace the cleats up, put the helmet back on, yes. and roll, it's tough to do. In yes. the world of pro wrestling, I haven't done that in a very long time. So uh, when I do go back to the ring at WrestleMania, the most important thing is a training camp, which has already started. I have multiple rings set up over in Hawaii. I have a ring set up uh, on the West Coast, and we're, we're full on in camp. How do you feel? Uh, hurting. <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> the legit. body's hurting because it's hard. It's hard to adjust back. But in a way, it's like riding a bike. Like I was very lucky in my career that I was somewhat of a ring general and knowing the ring and where to go and where to be at certain times uh, when I needed to. But the training camp part of it is it, hard because you could work out on the weights. You could do all the stuff that y you, know, you want to do. Mm -hmm. But until you go back in the ring and you take those falls, those slams, those suplexes, things like that, there's nothing like it. I, was, I assume you're filming your entire training camp right now. We're filming it, brother. Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, we but by the way, to answer your question, it's an important one on why. Yeah. Why? Dude, I love it. And that's why I don't have to go back. I've been lucky enough to get this point, get to this point in my career. But I love what I do. I love getting in there. And I love pro wrestling. It's who I am. It's what I was born to do. And I was born in this business. But also, from the second that Roman Reigns years ago said, I'm the head of the table and I'm the head of this bloodline. Greatest of all time. That's when our story began. So it's converging now. It's converging to WrestleMania. I understand the passion, uh, which we are going to address and we'll get to today. We could even get to right now. But at the end of the day. Okay, let's talk about the passion. That yes. has come from this D-butt attitude era. Okay? Yeah. AJ, Freeze. attitude error. Mm. Con man, a little bit later. Tone Diggs, attitude error, though. Okay? They're not the ones, though, that are filling the arenas right now, currently. Right. They're the ones that watch from outside. Yeah. And from being back in with Raw, it's like the arena, Cody wrote, let's go. This guy's put this company on his back. But from the people who've been watching wrestling for, like, let's say 20 years or whatever, it's like, wait a second, this is our generation's guy yes. now coming. But you're representing, yeah. like, our... This feels like a generational conversation that's taking place between two iconic wrestling families. Obviously, Obviously the Rhodes family, yes. and obviously your guys' bloodline is huge. Yeah. Did you expect the reaction to be what it was? When we haven't even made anything official, nothing's even been made official. Nothing's official. Nothing has no. been made official. <laughs> no, nothing has been deemed this or that, or a story isn't being end. But like, did you expect the reaction whenever you came back to be what it was, or was it kind of uh, kind of came out of nowhere? 
with regards to WrestleMania, Rock and Roman together. Yes, with uh, Cody Rhodes. With, with, with Cody here. Yes. Uh, I expected it. We expected it because it's right there. Again, you go back and, again, you like to think, hey, I got my finger on the pulse. We all try to keep the finger on the pulse. Ultimately, what the fans want and what they're saying. And sometimes, oftentimes, as you guys know, in sports and entertainment and anywhere, what, regardless of the vertical of business you're in, there's a wave of noise that happens right out of the gate. Immediately. That you want to just pause for a second. Let's not make any rash decisions. Let's wait and see how it all shakes out and see what happens from there. So it was just a matter of waiting. So now I was not surprised at it. I did expect it. Uh, but here, here's the fun part about this is... You have, and I've, by the way, I've known Cody for a long time. He's a buddy of mine. The American Dream, Dusty Rhodes, and my old man, soul man, Rocky Johnson, they were boys. They tag teamed together down in Florida. We used to go over to the Rhodes house a lot all the time when I was growing up. And so we're tight in that way. I love Cody. I love his passionate fans. Then there's the other passionate uh -huh. fans yeah. of Cody. Yep. And they're called the, uh, what's that? Oh, Cody Crybabies. Yeah. Oh, that's what they're okay, called. okay. All right. Okay. Yeah. Got it. I didn't, I didn't know the name that was coming. It was the Cody Crybabies. Yeah, okay. And these are grown ass men. And uh, Cody got to finish his story. <laughs> he got to finish yes. his story right now. It's like, wait a second. Hold on. Hey, Dad, you want to go outside and play catch with me? Not now. Cody's got to finish <laughs> And I'm upset. The wife comes in. Hey, honey, do you want to go have sex? Not now. Cody's got to finish his story. At the end of the day, Look, you got the Cody crybabies, and you have the Cody fans, and then you have Cody himself, and there's a clear distinction between the three. But The Rock says this. Those Cody crybabies, the ones for every 10 tweets, they're shoving a chicken McNugget in their mouth. <laughs> for every 20 tweets, they're shoving two McNuggets up their ass. What? The Rock says this. All you got to do is sit back, know your role, shut your mouth, and enjoy the ride that The Rock is going to take your candy asses on. So hashtag that. Hashtag shut your bitch asses up. Hashtag Cody crybabies. Yes! 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 Yes, the man. Okay. So, yes. That's the fun part. Yes, that's Let's wrestling. Go. Of what we do. Yeah, that's yeah. wrestling. It's pro wrestling. That's WWE. And it's awesome. And I can't wait for uh, for this afternoon at yes. T Mobile. Yeah, there's so much. I mean, uh, <laughs> man, that felt good. Let's go. Oh, yeah. <laughs> did it feel, yeah, it felt good. I did. That, that, you're talking about the. By the way, uh, your eyes changed. It's like there was a shift in your eyes. You could feel yeah. the shift yeah. in the room change. Yeah. Right? The air change in the room when. So I went in that direction. So that was we grew up on that though. Yeah. So like uh, obviously we still use gifts from those days. Your uh, shut up, bitch, is oh. uh, <laughs> one of the greatest responses <laughs> of any tweet, pretty much that yep. you kind of want to have it. Uh, do you miss that? Do you miss getting out and because that's a character, obviously. Now and you can't do that in real life. What you just did there you can do it in wrestling though. You can go up to an eight-year-old kid in wrestling and say, hey, you suck, kid. And then it's just, like, expected. Like, that is, <laughs> like, I did that. I was a heel at NXT, and they had, it was during COVID, so they had, like, hockey boards, glass, and there was, like, a, a dad and a kid, and they both had Adam Cole shirts on. They were booing me. And I look at this eight-year-old kid, and I go, you suck, kid. And then you, you're a piece of trash to the dad. And then just walk away, and it's like, this is the greatest this is the greatest entertainment forum of all time. I assume that as you're doing everything else, and you told us at Colorado, like, when I'm doing my movie press junkets, it's not like this. It's not like this. There's nothing like the WWE. Whenever you walk out there and the arena just goes absolutely absurd, and they show that you have actual goosebumps. Yep. When you just got back into that, the Cody Crybabies, know your role, chicken nugget, that whole thing, I assume it feels good to get back in there. It's a nice reminder of everything that you are, I assume, in the middle of all, all the shit you have going on in your life. Dude, it's the it's the it's the it's the special place. It's the special thing in my life that I love and I hold on to and I protect because if you think about it, when we were on the show in Colorado, I knew that you know, I don't get opportunities like this where we could just hang and chop stuff up and talk about everything from this all the way to over here. But in that, for that world of pro wrestling where I'm able to do that and get into You that. are an asshole. asshole. Dude, yeah. that was great. Awesome. Great. Uh, arena. Can't do that anywhere. And we could have kept it going on, no, by the yes. way. Yeah, absolutely. There's nothing like that, by the way, which, is, which again, it goes back to, it's why I love it. It's why I go back. And, y you know, the... The, the funny thing about the, whether it's the Cody Cry Babies or whether it's the, the surge of the net doing its thing within the first hour of information dropping, at the end, end of the day, there's a few things that happen. My music hits, the place goes bananas. Look, when we went in Birmingham and we did that big face-off with 
rockin' Roman Reigns, you know, that was a long time coming. And if you think back from Birmingham, from San Diego, when I said, should I sit at the head of the table, to back when we were on in Colorado saying, hey, boys, we were supposed to do Rock and Roman at WrestleMania 39. Yes. And it never happened. Like, everything is strategic. Everything is well thought out. And the there's reason a I'm story to up, be told there? There's a story to be told. No. A longer story. Oh. To there's be told. another what? story. Is that right? No, I didn't know there was a potential. But by the way, but the key, I feel, is when you're in this position, I'm very lucky and fortunate to be in this position, is to also make sure, man, that you're flexible along the way. Like, the goal, the the... The North Star goal to me is to continue to build WWE as a global brand. And if this is our world of pro wrestling fans, and it's a big fan base, as you guys know, going into WrestleMania, let's cast the net way past this. Bring new people in so they can enjoy the product and keep them here. And in order to do that, let's keep our eyes on the North Star, but let's be open to how we get there. Long gamer, bud. Bring some old people Long. back in, too. Yes, yeah. definitely Long bring gamer. some old people. AJ has a question for you, Rob. Hey, what are you doing? Are you launched a new line with Under Armour throughout this whole process. I feel like I see you fishing, walking by your pond, driving like your little UTV around. What are you doing with them now? I feel like every time I go into Dick's Sporting Goods, I see yeah. more setups of you throwing ropes, doing all kinds of stuff. Yeah, so... Uh, I founded a company with uh, Under Armour, uh, partnered with them. It's called Project Rock. And uh, the brand has been great, all training gear. I felt like there was a space out there in the consumer product area, especially as it relates to um, to sports and athletic gear, Mm -hmm. in that we play ball, whether it's football, soccer, baseball, whatever it is, hockey, whatever your sport is, basketball. Everything starts and will always end in the gym. Mm -hmm. You go to the field, you go in the ring, you go in the cage, whatever it is. But we're all, even when we retire and those days are behind us, we all go back to the gym. So that white space was creating training gear for men and women and kids that is badass. It looks cool, but not only that, but most importantly, uh, great performance. So it's good stuff. I'm going to get you a pair. Wow, hey, oh, hey, hey, he can't fish for shit, though. Like, I'm not <laughs> he good. can't fish for shit? Nah, terrible. AJ was you. an Under Armour guy, too. Yeah, he played clack. 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 Hey, you're like a phenomenal angler. Yeah. Like, I'm pretty good. I see you on the internet, yeah. I'm, I'm not too bad, yeah. How nice but, is that? You just get out there. I, I've never really got into fishing myself. I have ADD, so I don't got time for these fish to decide to eat my shit or not. <laughs> okay, I need to have success. We need to keep this yeah, moving. Sure. But every video you sent, and you had a great, like, dolly shot in this yep. last one, where, like, you're looking over these hills, and then you got, like, a fishing rod in the th- It was like, that looks like one of the most therapeutic things of all oh, time. Yeah. Is fishing, and I guess that's one of the... It is. Like, you need to get away there? I, I, I love that. So, so for me, my sanctuary is fishing, and it's. I know it sounds wild, but just driving in my truck because, uh, and I got to protect that thing. I, I heard a saying a long time ago, and you got to protect the thing that allows you to do what you do. And for me, the those things that allow me to do what I do are at home with the family, working out, fishing, and just driving in my pickup truck because those are the places where. I don't have a thousand people follow me around, pulling me this way, pulling me that way. So, fishing is also something I did with my old man when we were growing up, man. So and now, Andre the Giant, I saw a young Ron. It was awesome. <laughs> hey, that was a great show. That Thank was a you, great man. way to tell yep. your story. Yep. Thank you. Yep. That was compl- like a very innovative way to tell your life story. You know, people do like docu series, people do other stuff. To do a sitcom through, I thought was. We watched it. I was a big fan of what you did. Thank you. I appreciate that. A lot of a lot of people were. Well, how about this for a little inside baseball information? So the creator of that show was my producing partner, Nanachka Khan. Recognize the last name. Yeah. Is Nick Khan's sister. Oh. oh. What a oh. weapon. Nick Khan. Yes. Weapon. Weapon. Going to be a president. Some, well, maybe you too. <laughs> Together. <laughs> I didn't even. Oh. Yeah, we got two oh, presidents right. on set God. potentially. Yeah, the weapon. This, yeah, absolute weapon. He, he's a weapon. That's our guy. D. Butch. There he is right there. And baby Nick, there what a There's legend. the most evil writer next to him named Brian Gewertz. Yeah. <laughs> All right, Brian. All right, Brian. Hey, He's right. evil. There he is. Hey, I got to see him. Uh, I got to see him, you, what? working a bus in Colorado. And I was like, damn, this is like my childhood happening uh-huh. right in front of my eyeballs that, here. That was fun. It was fun, dude. And then... Yes. Yeah, you just had the entire arena chant, you are an asshole, for 15 minutes. I mean, that <laughs> was, it was the greatest experience of all time. D-Butt's got a question. Yeah, speaking of your old man in the bloodline, you said you were born to wrestle, to be a pro wrestler. How For us, you know, a lot of us feel like, hey, I was born to play football, I was born to golf, whatever your thing is. How tough was it to 
for you to transition to become this huge, obviously, movie star, business owner, board member? How was that transition, leaving the ring and then becoming those things? And obviously, you know, the ring is always a part of it. How was that sure. transition for you? How tough was it? It was hard. Mm -hmm. It was hard because I didn't want to be one of those guys that was just kind of hanging around and uh, felt like I had accomplished. Like, one day, I had this real aha moment. I think it was in Madison Square Garden. It was a live event, no pay-per-view, no Raw, not SmackDown. Just what we used to call a house show. Yep. So I went and I remember looking around the locker room and going and looking at every single guy with all respect and going, man, I've wrestled all of these guys. We've headlined around the world. I don't know what's next. It, I don't know if I can continue, you know, this kind of trajectory, mm -hmm. WWE, because at that time we had already uh, acquired WCW. Bill Goldberg just came in. I just did this big run with Brock Lesnar, made him champion. He was carrying the company for the next decade. That was the plan. So I had that moment where I felt like, all right, I'm, I'm at this point in my career now. If I decide to transition to Hollywood and have a film career, where I'm not getting my ass kicked every night, uh, I'm not on the road wrestling 225 nights a year in a different city every night, um, and that's you know your marriages take a, yep. take a hit, your relationships take a hit, life life takes a hit. Yeah. I, I had a two-year-old daughter at that time; she's an adult now who's who's in crushing. Oh, she's yeah. crushing. She's yep. kicking yep. ass. She's so, feeling the effects of. Uh, <laughs> she's feeling it too. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> Cody's got to finish his story. Your dad, yeah. Yeah, I, I've, I've had some. And by the way, it, you know, it's like she's also gotten death threats. Third. Wow. Which is that makes absurd. sense. That makes sense. It's crazy. Yeah, it right? makes sense. Like, saying, yeah, it makes sense. That's how it should be. Yeah, like, come on, guys. We're all in this thing. And and by the way, it's like what happens in the middle of the ring and on these storylines. Don't forget that again, inside baseball, outside the ring, we all talk. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We all figure this <laughs> thing out. We're all working together. So anyway, to answer your question, uh, I felt like I was it was at a um, inflective time in my life and I mm -hmm. thought, okay, I could either stay in this or I can have ambitions to go and start a film career, and if I'm good, if I'm decent, if I could have some longevity, then maybe I could bring WWE and wrestling with me. So it was a little challenging at first because I left when I was on top. Yeah. <laughs> and that's a big swing. And so very fortunate. Do you ever think out. about the uh, Hollywood person that told you to lose weight? And then you just go like, oh, well, are you the dumbest person of all time? Because, like, uh, obviously now you're just known as the biggest, strongest, most jacked guy on earth. <laughs> right. And that was not how it was originally supposed to be, right? Whenever you went over to the Hollywood world? No. They wanted him to be like a small little twig. Like a twig. Really? Like, like, right, didn't they? Yeah. yeah. So it, it was it, it, at that They wanted you to be a model. Like, they wanted you to be like a model. Well, That's there was nobody, there was no wrestler coming over really trying to make it in Hollywood. Certainly no black, half black, half Samoan raises his eyebrow, <laughs> says something about cooking. You know, what kind of shit is that? Uh, and at that time, the biggest stars in the world were Johnny Depp, Will Smith, George Clooney. So they said, if you want to be a leading man in a movie star, well, that's, you've got to be like that. Don't call yourself The Rock. You've got to lose weight. You're too big. Get out of the gym. Like, all that kind of stuff. Don't talk about wrestling when you do press. Uh, and if you don't know any better, which I didn't know any better. Of course. If you're trying to make it, you're like, shit, okay, I think. It doesn't feel right. But I think so. They're the experts. They're the experts, yeah. and they've gone down that road. So I tried that for about a year or two, and then finally I said, uh, "Excuse the language." I said, "Man, fuck this! I'm not doing yeah. it." Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, I, I, I have to yeah. either do it my way and fail, or I'm not going to do it your way. I got to do what's right. Yeah. So it worked, it worked out. out. Yeah, yeah, it, it did. Yeah. 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 What are you doing? You well. just eat. So you just eat for shoot. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> You're eating seven meals a day. No, about six. Six meals a day. <laughs> Way less. Perfectly. I mean, we're talking about the proteins. Macros. Full macro. The whole thing is just like dialed in. And that's every single day. It, Except for the, we see the. Cheat days. Cheat, cheat days that are well, absurd. Cheat, 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 they are absurd. They're awesome, by but the way. They're yeah. awesome. Yes. They're the best. Yeah. Some of your best posts, honestly. Look, I'm a big advocate. You guys work your ass off throughout the week. Enjoy yourself. Have to. You know, whenever that is. So, but no, the macros are measured. Everything is measured. In this training camp, it's the same thing. We have six, seven. Are you going to be bigger or small to you? Because we've seen you go from like. Oh, this is a superhero yep. too. Like, oh, a little bit more Tread. speedy rock. You know, like you. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Are, are you? Do you have a desired weight that you're trying to get to for I'll, the I'll, ring? I'll probably lean out a little bit. So what we do with this particular training camp, because it's ring work, I think 
the smart approach for us and for me isn't, hey, let's get down to, say, 262. If right now I'm at 268, let's just hold. Where are you right now? About 268. Okay. Mm. Yeah. About. You know at all times. <laughs> well, I, I have a sense of it, but a lot of times we don't need to step on a scale. A lot of it is just how I'm feeling in the ring and how I'm able to move in the ring and agility and mobility and things like that. Like so you just took down half a ZOA, though, so you're 268.0. Oh, two yeah. no, I'm ready to go. I'm gonna run through this wall. And <laughs> <laughs> Con man's got a question for you before we bring out another legend. I think you're hanging out with us through that time. Yeah. Yeah, Rock. Obviously, huge news yesterday. Moana two. Yes. I mean, you, you came what? on in Colorado. And we talked about that was Moana a one, but Moana two was. There was talks of it being a series, gonna be a movie. Yeah. I mean. How no, you info, brother. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, huge we're news. Tied in. Yeah, it's huge. massive. How popped up for you are that? And then when was it decided? Like, hey, well, let's just do a movie. This thing made a billion yep. dollars last time. <laughs> yeah. Why would we change the recipe? Let's run it back. Dude, I love that you know that information, number one. And, and number two, thank you. It was a big news. We announced at the earnings call for Disney, they announced uh, Moana 2. Um, <laughs> we, well, here's what's crazy is happening right now is this year I'm going to shoot the live action Moana. Oh, yeah. With Tommy Kale, right? Who's our who's our director? Um, he directed Hamilton, by the way. So and Lin Manuel Miranda music, the whole thing. So we're doing that, but we're also uh, we have to finish, which we will, our Moana animated sequel. Yeah. So as we were making this series, they had big goals and ambitions. Disney did to create a series that was incredible, and dude. When I saw, they sent over, they took me through this, this um, big show and tell, and I watched this like a piece of the animated version between Moana and Maui. New music, by the way, which is going to be Here really cool. Oh, yes. I was so blown away by that, and it looks so incredible. And these animators, I mean, it's Lion King, and it's, yeah. you know, they are the best in the world. What I saw in that minute and a half presentation was incredible. That was supposed to be the series. Along the way, as we were putting the series together, uh, Disney and all of us uh, felt like, oh, man, this is a movie. Like you said, what are we doing? Yep. <laughs> Let's make a movie out of this. <laughs> Come on. And so here we are. Yeah. Well, hey, we're pumped about Smart, it. Super yeah. pumped. I mean, yeah. you, in Colorado, listen, kid, I can go on and on. Yeah, right? I can it's explain like, everything. No, 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 no. Yeah, you just <laughs> right into ground. it. Yep. Yeah, man. And you can actually shoot, sing, too. So it seems like that's a perfect world for you. I don't know if I could shoot. What yes, you yeah, say yeah. except yeah. you're welcome. welcome. Sounds so, <laughs> Perfect. Sounds so good. Uh, joining us now, ladies and gentlemen, the man, the he's legend, a friend of the Rock. Obviously, you're not going to be a friend of the Rock unless you've done something phenomenal and incredibly impressive. AJ Hawk just dropped his entire pack. You stay right there if, if you want to. Yeah. Do Again, want? like Jim orders. Damn right. <laughs> See that? See that name right there? Yeah. <laughs> Give me some. See that? <laughs> Look at that name. Joining us, ladies and gentlemen. The CEO of Fanatics, a man who has absolutely changed the merch game, obviously with licenses with the NFL and the WWE and everything else, Michael Rubin. Hey. Rubin. Oh. Hey. Hey. Here we go. Here we go. Oh, yes. man. What's up, brother? Oh, man. Dude. Doing? How are you doing, man? Thank you so much. We do. We do. We'll get you afterwards. And your money's real. We're gonna burn ours. Yeah, yeah. House, house. I'll be house. Do what you gotta do. Um, on the set here. This is good. Hey, thank you for joining us. Obviously, I mean, um, this is the dumbest show of all time. We got Dwayne the Rock Johnson and uh, you know, self-made billionaire. Uh, this is uh, pretty sweet. Hey. Boys, congrats to you two. Yeah. Good work. Oh my God. Congrats to you two. Congrats to this congrats man to this too guy. as well. Okay, so let's I talk. we were here to like announce my WWE debut. I was going to be. Uh, well, all right, to all I, the Cody I, I, cry I, babies. <laughs> <laughs> Michael I, Rubin is I, taking Cody's place. Now it's Michael Rubin versus Roman Reigns at WrestleMania <laughs> instead go, of Cody I'm Rhodes. In. Where's Nick? I saw Nick. I need a job. Let's go. Put me in the ring, baby. <laughs> hey, let's uh, let's chit chat though about because obviously Fanatics has the NFL licensed apparel and jerseys and everything is skyrocketing. This year, more eyes are on the NFL than ever before. I assume the merch business for the NFL is higher than it's ever been, and with these two teams being in the Super Bowl, business is great. Travis Kelsey's the most famous human on earth. Everything good with Fanatics, I assume. I'll tell you, this is the biggest Super Bowl from a merchandise perspective in history. Best matchup. Super exciting. Um, Travis was the number 20 jersey last year. Now he's number five. I, mean, oh. I expect him to be number one now that my guy Brady's out of here and he's not, you know, selling jerseys. Like he, he still, by the way, he's still like a top ten or top twenty. But I do expect Travis to be number one. But the top top five is pretty good. Who's number one? Who's number one jersey? Sale? <clears throat> 
Well, you have been for the WWE since you came back. Yeah, yeah. Tony Crybaby's on Twitter about that. Jersey's number one for sure. Absolutely. We're going to make it number one if not. Let's go. Who is number one in the jersey? Do we know? Is it Lamar? Mahomes? I'm going to be honest. I didn't look. Nice. But but I would think it's Patrick Mahomes. Okay. Superstars. Obviously driving the league. Whenever you get a deal done with the NFL and you get a deal done with the WWE, what do you do? You just tell them, like, hey, all the bullshit that comes with the merch business we'll take care of? And is that why you've become such a big weapon, you think, for all these companies? No, look, I think um, there's nothing better than being a fan of your favorite team, your favorite wrestler. And, you know, we help people really celebrate these moments. And, you know, we started... You know, 12, 13 years ago, and companies grown quite a bit. But, you know, for us, we feel like we're just getting started on really helping people celebrate their fandom. NFL is our biggest league, uh, nothing bigger than the NFL. By the way, WWE is absolutely cranking. We got in business with WWE only about a year and a half ago. Uh, the business is on absolute fire. For me, it's been amazing because I was a giant WWE fan as a kid. And now coming back and really being, being in on the business side and to see just how big and global this, this sport really is and how much people just live for it and kill for it is, is absolutely special. I've heard your work ethic is insane. That's what everybody says about you, so shout out to you, dude. Shout Thanks, out to I you. appreciate that. AJ has a question for you, Mike. Honestly, like, have you ever thought about it with your partnership doing something, some kind of program set up? We got obviously two of the biggest superstars right here, Pat and The Rock. Like, no, can you do don't something? Are you going to be part name. of the press conference today? He said he's going to be making uh, some kind of legendary announcement. Are you part of this? Yeah, we're making you know, merch you Listen, I'm, I'm here as the water boy are we? to support, okay. to, to, you know, to, to support should, any way we can. Let's, but, let's get an angle for you. I think we can get you, you an angle. I there. think water boy is a good angle, Rush by the way. Angle. Well, but, are we selling merch today? We have to be. We are. Is L- that listen. Yes. A lot of merch. Not just merchandise, a lot of merchandise. And special and unique merchandise. We're going to sell it at the events, WrestleMania is so excited for that. Bringing that to Philadelphia, to my town, I mean, that's yeah. going to be incredible. All my guys are excited to come out. We got, uh, you know, I've, everyone keeps saying to me how pumped they are. Super Bowl, excited. WrestleMania in Philly, mm. super excited. What are you doing out here? And, and really quickly, I mean, that, yes. that, that's one of the things that is so cool about Fanatics and the company that he built is experience and creating experiences for fans. And if you think about it, I think just to have the vision of, uh, well, it's just, it's more than just, hey, we're gonna uh, put a name on a jersey, what's the number, sell it. Like, that's it, it's the experience that these fans get. I remember Nick told me probably two, two and a half years ago, hey, we're thinking about getting in business with Michael Rubin and Fanatics. I was like, dude, that's brilliant, because this company's on fire. Yes. So, and you see that now. But just really, you know, because we in WWE are just all about fan experience, and that, Convergence with his company in WWE. Perfect. Perfect. Everybody that works with you says that you're the perfect partner because of how hard you work and how easy you make everything. And but the experiences you're talking about. Does Fanatics have a party? I assume that happens out every Super Bowl, or because we remember the, the Reuben party. Right? Oh, oh yeah. Oh yeah. The white party. Oh, white. We, we, do have, we know the Reuben yeah. parties. Yeah. We do have a small party on Saturday. I will say I think if there's a million people in Vegas for Super Bowl. I think about all million have hit me up trying to get to the party. Oh yeah, the Ruben parties. We're gonna have, we're gonna have about 800 people. It's gonna be a special one. It's gonna be a lot of fun. It's gonna be white party like and quality of people we bring together. For me, I love bringing people from different backgrounds together. I love you know whether they have people from the sports side, the you know talent side, the business side. We just love bringing great people together. And party's gonna be a lot of fun. I think we have 13 or 14 people p- performing. So it's gonna be it's gonna be a good one. 13, 14 people perform it. What is that? Yeah. You just got like the rocks and go up there and cut a promo or you two, what is you two come, baby. Is you two is Bono? Yeah, you two in the rock. We got a full Bono. concert coming. <laughs> All right, how's your how's your, how, how's your singing skills? We can get, get oh, he, he's Moana. I'm ready. Oh, Moana, too. Oh, man. Man. <laughs> Moana too, we got 15 people performing now. We got we got our newest performer. I'm ready to go. Here he's we go. Gonna kill it. Hey, Usher performed at that. Uh, did he perform at the White Party in the Hamptons? Yeah, I believe so. Uh, with Travis Scott as well. And then now he's got the halftime performance. So you perform at his party. I think you're next. You got the Super Bowl halftime. That's the way. It Hold works. on. Didn't you kick off this? Who was that? Oh yeah. Did you yeah. Kick yeah. off the Super Bowl. That was, was L.A. Was that L.A. No fight. Rams. Oh, oh, yeah. I was pissed. I was pissed. That's, so yeah. That's oh. one of the most awesome things of all time. All right, before we kick off the Super awesome. Bowl, The Rock Johnson. <laughs> hey, did you see? Everybody on the field was like, hell oh, yeah. Yes. Hell yeah. That was so fun. Nobody man. even acted like you weren't supposed to be doing that. That is what I was like. It's crazy. The Rock's over. It was so fun. Yeah, you cut a promo for both teams. For both teams, man. Well, that's the key. Are you doing that this week? Not doing it this week. Damn it. No. Ruben, no. make it happen. Sure. No. Yeah, he's Hell. doing it for sure. 100%. <laughs> he's back. He's got everybody ready to go. Uh, how did Usher perform at the, the, the party that you had there? Usher killed it. I'll tell you, I've been asked the question this past week about 100 times, 
who's doing the roof of the white party, because I think that does mean they'll do Super Bowl next year. So now that's in my head, we have to make it happen. So the question is, yeah. whoever kicks off the roof of the white party this summer, July 4th, will they be doing Super Bowl next year? I think the answer is yes. So who used to host the parties that like were these celebrity parties that everybody, because I've heard people on the internet like, uh, who is it, Hugh? Hugh Hef- Bill Hefner, Gates? Yep, the no, uh, point uh, of uh, before. No, uh, Bill Gates pool Ballmer, parties. Will, uh, uh, Ballmer, Bill Gates, Steve Ballmer. Ballmer. Ballmer Bill Gates used to have pool parties, I guess. Oh, really? I, it was on the internet, I read about it, they're a big deal. They used they to go. Like, cool. need to read up. I've never uh, been, obviously. Ooh. I don't think they invited The Rock either. That was when they were trying to make him skinny. You know, that was back when those parties were happening. 180 pounds. When I was married, not a good idea. <laughs> but your parties are like the new, the new thing. They're the thing. You, the, you, that's pressure. You got to make sure you deliver. Those there, parties there, can't there, suck. Listen, there's no pressure. We do three a year. We do the white party, the Super Bowl party, right. and then we do one for the Reform Alliance to help raise money for a very important charity to uh, criminal justice reform. And that's it. You've been a huge part of that, advocate for that. It, we, it's, it's been very important to us. We've got a great group of people that started. Robert Kraft obviously owns the Patriots, oh, Jay-Z, yeah. Meek Mill, great group of people. But that's it. Three parties per year. Right now, we're focused on this Saturday. I'm going to turn my phone off, so if anyone texts me, they want to come. My phone's broken. It nice. got it, it went in the ocean in nice. L.A. yesterday, so I have no phone. Wow. That's, wanted, story that's a shame. Nice. Rest in peace, yeah. that phone. Yeah. Palmer. How you make a... Yeah. It's got to be hard, right? What? No phone? I really have a phone, but I'm going to... Okay, just k Just got ruined. I don't have just one. Just ruined it. Yeah, just yeah, ruined it completely. God's got his phone. Every time I look at my phone, it's... Where's the party on? Good question, Chuck. It's... It's in San Diego. Smart. Uh, no, no. It, it, it's at Marquee at, at the Cosmo. It's going to be insane. I mean, I've, we have such a great group of people coming. And, you know, for me, I actually love to just, we appreciate so many great players that help us make fanatics, so many great artists, celebrity, business executives, league executives, just bringing so many great people together. And uh, it's a lot of fun. It actually isn't pressure because you just need to make sure you get the right people together because if you put the right people together, good things happen. That's what we do at the White Party. That's what we do at the Fanatics Party. And, and then, uh, you know, it sets the tone for everything else we're doing. What's next business-wise for Fanatics? Obviously, WWE, big relationship, NFL, big relationship. What else do we got going on? Yeah, so we started in the... Mer- you got the sports book? Hold on. We got a sports book? Yeah. What else? Fanatics uh, Yeah, we're, we're super excited about Fanatics sports book. That's big is growing very quickly. A lot of people think we won't be successful. We can't do it. I love that. I love people betting against us, uh, saying, "Hey, it's over." You got two big companies, FanDuel and DraftKings. You know, kind of. Michael, Michael why, why is that? Why, why do you think you get into this space and this vertical, and people are saying, "You, you can't make it. You're done." Especially considering that you have been kicking ass everywhere yeah. else. So, for, first of all, like you. I love when people bet against us, yeah. and that makes me that much more motivated. That means instead of working 18 hours a day, we work 20 hours a day. Huh. But look, here's the reality. Four hours well, of sleep. Four Ooh, hours of sleep all you need. I, <laughs> listen, I, I mean, four that's hours. all I need. Four well, hours no, I don't know if I'm going to make it. You'll make four it. You'll be tough. You've been you know, on four the last two if, nights. If you're know. excited about what you do every day, four hours is good. Yeah, you're damn right. Yeah. What am I talking about? Come on, Let's man. go, baby. I need three hours of sleep. <laughs> Come on! Whose go. name is on the wall? You're damn right! Come on! <laughs> huh? You tell me! Pat McAfee! You're damn right! No sleep for you. Anyways, <laughs> four hours of sleep. We're going to run a sports yeah. book against yeah, two, look, two, two look, companies. When we started the merchandise business, we were the little guy. Everyone said, hey, you're not going to be the big guy in this business. You won't be able to do it. We just innovated like crazy for the fan. We kept figuring out how to do things better, how to do things different. And each year, um, we got bigger and better. And by the way, we still have so much more work to do in that business. That business, when we started 13 years ago, is $250 million business. It's over $6 billion this year. <laughs> We're just getting started. That's our original business. In the collectibles business that we only got in three years ago, people said, hey, you're not going to be able to do this. It won't work. We completely changed the business up, innovated product like crazy, created marketing for the first time in that business. We're excited to work together with you in the WWE uh, collectible business. Such a big opportunity. So many passionate fans. So many ways to have fans connect with product. And in the sports betting business, I kind of love that two companies, FanDuel and DraftKings, have 80% of the share. And people say it's not possible. For us, we have over 100 million customers at Fanatics to buy from us, talk to us every year. We work with 3,000 incredible athletes. The ability to create one-off individual experiences for our most important betters, the ability to cross-sell customers into uh, our sports book. We have 1,350 lid stores that we own. So we have a lot of assets to leverage. I'll tell you, so far it's going pretty well, but it's early. I like being the underdog. 
and uh, time will tell. We take a lot of pride in building up FanDuel. We were a part of that since like the beginning of it all. Listen, I came here today to get you to the right side. Like, yeah. Who cares about FanDuel? Oh, yeah. Who cares about ESPN? Oh, that's going to be a big right check. <laughs> it's going to be a very big check, Ruben. That sportsbook world, I didn't know. What, we were giving out public picks. It was the worst. We never hit. Nope. I mean, we won. Not we won two for 20. <laughs> it was awesome. brutal. We had 250,000 people riding with us on a bet for the Super Bowl. 250,000 people taking their hard-earned money and betting it. Lost. <laughs> the amount of people Listen, that told, you know, you're screwing over Cody Rhodes, boy. <laughs> people weren't having Christmases because of our bets were being so bad. Two yards. It, that's it's by two yards. That sportsbook world is a wild one. It's a wild two one. Yards. But you can, you can. I think you can make great strides quickly. All you do is take care of the customer, which I think is like your biggest it, asset. Almost, you're, if the term. biggest thing I've learned. In the last couple of years, if you start everything with the fan and say, how can I do it better? How can I do it different? And just keep working at it with an unrelenting attitude, you will be successful. And so uh, we were. Just, what do you do for fun? Yeah. Um, this is fun. How could you? This is like, this is what I do every day. It's fun. I love, you know, doing what I do. You know, to me, work is fun. I'm not really good at anything else. I was the worst athlete in planet Earth. There was nobody less coordinated than Bold me. Claim. I was always last pick on no, the no, team. Matt Brown's over here. No, no, yeah, hold on. I'm telling you. Bill. Yeah, Matt has got I, it. Matt got Brown's over here. He's bad. Nice bad athlete. Listen, I couldn't have even been a kicker, to be honest. All right. Well, you just disrespected <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, uh, Thanks a lot of explosion. It's pretty tough. <laughs> it's yeah. actually really difficult. <laughs> Thanks, yeah. Ruben. Uh, all right. Well, we appreciate you joining us, man. You are obviously an inspiration best. to all of us that are trying to make it from where you were to where you are now. Keep grinding. Keep trying. Trailblazing. Listen, you're an inspiration to me. You you work your ass off. You make so much fun what you do. You bring so much passion to what you do. And, you know, we all make each other better. We all pull each other up, and I love that. Well, I'm sleeping for six, seven And you're hours. not getting no, – I don't want to hear any of this bullshit about sleep. Like, no <laughs> sleep the next couple of days. Yeah. I need you putting your best foot forward. Bono well, kept me up a little bit too long last night. Uh -huh. that, that Sphere uh -huh. show last Killed night. It, we were right. there. Uh, we had a couple sleepers in the suite in the Bono show. I <laughs> can't have that happen in Vegas, Ruben. Yeah, you putting this – are you your party at the Sphere? Our partners at the Cosmo. At I would love to see what you would do with that sphere. Yes. By the way. Legit. Too many people, listen, I want 800 people, very intimate. That's too big of a space. We don't need... Oh, but you... That, then, that. I, then I won't be able to get away with saying this is for our 800 closest friends. Then I'd have my 20,000 closest friends. Which... Okay. Seems Go like on. it's going that way. Up and to the right, everything you do, pal. I think That's your host in that one, for FanDuel. Mm. For ESPN Bet. Mm. Whatever, uh, I mean, whoever, wants, sportsbook. Let's whoever, go. whatever wants to put the thing on the microphone, <laughs> we will definitely do it. Anything to get to a Ruben party, you're the man. Thank you for joining us. Ladies thanks, and gentlemen, thanks for having me. CEO of Fanatics, Michael Ruben. Thank hey, you, man. Ruben. Thank you, dude. Thank no, you, thank you, thank you. Thank you. Keep going. Keep going. We need you. Come on. Dude, Rock, you just co-hosting there. You're just asking casual questions. Did you feel that? Did you feel like you were just co-hosting right there? Uh, yeah. You're like middle of conversation, you're like, actually, I got a question for this guy. Yeah. That, that was good co That's how we roll. Yeah, that was, fin that was phenomenal. Are you excited for today or not for that press conference? <clears throat> Dude, I'm, I'm so excited for today. Yeah, because, you know, we had this in mind. As what you are you wearing? Is this what you're wearing or what are we, are you, what are we doing? What, what do you mean? For the press conference, are you wearing the, because you see him the other night, he came out with the, he had this cut off t-shirt on. The people's Shredded. champ. Bro. Yeah. Carrying two surfboards, but they weren't there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Were they out that far? My oh, arms yeah. were out that far. Yeah, dude. Jack. Yeah, you, yeah. And then you did that the, much. You did that goosebumps thing to the carry. Yeah. Like, <laughs> couldn't even get that left arm. Thank you. So, so I couldn't. They weren't down by my. Yeah, it's just. They were just out. Dude, jacked up. That's just natural. Is that what we're doing? Hey, now? listen. God, deli God delivered. I signed, guys. There's nothing. <laughs> like, <laughs> okay. <laughs> Honestly. <laughs> have you thought about ring gear and everything? Is that, have you gone through all that whole process? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Put yeah. the old boots on. Have you done that whenever you're training? Everything? Got the boots. I got new boots. You got to break them in, so you got to train with them every day and all that whole stuff. But, yeah, that, that whole thing. It, by the way, it, to go, go back in the ring, as you guys know, grab a microphone. You are an asshole. And if you smell and all the stuff that we did and all the stuff that I've been doing, that there's nothing like that. And I love that connection. It always gives me chills. Getting in the ring... Really rocking and rolling, slams, suplexes, etc. You got to put in the time. You have to. You have to have your own training camp, whatever that means. And and at the end of the day, even in our incredibly um, athletic sports and entertainment world, uh, you, you you have to respect it. Yes. Yes. Yeah, we need you to remain help because we need movies. Yeah. Hey, we need hey, movies. This, we need life. And Moana 2 is coming around. This might be a crazy question, but I know I played a ton of games. You played a ton of games. 
kind of get a little butterflies before each game, no matter how many you play. Do, does The Rock get butterflies, especially returning to the ring after a break? Brother, every single time. It doesn't matter. It could be a promo with what we did. It, it doesn't matter. Yep. Every single time. Always. Always. Crazy. I can't eat that much. You know, you're bouncing around yep. and you're trying to you're just taking little sips of water here and there. It's all the adrenaline. Yeah. Yeah. Did and you, it, it you never get, goes away. Did you get butterflies for this show today? I was bouncing around. I got butterflies. Nice. Yeah. I got gas. It was crazy. <laughs> I, hey, I understand. I mean, you're on ESPN2 right yeah. now. Yeah. You know what I mean? Ty has a question. He was in the back the whole time. I was. And, Rock, I'm just curious. I mean, the way you look right now with the UFL, have you tossed it back and forth? Like, I need to strap the pads on. I need to go play. I need Football. To. Yeah, yeah. 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 Put you on the end. 54. On the edge. Okay. Right here. 54. I'll set the edge. Yeah. Oh, you're getting sacked. That's you. We're getting sacked. First season. Let's, okay. Well, let, let, let's set up the scenario right now. If I was in the Super Bowl and I played for either one. Uh, let, let, let's say I played for the 49ers because I was born in the Bay Area. Yeah. Okay. Right? yeah. Right. yeah. All right. I'm set, I'm, here I am out there. Seven technique. Hand down on the ground. Oh. Who's the tackle? Scared. Dude. Who's the left tackle? Oh, uh, Donovan Smith. Yeah. Smith. Yep. Donovan Smith. Left tackle for, for Kansas City. Smith. Smith. Okay. Mahomes snaps the ball. Smith steps back. Here comes the rock. Oh! Coming off, coming off that edge. Holy just shit. nasty. Boom, boom. Oh, boom. Oh, 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 wow, wow. Yeah. 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 Little twitch. I almost fell down. Boom. Left arm coming up. Yep. yep. Uh, which would have been Smith's left arm. Boom oh. down. But at the same time, I'm grabbing. Yeah. Okay. I'm grabbing. Yeah. You guys know uh, Coach Ed Ogeron? Oh, oh yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 That's Coach. Oh, uh, That's it. That's my, that was my coach from Miami. Yeah. He said, Dewey. You got great upper body violence. <laughs> you violent like a motherfucker. <laughs> I grab that, yeah. pull that Smith jersey down, yeah. and start yeah. to swim over. And right there. Okay. Yeah. Loop, shoulder turn. Shoulder turn. Take you know, grip. shoulder turn. Pretty good. Smith will then knock one of my lungs <laughs> oh. into next week. Oh. <laughs> no. 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 Is that not how we want the story no. to go? No. Oh. Oh. Tell the story. Finish Rock the story. <laughs> Finish the story. Rock, boom, Rock down, over. boom, sack Mahomes, you're done. Bingo. That's it. There, there we is. go. That there it is. Home. Story. Okay, 54 got home, yes. which is all we were kind of looking for. <laughs> well, that answer is no, but thank you. That's how the thing. UFL? Yeah. I said this during game day whenever you made the announcement. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I mean, probably not the right thing to ask the weekend you guys are announcing this partnership, but <laughs> sue me. Yeah, don't actually. Shout out to Brett Favre. The XFL was 50 times better than USFL. Yeah. That, that is not an understatement. No. That, that is not an understatement at all. When you come from an entertainment standpoint, I think, like, viewership, interest, Everything, the way it was being run, I think a lot of people would say the XFL was miles ahead of the USFL. So now you guys are partners, which I appreciate, you know, making the best league absolutely possible. How hands, you said it's a 50 50 split. Are you hands on as much as you were with the XFL? How do you see that thing going? And what uh, do you I, think I, of I, I the do. partnership? I, uh, I, I love the partnership. I thought that those guys, thank you, by the way, for the flowers. I appreciate that. We worked hard with the XFL. Dude, you were selling on stadiums. Yeah. For a spring league. Yeah, for a spring league. We did pretty good. So, yes. And we had the wind against us, uh, you know, that we went down. COVID went down, uh, or COVID bought the league down in 2020. And so we had our work ahead of us. USFL already had a jump start. They already had a season. But at the end, end of the day, I'm happy that we joined forces. I do believe in spring football. I think there's a place for it. You guys know, it's like when you ball out, I, you know, I was one of those guys who, if I had more reps, maybe I would have been a little bit better. I just didn't have that choice mm. and that, that opportunity. Mm -hmm. So that's what spring football represents. So I'm glad we're together right now and still as hands on as ever. And at the end of the day, I, I love the game, and I love creating opportunities just for players. And that's expose, really can't expose that mm -hmm. rib, though. Mm -hmm. well, that, well, I did that on purpose. Yeah. For the sake of the story. You're getting chipped, too, aren't Finish you, your story! <laughs> Come on. Finish your They're story! They're going to chip you, too, right? They ain't going to let you just go. I on. might have one-on-one. -on -one. You got both on the other side, so. Yeah. Chase. We know who the Pat game Mahomes record back is. Of his skull. <laughs> Boom, old school. Back when you played, you could hit the quarterback. Yeah, your head. You could. You got to yes. plant him in the ground. You're Land taught, you're taught to plant him in the ground, too, back The then. size yeah. of your head. Okay, it's good. <laughs> <laughs> his, head, his head is unbelievable. We're, we're talking about head size. Can you imagine headbutting like somebody? It's a, I, got a, I got a big mouth. <laughs> <laughs> Did you? Because that's Rydell days back in the day. Oh. Boom. You were. Head and hands. You give that Samoan kiss. 
<laughs> Samoan kids. <laughs> I, play with a, I play with a few of them. Yeah, yeah. Right? yeah. The All right. Shit. All right Dude, so, so really quickly, so I went to Essen. I hosted Saturday Night Live. Very first time I hosted it. How many times have you hosted it? Five times. Jeez, Jeez. Woo, that's Five an exclusive club. Five. It's an exclusive yeah. club. It's awesome, and I love that show. Love those guys. Are great. Lauren Michaels, just awesome. So I go, and you know, you got to put on wigs. And you can put on all these costumes and things like that. First time there, I'm hyped and pumped. This is awesome. New York City. Uh, they're taking measurements from my head, and um, <laughs> you know what's coming. And they were like, wow. And I was like, what? What? And they were like, well, in 25 years, that time was 25, in 25 years of our show, this is the biggest head we've ever measured. We got but two weeks. Yeah, it's crazy. So there you go. That's brain, though. It is a lot of brain. And everything you put that brain to, you succeed. And we're all watching and trying to follow your lead. Excited to see what happens today at the press conference. Cannot wait. 4 p.m. local, 7 p.m. Eastern on Peacock and all the WWE socials. T-Mobile. Whatever is announced will obviously be game-changing. You call yourself the long gamer. I love that. You love chess. I'm just trying to play checkers every day, you know? I'm just trying to get over it. King me, bitch, and I'm coming back. You're a chess player. You say that. That's not true. You play chess, too, and I know you do. <laughs> We've talked about it, but that's okay. You should play chess, by the way. <laughs> okay. I do the close Sicilian. That is, uh, that is my play. It's up on the sky. But everything you do, we're watching and following, and uh, incredibly you, grateful for your friendship, Thank for your time, and I can't wait to see what the hell happens. I'm going to be hosting it alongside Michael Cole, uh, and I, no, I, I cannot wait because yeah. nothing has been made official. No. The world has gone upside down three different times. That's right. And we have no, still nobody has any idea. And, and, and let me just end it with this, uh, boys. At the end of the day, T-Mobile Arena, a free fan event, they're all going to be there. At the end of the day, I know it, you know it, we know it, Roman knows it, Cody knows it. And at the end of the day, his fans know it, that The Rock versus Roman Reigns is the, capital T, capital H, capital E, biggest main event in the history of WrestleMania, The Rock and Roman Reigns. And I'll end it there. They all know it. And I'll end it there. Talk your shit, Rock. Yeah. Ladies <laughs> and gentlemen, <laughs> The Rock, Dwayne yeah. Johnson. Thank you guys so much for having me on. Real pleasure. No problem. All right, we're going to take a break. Go to the bathroom. We'll be back with an hour three that is packed. Not as packed as The Rock inside of an hour. No. But you get it. Be a friend, tell a friend something nice about change your life. Take Bye. Bye. What's isolation? It's four nights of uh, complete uh, darkness. What? Is there a bathroom or you were in a diaper? You For real? real. Holy shit! Well, so the thing that really takes it over the top. Jesus fucking Christ. The thing that really takes it over the top. <laughs> a bitch, Mad Mel. Get it together. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, fucking right we did. Oh, I just said right there. There's oh, the first one. Yeah, oh. that's right. If you go like that. <laughs> okay. Oh, my God. <laughs> Boom, right there. His foot's Boom, on the touchdown. fucking line. Boom. That's his foot on the line. He's living out in LA. He drives a sports car just to prove. I pooped my pants on Monday, actually, a week ago today. Oh, right. Yeah. Oh, I know. Say so. Say so. Can't tell which side is which. It's crazy. It's a dead ringer.
guys smoke meat very well. Uh, <laughs> Ask Schefter what I texted him when he somehow got my number and texted me. I didn't respond to Diana Rossini, I think her name is. I would say the same thing that I told Chef. Lose my number. Nice try. People are saying you look like the Wayans brothers with the white chicks. Oh, <laughs> no. I'd say it was like a specific person. It's just like, hey, this is a sweet mask that someone spent a lot of time on, I guess. And they had a lot of old man. And I love deeper. AJ Hawk. Yeah. Oh. Whoa. Okay, Ooh. here we go. <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> this is what I'm talking about. I'm trying to figure this whole situation out. Okay, we got to zoom here. Yeah, congrats, we're on ESPN. Awesome, I came home before. <laughs> Smoke sweeter and now. Hey, forgiveness, I've been denied. That's Live Like You Were Dying. That's that song. <laughs> Good song. That's how he wrote it, probably. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, let me tell you a little story about these statistics. Troy Palomalu, okay? Fucking Troy Palomalu. So we had a fake for the Pittsburgh Steelers, 100%er, that the C gap will be wide open and we will just part the C to the left. It'll be a touchdown. 100%er. We're playing in Pittsburgh, the city I grew up in. I grew up in Pittsburgh. I won the punt passing kick. National championship, AJ. National championship. AJ. Congrats. AJ, did you ever win the national championship pump pass and kick? Uh, I think I got third or fourth out of four at the nationals. I'm proud of you, man. Anyways, so we're there in that stadium, okay? A lot of McAfee's in there. A lot of McAfee's in Pittsburgh. I'm going to score my first fucking touchdown night game, Sunday night football, I believe it was, right here, touchdown. We get into that situation. And I'm like, holy fuck, this is really going to happen. We're like on the six on the left hash. It's fourth and goal now. Field goal team's jogging on. I'm like, oh, fuck. It's about to, I'm, this is, I got to fucking, I'm ready. I am ready for this to happen. So I get out there. I get down. Vinny's like happy for me. Vinny's like very excited. He's like, let's fucking go. Like Vinny's excited for me at this moment. I'm like, here we go. So I make the call. I forget what it was. So I start saying it, right? And everybody's looking at me like, okay, bright eyes. Here we go. Let's get after it. Offensive linemen are dead ass tired. They do not want to be in the middle of a field goal anyways. So they're just like, all right, I don't give a fuck if you die here, but this should work. Let's get some points. And all of a sudden, I go through my cadence, I call it, I get down, and Troy Palomalu's fucking ass goes ahead for however long his career was at this point. I think it was like nine years or eight years at this point. Not a once has he ever gone to this side of the field over here to the left and covered, strand, stood right in the sea gap. Never. He lined up exactly where he had lined in film 100% of the time. And then as soon as I got to like the second cadence right before set, he just bounced his little ass right over to the sea gap. And I like stopped everything I was doing. And I literally just looked at him and I gave him <laughs> like, a, what the fuck are you doing, man? Like, why are you there right now? And then I stood up and said, we are kicking it. We don't have a, we have to kick it. We are kicking this. And then I get down, and Vinatieri kicks it, and I jog off the field, and Chuck Pagano comes running up next to me. He's like, hey, good job. What you see? I said, what did I see? Palomalu just fucking went right into the goddamn sea gap. What did I see? What did I see? And he goes, okay, sounds good. Good call then. And that, good call then. And then Vinatieri's like, hey, way to go, buddy. I'm like, way to go? Are we not going to talk about how big of a fucking asshole Troy Palomalu is for what just happened right there? So that's. Just, I saw the angel of death waiting for me at the in the C gap. 
It's unbelievable. Like what, you thought I was going to run him over? No way. I'm going to get, he's probably going to strip me and score a touchdown the other fucking, that's Palamalu, bro. That ain't just some, your backyard football with your son. This is, these are professional fucking athletes. He'd probably jump over the lineman, pick me up and run me into the other fucking end zone if he wanted to. That's what he would have done. The hard hitting safety of his generation too. It's, I mean, Ed Reed, great cover safety. I don't know that you would have feared him, but you Ed Reed, have I would have feared Ed Reed. Yeah, if I saw Ed Reed in that C gap, absolutely. Ed oh, Reed, he, boy, the best safety you ever seen, boy. I ain't doing shit to Ed Reed. No, no, Ed Reed would have made the tackle. I'm saying that Palomalo would have shaved years oh, off your life. Oh my God. Jalen Milrow often wears his own branded apparel reading LANK across the front. It's an acronym that stands for Let a Naysayer Know. Being told by his former offensive coordinator, that Bill O'Brien. That is not what I thought. Is that not what you thought? Boy, let a naysayer know. Let a naysayer know. Of course. The professional's right in the middle of his <laughs> lead. That's all right. I just keep I thought going. you almost lost me. <laughs> <laughs> Real tight up here, as you were. I was watching that. Reese, you were too smooth with that. I thought it was going down. I thought it was going down out here. Whoa. Let a naysayer know. Let a naysayer know. Let a naysayer know. That's what we thought the whole time. That's what we all thought. Everybody's got Bryce Young. Will Levis and Will Anderson uh -huh. above C.J. Stroud, allegedly. Lock him in. We will 1 million percent continue to drive that narrative. Uh -huh. Because with what my eyes seen, A.J., and what yeah. you have seen, if C.J. Stroud ends up at the Colts at number four, uh -huh. I'm happy about the future of the Colts all of a sudden. Yep. So this will be the last time we say this. C.J. Stroud is the best quarterback in this draft class. That's right. For sure. We are massive fans of them. And whenever we say whatever we say over the next few months before the draft, we would like it to not be held against us because we know we are a part of the entire system here. Uh -huh. And we need C.J. Stroud and Indy. You have to have him. Plus, it's really fun to say, Stroud. Yeah. Yeah, and we need him to go down to the fourth pick. <laughs> yeah, right. you think they have to trade up? Because Texans are right there at two, and, you know, those are the two quarterbacks of the future. Well, I'll tell you what, there's an opportunity and a chance for us to move, too. we got a lot of pieces to the sure, puzzle that aren't right. necessarily going to be there in the future, probably. You bundle that with the four overall pick, I think you could maybe move up to one, yeah. and then you get C.J. Stroud. Hey, why? Let's go. This show stinks, and the fact that you listen, we are very, very thankful for it. The all-time leading tackler for the Green Bay Packers. You pick! Damn it! Your friend, tell a friend something nice. It could change their life. Hello, beautiful people, and welcome back to the Radio Row for Super Bowl 58 here in Mandalay Bay Convention Center. Hour three of the sports program starts right now. Football. It's a beautiful thing. Do you see what it has brought together here in Las Vegas? There is a crowd of human beings that have gathered in the Mandalay Bay Convention Center to celebrate the hell out of the year that was for the NFL 2023 into the 2024 season. The San Francisco 49ers will take on the Kansas City Chiefs in the middle of a dynastic run and oh, can we get over the hump game for the Niners. Well, I'm not alone up here. I'm very lucky to be joined alongside a Super Bowl champion and A.J. Hawk. Hey, baby, A.J. Hey, AJ. Way to go, AJ. Yep, great to be here. Can't wait for Kirk. Oh, no. Ladies and gentlemen, Kirk. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Look at that time. Hell yeah. <laughs> I'm doing well. Appreciate uh, you uh, D. Butch is here. Coach Prado is yeah. here. Look at this. Um, I got this for you, Kirk. I got this for you. So. What is it? Bag of cash? It's a sweet bag. bag. Heritage gear. And uh, that's really why I'm here, Pat. Okay. I love you, but I'm here to yep, I understand. To promote the cause. Uh, Heritage Gear, they make these great bags. They're all made in the U.S. Hell yeah. U.S.A. Yeah. And they've USA. partnered USA. recently with a, uh, uh, a chef, Robert Irvine, a celebrity chef, who's yeah. out here around Radio Row this week. Hell yeah. And he... Uh, oh, Robert's big. here? Big, strong dude. He's young. Between now and February 14th, they're... Uh, sorry, I can't hear you guys. They're... Uh, Can you not hear us? I can't hear you. I'm dead. Really? Really? So, I can hear you. Yeah, you sound great. You sound really good. I sound good to you, though. Great. You sound really good. Yeah. Yeah. You guys sound can you, can you like hear you us? Me. Great pipes. I got nothing. It's in and out. 
Oh. Okay, oh. now we're now we're Mike okay. Mike okay. There we go. Now we're good. You good? Perfect. The Look rock. at you with a dial. Well, I think the rock's head. I think now? eventually <laughs> there's a chance that one of those guys. The rock. Did you see? He his is head? that strong? Yeah. Yeah. Did you see his head? Yeah. Okay. Very so deep. To get back into the heritage bag here. This. Yeah. Is so these heritage bags. Uh, they're partnering with Robert Irvine. All bags sold at HeritageGear.com between now and February 14th. All proceeds from those bags will go to help veterans. They're nice. finding one in six veterans and their families are food insecure. Struggling with uh, with getting food, and uh, and so the proceeds will go to Robert Irvine's foundation, which is helping veterans and, and feed veterans and their families. So, go to the website, buy a bag, feed a veteran. Um, they're great bags, and they, they have they're officially licensed. You can get one, you know, like I got one Michigan State. My wife's got one from Georgia because that's where she went to school. So go dog. That's yours. Hey, go hey, 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 this is mine. That's yours. Go America. Oh, I love that. Thank you for this. It's oh, a yeah. hell of a bag. All these other ones are fantastic, yep. and for a good mission too, helping out no the doubt. heroes. Obviously, chefs for vets right here. Heritage Gear. We have the website pulled up. Shout out to Kirk Cousins, and shout out to you for the bag, brother. I so appreciate I, I, that. I've been a guest through through a laptop before, yeah. but never here in person, so it's fun to be on the set. How's it feel? Uh, this isn't our normal set. This is much nicer than what we know. <laughs> how's it, how's, how has the year been? Obviously, you yeah, got a yeah. Achilles injury that kind yep. of derails everything. Then yep. the story becomes the past or not. Then the story becomes what are the Vikings. Now we're looking at a future with massive question marks, but this past year, if you had to describe it as one thing, what would it be? Yeah, it was crazy. I, last time I saw you in person was at the Netflix premiere in L.A. in July. Oh, yeah, you became a superstar. So I forgot kinda, about that. You kind of had that to go into the season, and then... Uh, uh, we went 0 3 to start the year. We were moving the ball on offense, so I yep. felt like it was going to come around, and it started to come around. We got you know 1 3 in a row, uh, beat the Niners on Monday night, went to Lambeau. We were playing really well, and then all of a sudden, the fourth quarter with 10 minutes left, Kevin called a play on a third down, and and I thought, you know, I can't. We're on the edge of field goal range here. If I take a sack, we're not going to have a field goal, so I'm going to kind of get through my progression quickly. And if I see the C's part, I'm going to go north and south to keep the clock running with this lead and get the field goal. And when I went to put my foot in the ground and go, my heel stayed back and my body went forward. And yeah. Did you know immediately? They said with Achilles, you know immediately. No, I didn't. I had never, I've never had a surgery before, so I've stayed really healthy. So I didn't know what that would feel like. And uh, the thing ruptured so fast Jeez. that I had no real pain in my Achilles. All my pain was in the rest of my ankle. So I just thought I had a really bad ankle sprain. But then when I went to walk off the field, I pressed into the Lambeau field and the, it felt like the ground disappeared. Oh. And I was like, I got a problem. And so I hopped to the sideline and then went into the blue tent. And it took our foot and ankle surgeon like two seconds to put his finger right on my Achilles and go, yeah. you tore it, you're done. Hate to break it to you, but this is the one. Now, it looks like you've been moving around. We saw you shirtless, yeah. I think, for <laughs> shirtless moving, walking up to yeah. the... Yep. Yeah, exactly. yeah, I'm three months in. I got about four months to go. And, uh, um, you know, everything's been a good good process. It hasn't been a, you know, it's been a, I never had to rehab something. So I, I was a little nervous about it's going to be boring. Is this going to be exhausting? It's been a good process. The Vikings trainers have been phenomenal with it. And uh, I was going to ask you, because you play a lot of games at Lambeau. We all, always wear the long cleats at Lambeau. Yeah. And I just wonder. So you were wearing screw-ins when you tore screw -ins. it? Screw-ins. And I never wear screw-ins. See, I never really Damn. wore them either. But people, like I know other opposing teams would come in, and like yeah. Sean Payton would make his teams wear screw-ins in Lambeau a lot. Totally. And I yeah. think, I think especially as you get later in the year, yeah. you really have to do it. And we had a bunch of slips in the game the previous year in January. So we said this year we all got to do it, no exceptions. And Brian O'Neill had tore his Achilles the previous year at Lambeau wearing oh. the screw-ins. First time uh -oh. he ever wore them, he tore oh. his Achilles. Oh, so you, what you just said there is not so just like, I just, oh, no. I just wonder. I just wonder. But, sure. again, it's a little bit like, well, yeah, I can point to 17 other yeah. things that make you wonder, too. So. so what do you wear when you go back there and play in Lambeau again? I don't think I can wear screw-ins just out of knowing what happened. I think yeah. i got to wear normal cleats. And as a Smart. pocket passer, I can get away with that. Yeah. If you're a receiver who I'm trusting you to make a cut <laughs> and I'm anticipating the throw and you slip and it's intercepted, I'm going to be upset you didn't wear screw in. So <laughs> it goes both ways. Yeah, there's a lot of that. But the whole wire, a lot more Achilles. Yeah. Same yeah, and that's the other thing is Achilles are up in general. Why? So you're kind why, of, why, why? I don't, I don't have a good answer. I've Do the research, that. Kirk. I've asked that since theories? the day I tore it. My surgeon said he just feels like people's movement skills are better now. There's more force being generated. But he told me, you know, early in his career, he just didn't see the volume of Achilles tears that he sees now. So I don't know what's going on. We tried to bring it up during the conversation uh, during the season because it felt like more bigger names. And then obviously we're directly associated with Aaron and he tore Achilles. Yeah, so exactly. maybe we start thinking to ourselves, is it just because <laughs> we're experiencing with sure. Aaron or is there actually more Achilles? Yeah. felt like there was more Achilles. Now, sounds like you're going to be back to full health. Everything's on. Yeah, the, I mean, when I heard it, I knew 2023 was over. 
but I also knew timing wise, unlike Aaron, I had plenty of time to get ready for 2024. So my hope is to get back fast enough where I can be a part of OTAs, be a part of mini camp. But, you know, my training. Yeah, but I where? Did. Good question. Kirk. Good question. Pittsburgh. That was the answer. We're probably a yeah. month away. Pittsburgh, maybe? Yeah, Pittsburgh. Steelers. Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> you know, Minnesota. You got Justin Jefferson. Uh, he's getting questioned. You're obviously the bell of the ball when it comes to quarterbacks, free agents. Now, <laughs> every team needs quarterback. Every team will try to get a quarterback if they don't have a quarterback. I assume, and Darius said this earlier. We've never seen Kirk Cousins sign a deal and go, bad deal. <laughs> <laughs> ever. Nope, ever. Ever. At, we have never Fully seen guaranteed. that ever happen. No. Kirk Cousins signs a bad deal. Like, incredible businessman you are. But I give Mike McCartney, my agent, a lot of credit, too, because just about every time we sign a contract, I'm just doing what Mike says. I'm not really thinking for myself too much. So. Well, shout out to Mike, and I assume you're a part <laughs> of the, the whole conversation. But, like, yeah. now you and Mike have had to talk, I assume. And yeah. How do we feel? We got to feel very comfortable with how we've played the last couple of years, obviously, yeah. what we yeah. put on tape. And with the where the league is about wanting and needing a quarterback, people are going to do things. It's like you put yourself in a great position. I assume that's how you yeah. feel. Yeah, I've always kind of viewed that my job is September through January to do all I can. And then when you get to late February and you get to March, I'm kind of more passive and it's OK. Now Mike McCartney and the teams have to do their job. And then my job shows up again, you know, on the field in the other month. So. My, my job ended a little earlier than I expected when I was on that cart, you know, going off the field in, in, in week eight. But um, I realized, OK, it's over. You know, my part of the deal is over now. And I just wait till March to see uh, to see what happens. And the reality is we're still a month away, you know, so not much is going on. And in a few weeks, I would think that's when we can start to know more. Ty has a question for you. <laughs> Come on. All right, first of all, come on. We, we know what's going on here. Uh, I'd, love, <laughs> I'd love for you to leave Minnesota, leave the division. So I know you've He's had big a, Packers. Yeah, I am. A lot of great yeah. times there. But uh, there was a report that said that you'd be very interested in playing for Coach Belichick if he were to get a head coaching job. And then, obviously, he kind of gets left out. But how much of that um, was, was truth? Or were people kind of just saying, hey, he's kind of the, the number one QB in this carousel? Yeah check the same like let's put these two guys together and how i assume you would like to play for coach belichick yeah well it's hard to turn down a hall of fame coach but i and that's what i said but i uh i was on an interview where the person doing the interview had a uh, falcons helmet behind them and they were saying what if and started doing all these hypotheticals coach belichick is hired this, this, this. so uh that was my answer but uh honestly you know i'd love to be back in minnesota but even Minnesota, you know, those conversations just don't start yet. You know, it's more late February, early March. We're early February. So just like I've been doing since I got injured, you're just kind of buying your time and, and rehabbing. And, and until we can get to March 1st, maybe, maybe a little after that, you don't, you just don't really expect much to. And tell them we're hawking heritage bags. For until that. then, uh, we're, we're supporting vets with heritage gear. Hey, Chuck has a question for you, Kirk. Yeah, so, Kirk, there's a lot of talk about, um, you know, Brock Purdy. Yeah. What the narrative is uh, around him. Um, he's a game manager. I always thought that, like, I want a guy that's, you know, a good manager of the game. Guys Better take be, care I, of the ball, yeah. right? And, and I don't see that as a, as a negative uh, my whole time coaching. But what do you see yeah. in, in, in Brock Purdy as you evaluate him? Well, I saw him scramble for a couple of critical uh, third down conversions yeah. in the championship game. So I don't know if that falls under the game manager description. I think the draft follows you your whole career, and it shouldn't. And I think if Brock had gone in the top ten, and just you just watch him play the way he's played, and he was a top ten pick, yep. I think nobody would use those two words. Yeah. I think if, you know, a guy who's never been associated as a game manager goes as the seventh round pick, you know, Mr. Irrelevant, they probably try to bring that title with them the rest of their career. So right or wrong, the draft kind of always follows you. But uh, um, he's done a phenomenal job. And what I told him when we played him on Monday night after the game was I can't imagine doing what you've done in the first year and a half. When I think back to where I was in 2012 and the first half of 2013, what you've done is incredible. And, uh, you know, your best football probably is still ahead of you, too, because of that. So uh, he, he's on a big stage on Sunday, but uh, he seemed to handle it well, you know, up to this point. I think he will Sunday as well. What a stud, dude. Yeah. The second year. He's in his yeah, second no, year right yeah, now. Yeah, uh, he's, a, he's a competitor, a gamer, and um, 
He was playing the Iowa Hawkeyes. Yeah, exactly. Just a couple of years yeah. ago. Losing every yep. time. Jack Trice. <laughs> well, I mean, it was a tough. <laughs> right, it was a tough team. Dream. Tone, big Steelers fan, already kind yeah, of pining for you. Um, we talk a lot about defensive hires for head coach, offensive hires for head coach. Obviously, under Zim, that's about as defense as it gets, and then KOC is about as offense as it gets. Does it? Do you think it matters as the head coach where they come from, what side of the balls, whether it's special teams, offensive, uh -huh. defensive, at all? I don't think so. Um, you know, I played for a defensive head coach in college in Mark D'Antonio. Felt like we had a ton of success. I always felt like offensively we were able to Those are to good old success. days in Michigan good State. Old days. Huh, Foxy? Oh, yeah. oh, yeah. <laughs> Greatest of all time right there. Yeah, all right, Foxy. So I, I always Fox. felt like, you know, you can have success doing it that way. <laughs> With Coach Zimmer, I felt like I played really well at the quarterback position. Never felt like I was limited. Uh, Gary Kubiak, you know, was, was in That's there on the offensive uh, side of the football, and so... That was a great dynamic, and you know, and then you go to an offensive head coach, and certainly pr the way practices are structured sometimes, you know, it gets a little bit, when it's a close call and it's Kevin O'Connell, you're probably going to offense, the call's going to go to the offense, and the opposite probably true of defense, and I would give Zim a hard time sometimes. Yeah. Like, Look, I'm calling it honest, and Sack. I'd be like, no, you're not. You're help <laughs> we want to help the defense. So we had fun with that, but um, uh, other, other than practice, no, I don't think so. The quarterback series. Awesome. Yeah. You were awesome. Yes. Incredible. I appreciate Incredible. it. Yeah. My wife was the real star. Well, of course, your whole, the <laughs> fire everything. that was built by your Such kid. Such a good fire. I mean, like, <laughs> fire. everything about it was fantastic. It was awesome seeing you at the premiere. Dude, yeah. I had no idea. I didn't know I was going to that. Found out I'm going to it. Sweet. Can't wait to go there. Then as I'm watching it, I'm like, oh, Kirk Cousins is going to be the star of this thing. This <laughs> Kirk Cousins is going to be the star of this thing. And you were. You actually were. We have a guy in the back, Nick Moraldo. He still to this day wants to know what the hell was that thing you had on your head that was the brain like, training? Yeah, yeah, that, yeah, yeah, yeah. Are you still doing that right now? I Why? do. Yeah, it's a company called NeuroPeak Pro, and uh, it's based out of West Michigan where I grew up. And I started doing it my senior year of college, and it just helps with brain chemistry and and giving yourself the best chance at focusing and being fully present. And it it isn't something that's subjective where you kind of talk about oh I feel like I'm focusing. It's actually objective data of the brain chemistry on your head that they can measure to tell you your brain's in a healthy place or it's not. And so we can use it for the quarterback side of things with focusing and, and being at your absolute best mentally, which obviously what I do is, is a big deal. But then also with concussions, you know, being able to treat those and understand is my brain really healing? Is it getting back? So um, I've been doing that since my senior year of, of college and uh, oh, sure. it's been pretty cool. Yeah, I mean, watching you plug that thing in. and <laughs> they, you, you, When they had a shot of you in your office, I don't know if this is the clip or not, with that thing on your head, you yeah. look like you're in the year 2065. Totally. Totally. You literally look like you're in the year 2065. And I, I wonder if it's the future, you know, because weight room is, is critical for a football player, but everybody's doing that. So you don't really have a leg up if you go in and lift. You're just staying even with everybody else. I felt like the brain training is a way to actually be ahead a little bit. Look at you. So. You also the body training. Who are the two people? Oh, yes. yeah. <laughs> yes. Who are we the have? Basement. Gertrude we have, and uh, Gary. Yeah, we have talked you about. You guys all did this, you know, play, and you probably had body work people. You had to just squeeze yeah. them in. You know, and I don't think anybody's ever had two grandparents. So. <laughs> yeah. like, legit, nice. I don't think I've ever seen it. Like the nicest humans yes. of all time. Yeah. So one of the challenges of going to a new team is you got to find new body work people, mm -hmm. right? Because so I got to Minnesota. and I'm going. Who who in Minnesota does some of the stuff I've done in the past? And so I found a, a, a husband and wife that lived actually across town. And I said, look, I can't drive across the city to to, to you on a you know Tuesday on a Wednesday on a Thursday. If, and they were willing to come to my house to our basement and work with me. And that was a game changer. So. A big reason why I was able to, you know, until this last eight games this past season, but stay healthy for five and a half seasons there and, and not miss a start was, uh, you know, I think their work and just being so helpful to come to my house and save me so much time. Yes. I mean, watching it, we were all just like, yep. <laughs> who are the grandparents? Right now? <laughs> yeah. And then you put the brain thing on and oh, then the man. fire with the fan. You were just so much different than yeah. it was a great series. Yeah, that's obviously the world that, you know, I don't. I don't use social media a ton, and so I'm not down in my basement with the bodywork people taking selfies and then posting it. So without hey. the documentary, that kind of stuff never really gets out there. Hey, uh, if I die, I die still. <laughs> yeah, all time. Oldest all time. All I, need, time. I need that to die. No. But, oh, no, no, good. no. As you're going into free agency, we want people to remember that. Yeah. That Kirk Cousins. Yes, we do. You, you had shirts made, I think. Yeah. yeah. Yep. And we, hey, we in donated. That, in the memory room that they uh, – that they captured in Netflix that I have at my house, uh, 
there's an If I Die, I Die shirt from Pat McAfee hanging in the memory room. I that's that's what that room is for, is the stuff where you're like, that's awesome. I'm never going to actually wear this, but I don't want to throw it away. Let's put it in the memory yeah. room. Yes. Hell yeah. Happy we're a part of that. Frame it. Uh, Did you have mannequins in there? With yeah. Oh, that was, where'd you get jerseys. the mannequins? You order them online? Yeah, just stole them from Dick. Stole them from, stole from else. Lazarus? <laughs> What was that? Excuse me? Is a Chuck my that's, a old, that's, a, that's older old, than J.C. Old. Penny. That's, that's older than me, yeah. Jeez. J.C. Penny? Is it Lazarus? It, Penny? it was a department store. You used to be in the Mall. They had Coles. I know about Coles. 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 Yeah. I'm a Coles guy. Dillard. Dillard. We Coles. saw that with your clothes. <laughs> We yeah. did see Most that. Most game press conferences, straight cold. Kirk's running out with two we saw that. in his arms. Yeah. yeah. Sweet. <laughs> Get caught. All right, Kirk. Well, enjoy the hell out of the offseason, man. Thank you. Thanks, when are you going to be throwing again? Uh, I'm throwing. I'm not taking aggressive drops, but I'm throwing. It's your and, right uh, foot. Your plant yeah, foot. Yeah, to zoom in on the Ooh. scar there. Oh, 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 I got PTZ. We can't. Look at this. Absolutely gnarly. Yeah. Hey, that's a nasty scar. How do I? This is, this is a science program. There you go. That's a clearly clean scar. Dr. Coates did a nice great. job. Ooh, so yeah, making good. sure that heals up clean. So if I ever want to be a foot and ankle model, I can still sure. do that. <laughs> you <laughs> got no shot. You can sell those. That things. looked disgusting. <laughs> <laughs> zoom back in on that. Please zoom back in on that thing. This is probably the only interview I'll ever do where we get the, the close that's, up on the scar. Hey, that's very gnarly. Yeah, it's it is. Big time. It goes a little longer than that under the sock, but uh, that, that gives you the idea. Hey, that's a nice little reminder. You know? Yeah, no were. doubt. I'll show my boys someday. I'll say, you think you have grit? You there you go. Grit, <laughs> How old are you? Get you one of these. How old are you? <laughs> uh, I'm 35. I'll be 36 before we kick off next year. So we have projected probably the years in what you're thinking. Yeah, I was just talking to Cam Jordan yesterday because we were talking about how how long we got. You know, he and I graduated high school the same year. He didn't redshirt, so he came in the NFL, you know, a year before me. But uh, we were asking each other how long you got. We were both kind of thinking, you know, at least that 15-year threshold sounds kind of good to both of us. So we were thinking, you know, 15 years, and then maybe from there you kind of go year to year. But I think, uh, you know, we got to get this Achilles good and try to stack up a few more. I want to play long enough that my two boys who are six and four that they can remember it hmm. and have been a part of it and come into the locker room after a big win and go to practice and just remember it. Right now, my four-year-old, you know, we lost a playoff game, and I come home, and he, he doesn't even know we played. You know, he's like, <laughs> win, lose, what, I'm, I'm taking a bath, and dad's home, whatever. Need this so, four-year-old to That's really beautiful. feel the pain. We got a few more years here <laughs> before I can retire so he can remember it. All right, well, I can't wait to see where it's at. Yep. Obviously, we... Saw you have great success in Minnesota. Loved it. Can't wait to see what team steps up to the plate, though, and says, you know what? We want to get better right now with Kirk Cousins. You're the man. With Heritage Bags, making the Heritage, world a better place. HeritageGear.com. Check it out and raise money for, for veterans uh, between now and February 14th. Michigan State Spartan legend. <laughs> hey, go green. Go white. Go white. Foxy. <laughs> All right. Thanks, guys. Kirk Cousins. Hey, thank you. Thank you. Good luck. Thank Jeez. You. Thank you, Kirk. Oh, Showing it off. Walking good. Lather that thing Sweet up with cocoa butter. Too. He's got joggers on. He knows what he's doing. Hey, that, that, was, that was disgusting. Nice. Yeah, yeah, big yeah. I saw it sitting here. Like, Kind of got disgusted by it. That wasn't the yeah. same doc, right? No. Did Aaron? Alatrosh. Neil Alatrosh. Yes, sir. Yeah, Neil Alatrosh. Ah, Keeley's, Keeley's factory lab, right? Mm -hmm. Boom. Bingo. Hey, that's a good Bingo. brand name for him. Yeah. I don't know if they're branding it that way. They should. It's a factory for everything, though. He does everything. Yeah, but I think the Achilles one is well, becoming a quick. I think the, the Achilles surgery that they do is... Groundbreaking. I think it has a little bit of like a quicker yeah, recovery. Yeah, more aggressive. Some weird anchor compared he, to others. He had the standard, I think, because uh -huh. he had a full season and an off season. So. Yeah. You okay, D-Butt? Yeah. You sure? Yeah, yeah. What happened? What? Was that a big yawn? Or was, yeah, it was a yawn. I tried to cough button a little late. <laughs> 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 this guy's golfing with Phil Mickelson yeah. yesterday. What you, today he's got to sit here and listen to Kirk Cousins. Yeah. Uh, Kirk was awesome. He's great. He's great. I'm football. interested to see where he is. Uh, I know he's going to sign a great deal. He's been in that uh, Mick Shanahan offense for a lot of his career, so it'll be interesting to see where he lands up. Joining us now is a man who took over the NFL yep. this year. Yeah. Ooh. Coolest name <laughs> in the NFL. By far. Also, maybe one of the largest heads we saw yesterday as he walked by. <laughs> Puka the cool. Yeah. Puka, up, how you baby? doing, dude? Puka, how are you? Pepsi. Pepsi. He's, he's here with Pepsi. Pepsi. He's, got, he's got suit pants on. Those are sweet. T-shirt tucked in. Look at a chain. Oh, is that a wild cherry Pepsi? <laughs> oh, so good. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Died for a wild cherry. Is that I, wild cherry? That is the wild cherry. Oh, oh you oh, dog. So good. Hold on. Oh, I, Pat, we got a guy using Apple Pro in the front row. I mean, yeah. <laughs> this guy. Zero sugar, too. Puka, you related nice. to this guy? Puka, no, that's a white. That's not a news. That's a white, obviously, with the Apple Vision. Oh. And for the brand shirt, hell yeah, I love that. 
Right, is he hey, bud, how's it, how's it going in there? What are you doing? Wow. <laughs> 3500 bucks. That's what you get. <laughs> That's worth it. Yep. Where's, where's your screen at, dog? I got one. I was playing last night. Oh, now you, oh. you're making the screens massive, bro. I was watching a movie. <laughs> you're like Caesar. in the sphere? Oh, you got one? You got one of these apples? <laughs> I was walking in Caesar that I had to. I seen four kids walking with it, and I was like, okay, I got to hop on the train. <laughs> okay. It's ridiculous. So you you enjoyed it, though? Oh, it's unreal. Like, I, I have Twitter rolling over here. Got LeBron highlights up on the screen while I'm laying on the bed. I got four, like... Yeah, it's ridiculous. Your lady, uh, you were watching Braun highlights. <laughs> so you're a massive Lakers fan or Braun fan? Uh, both. I'm a Lakers fan, but I'm a LeBron stand for sure since a, since a little kid. Like Cleveland, this is for you. Like that's, <laughs> that's, that's a staple. Yeah. That's bored. That's burned into my heart like forever. Like I don't know. I've never been to Cleveland, but <laughs> <laughs> you, you, <laughs> you, know, you were pumped for them. Yeah, I was pumped for them. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> so like inspiration, obviously, you can draw it from any other sport. Uh, for you to come in and have the rookie year you had, I assume you have to have a confidence level, a competition level, and a football IQ and everything like that. At, why Why do you think you were able to have some? I think we've asked you this before, but now you're removed from the season a little bit. Yeah. It was stupid how good you were. <laughs> D right? Yeah, unbelievable. Dumb. That was not supposed to happen with Best of all time. Why do you Fourth think year. it was? Is it because you've always just been a competitive human? What do you think it is? A hundred percent. I mean, my brothers, I think, definitely shaped me to be the best one. I, I, I owe a lot of credit to those guys, but... Uh, yeah, I think just <laughs> all of those times I got beat up and stuffed in the dryer, like I was waiting to hit somebody else. Yeah, okay, like football's, right. been, <laughs> football's been my opportunity to get my lick back. <laughs> yeah, well, it's, it worked in the NFL at the oh, highest yeah. level. T uh, AJ's got a question. For How you. do you sustain that? Obviously now, like you don't have a you, when teams become great, they say, oh, they got a target on their back. Now you're not surprising anybody. How do you sustain that? How do you continue to, to do what you do? Uh, true. I love competing. Like it was so funny. Like uh, I, we were out there at the Pro Bowl. Like I had uh, since we lost. Honestly, I've been sitting on the, my bed playing video games. So I was like, man, I, I don't know if I'm even good enough to play football anymore. But it was nice. I was like running. I was like, oh, running with Sauce Gardner and Jalen Ramsey, and they're all present. I'm like, oh, okay, I can still play a little bit of football. But uh, I love playing basketball. Working on my lateral movements. Hopefully, I won't be running too many routes. Try to save my knees and my ankles. Uh, but. Uh, uh, How are you at hoops? Pretty good. I, I think so. CJ, I know. I know CJ is the known as the basketball guy over here. But ask CJ. I, I don't give him a little crossover step mm. back. Like, oh, oh. Michael, Michael Parsons. I've seen these guys getting into the NBA All Star game. I'm like, Michael Parsons can't even shoot a left hand layup. I know. <laughs> you can, go, you can play in that celebrity game if you want. Yeah, I'm, easily. Absolutely. Do you want to play in a celebrity game? I would love to. At least let you're me in it. Let yeah. me in the yeah. Yeah. Like, in let it. me do one of those cool dunks. You know. All right, so you're in it. <laughs> yeah. Right. I, I have. I'm not in it, and we have no say in anything in the NBA, but. ESPN's running it. Yeah, you're in. You're in it. Congratulations. Congrats. 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 Does that mean we're going to Indy in a couple weeks? So we li we live in Indy. Oh. So you'll be coming to our town. Sweet. What's in Indy? Uh, <laughs> a celebrity game that you're not going to embarrass yourself. Okay? Because yeah. you're not going to embarrass yourself. But also the Thunderdome, which we need. Your tone has a question yeah. for you, Puka. Puka, We always talk about situations like for quarterbacks, young quarterbacks to go in. How... Like, how different do you think it would have been if you weren't with Cooper Cup and Stafford and McVay? And how big of it was the situation coming in for you, toward, for your success? Yeah, the, I mean, the situation was huge. Like, as soon as I walked in, uh, before Coop even showed up to OTAs, he sent me a text of uh, a route I had run. He's like, man, I love what you're doing out there. Keep balling. And, like, and then he sent me a, a coaching clip of what he, like, a, a route that he had run awesome. that was, like, God tier route. And he's like, all right, this is how you can work up at the top. And it's like before we had even really met each other and stuff. So like that, it just helped give me confidence. And I knew like, oh, he wants to help. He wants to see me succeed. So it allowed me to really thrive in that environment. And then Coach McVay is like a football genius. Like those three together is like, it's uh, it's unreal. But then they have so much fun. And Coach McVay is like a, a little energizer button as well. Like he's <laughs> just running around ready to go. If it's not ball, like, you know, he's, he's excited about everything. <laughs> Did you see the clip from draft night when they were calling you BYU? Uh, whenever they drafted you or whatever. And I think Senior Bowl was another... Yeah, you had a huge, you had a huge yeah. Senior Bowl. So, like, did you have a connection with the Rams before? It felt like they, the way they were talking about you, they were big fans. No, I, I had met with them one time. I didn't even meet with them at, like, the Combine and stuff like that. They had, uh, I had watched one of my... The Boise State game, which I think was probably one of my best, like, college games. Uh, we had watched it with one of the scouts. We had, like, every play, like... And he was like asking, like, what's the protection slide here? And I was like, luckily I knew all of that stuff. So oh, like, did you? Yeah. You a cerebral? Uh, uh, all the, the BYU, at least the BYU offense, because it was pretty, we were, we, were, we were pretty basic and stuff. No, no Coach McVay talk over there. So it was nice and easy. So they asked about soaking? <laughs> no, 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 they didn't. They're, no, no, they, they did not? Sure. No. no. Dalton Kincaid was talking about quaking. Like, he was like, yeah, bro, we've been quaking over there at Utah. That's what we talked about. Oh, oh okay. Oh. So Utah is yeah, the... the. The Quakers. I don't know whatever you did last. I'm not yeah, going to. You know what it is. <laughs> no, I don't know what it is. No, no. 
no, you Luka, showed you me. Do know you that. showed me. Yeah, you, <laughs> Puka, they got the bunk beds, Puka. <laughs> yeah. No, they don't do that with you. Right? We're, well. we're, we're old school, traditional soaking. <laughs> 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 T-Bot's got a question for you. Yeah, obviously, you just had an uh, incredible rookie year. Now it's your first long year, longest year probably of your life and career. But now going into the second year, have you spoke with Cooper Cup or Matt Stafford, any of older wide receivers on, hey, what's the plan? I know you say you don't want to run a ton of routes, basketball, but like kind of planning out that first offseason going into your second year. Yeah, so – Cooper Cup, I know, is built different because we were at the Pro Bowl, and I was like, hey, Coop, he said I could come work out with him in the offseason. That's kind of my plan. I'll stay out there in okay. L.A. Um, but he was like, yeah, I'm working out. I'm starting February 5th. And I was like... <laughs> And that was last week. I was like, dude, we, we just we just finished playing a couple weeks ago. I was like, I don't know if my knee's ready for that and stuff. But uh, I'll be out with him. And then it was Matthew's birthday yesterday, so I sent him a text. And they'll, they'll be back out in L.A. and we'll be able to get some routes. And if Coop's running routes, I'll, I'll for sure be out there because I know if I'm going to run routes, that means I'm getting him to come play basketball with me after. <laughs> okay, so we're hooping, hooping. This uh, we're hooping. I told Jalen Ramsey, uh, a lot of the guys for the Rams said he would come back and play in L.A. So I told him when we were out the Pro Bowl, I was like, I, we got to get a squad together. Ryan Smith plays basketball every morning. He's like you Mormons love the basketball. Ryan Smith's got a nice jump shot too. He's trying to get that the the what is the hockey team over there? Yeah, the yeah. Hockey? Man, I might have I haven't been back to Utah in a while, but I need to go to Jack. He saw the jumper. Yeah, he Oh yeah. He's got a golf shot too. Yeah. 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 He dresses like an asshole on the golf course. <laughs> Did you see that? Yeah. See, what do you mean? Visor. He had this whole yeah. thing. And then he almost had a hole in one. Yeah. I mean the guy's an absolute dog. You Mormons are awesome. <laughs> Thank you. Legit. Where are you from originally? Uh, I was born here in Las Vegas, actually. St. Rose Hospital, yep. Oh, wow. You grew up here? I grew up here. I, went, I moved to Utah right before high school and stuff, so this is I'm back in the hometown. It feels like it's the perfect city for the Super Bowl. 100%. Everything's booming, and, like, yeah, there's nothing like it. Chuck has a question for you, Puka. So you talked about McVay, right, and the genius of, of Sean McVay. And, like, when he, came in, when he came into the league in 2017, we opened – uh, against him, beat the brakes off us, right? <laughs> oh yeah, beat the brakes. So, so, what makes him? What separates him? What makes him so good with this offense? How how do you see it evolving? How do you see your role uh, evolving in this offense? And like he just can scheme guys open. Yeah, a hundred percent. I think. Uh yeah, his his energy and the ability to communicate at such a high level for us to understand. I think of like some of the walkthroughs where we might be just running duo to the right side, and he's talking about all right. So when you move two yards or two inches to the right, like the backer's gonna relate to you right here. So we're gonna fit like you need to go be able to insert right there. And he's talking about the guards' eye progression, and he's got he's talking about every single position where your eyes need to be, where you're gonna move, and how the defense is gonna react. Like he understands all of that, and his ability to communicate with that, uh, communicate that with us, yeah. uh, makes it so easy. Because he's very, yeah, he's a freaking genius. It's yeah, scary. but you got to be a genius to understand that as a rook ass rook, dude. That is a whole nother thing. They're saying you're like another quarterback out there alongside Cooper Cup. They got three quarterbacks on the field at oh, all man. times, let alone everything else they got going on. It's insane. What are you doing with the zero sugar wild cherry? This tastes good. You already cracked one? Okay. Yeah, I did. I, you were. You were talking about laying in your bed in Apple Vision. <laughs> I was out here getting after it with Wild Cherry. What are you doing with them? Obviously, uh, they got a, a, a bigger than life uh, vault that they're gonna do. We're gonna be in uh, in front of the Bazaar Hotel or the Bazaar Shops. We're Sip City Secrets. That's what we got going on. So fans, I'm gonna be out there on Saturday. They can come up, share your little. You're not a wild secret. Not nothing too crazy. No, we don't want nothing. No soaking. No, um, no quaking over there. <laughs> I don't know if there's a lot of soaking in Sin City. No. <laughs> Wait, you're quaking here, pal. Yeah. Yeah, straight they in. are quaking here, pal. But uh, you come and share your little secret. It'll be on Invisible Ink, and then you'll get a, a code to to win some gear from Pepsi and stuff. We'll be out there on Saturday from 2:30 to 4, and uh, it'll be fun. Hell yeah, Puka. Happy you're getting all the accolades. Happy you're getting all the attention. And we're very thankful you stopped by our show. You're awesome for the NFL, pal. Oh, thank you. You got a little secret for us? Me? What? Yeah, yeah, nothing too crazy. Like a Sin City secret? Yeah, a Sip City secret. Sip, 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 Sip City? Sip, Sip City. City. Sip City. Invisible You Ink. go first. You go first. Go yeah. Sip. Sip City. Sip City. Oh, my. Oh, we, well, I, oh sorry. Uh, <laughs> my secret. Uh, I, pill, I, I, I pour my milk before my cereal. Okay, that's dumb. That's not a secret. <laughs> oh, no, not a secret. Okay. I don't, I don't do can't that? give any. Why do you do that? Do that for How do you do that? You get the perfect amount of cereal in there. You know, like you eat a bowl of cereal and then you're like, oh, I have I have more cereal and I don't have enough milk. You got to go pour milk. I, I pour the milk first. Milk. You get the perfect amount of cereal in there. Mm -mm. No, that's no. never happened to anybody. Mm, no. I don't think huh. so. Stick with You've never had a bowl of cereal and you've been like, oh, I'm done eating. No, I always have. I always have milk left over and then I just pour more cereal. Yeah, then then you're having two bowls. What are we even talking about? Puka. I don't know if that makes sense. What's your favorite <laughs> cereal? 
uh, Reese's Puffs. Yeah. Oh, not bad. Very good. Banger. That's good. Okay. Remember the rap song they used to have? I'm happy you gave a good answer to that. <laughs> What's your favorite cereal? You know, I'll go CTC. I think everybody likes Ooh. Salmon Toast Crunch, but as I get older, you got to start doing like the adult ones. Yeah. yeah. I like Honey Bunches of Oats with no almonds. Yeah, that's my oh. nice. It's not Reese's oh. Puff. Honey Bunches of Oats. Yeah, Those fuck, fuck almonds. Crazy. Bye. 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 I like a Raisin Bran Crunch. Yeah, yeah. Oh, that's very adult of you. Raisin Bran? Crunch, crunch, though. Crunch. Whole milk, whole milk. I'm a fruity pebble. Oh, I'm doing a whole milk. Grass fed whole milk. Yeah, straight from the cars. Yes. Are you actually into your <laughs> no, no, from the cow? No. All right, I'll do a Sip City Secret. If we're just saying dumb things we do, that's what it sounds like. Okay. What Sip City Secret is. <laughs> <laughs> like, what is a, a secret? Uh... Here's my secret. You two sucks. Oh, <laughs> whoa, no, no, no. whoa. Whoa. I thought uh, you loved it. Awesome. Might not be a secret anymore. <laughs> yep, it's Might definitely not. not a that's secret. a secret. You're supposed to write it on invisible Ooh. ink, so it disappeared. <laughs> yeah, but you just had me say we did the whole... We just did the Sip City thing. Well, now you said mine was dumb, and now I feel bad for you, too. No. <laughs> you shouldn't. Listen, you should. They got it figured out. We paid Spirit 60 grand for a suite. I think everybody else did as well. They got it figured out. It was, uh, if you ever do a show later, Puka, which I assume you're, are you a musician? You sing? Oh, no, no, no musical talents. Well, I don't know if you need it anymore with what we've yeah, seen. Bingo. Yeah. Uh, so <laughs> if you end up getting in the music world and you have a concert, just play at least one song that people might know. Just in a two-hour stand. Just two hours. Just play one song that people might know. Not a single song you knew? Play the hits. Two and a half hours. Not one. We knew one of them. What was the one we knew? What was the one we knew? Uh, it was the... Uh, the she... Mm. Nope. She, you been there yet, Puga? I've already kind of moved on from it. it was no, so did y'all see the whole. video of the, right. the person who climbed it last walking, night? Right. Right. Uh, did he die? Is he dead? Did he fall off? It's very round. I, I don't know. That, that might have been Alec Connell. I, I don't know how you get up that thing. That's terrifying. Peter Parker? No, I think Bono went up and saved him. That's why he was so horseshit last night uh, at the concert. <laughs> he anybody, called his energy. Has anybody made a shot? Okay, okay, yeah. We need you to do this, Puka. Oh. Especially with what you just said. Oh. oh. That's the first miss. Oh, help. First, no. That's the first miss we've Wait, ever. I didn't, I didn't get yeah. to the reset. You see, that was a real catch. That was like, that was like, like a, a great pass. Oh, great pass. Oh, no. That's the second oh, miss wait, we've wait, had. Oh, oh, that's no. That's only the second. It looks good, though. Here, we it's need you to go. Uh, actually, stay right there. We got the camera. Perfect. I got a little bit of a bad angle right here. Bad angle. Puka. You're a this is like, Puka. This is like Puka, I'm here's not the even deal. on the right wing. This is a little far. Okay, here's the deal. Michael Parsons made that yesterday. Yep. Left hand. Left hand. Hold up. Ooh. Oh, God. hey! Ah. That was good, Oop. That was good, Oop. Turn. Way to go. Yeah, uh, Puka. I think I got to stop shooting now. No, no. That was a good basketball. Now it's, about to, coming in. Yeah, now it's about to mean some. Oh, <laughs> I got you. The, um, hold up. <laughs> there it is. Yeah. All right, you broke the chain net. I mean, you broke the chain net. Too clean of a shot. Uh, before you shoot this next one. <laughs> <laughs> All right, if you make this one right now, we'll give 25 people $500. Ooh. Hold up. <laughs> If it's a swish, yeah, forty people. Okay, Whoa. wow. Forty people, five hundred dollars. If it's a swish, twenty-five people, five hundred dollars. If it's a make, all they'll have to do is repost this video, say something nice to Puka right. while reposting the video, and put the easiest way to pay you digitally. Shout out to Wild Cherry Pepsi Zero Sugar. It is phenomenal. And shout out to Puka Nakua, draining something for the fine people. Let's go! That's, that's not a Swiss, but I, hey, hey, we won. Swiss. We won. That's what I'm still talking about. Still winning. <laughs> 25 people, $500 because our friend Puka Nakua just trained a shot. All you got to do is repost the post, say something nice to somebody, and uh, put the easiest way to pay you. You're the man. You pay me too? Nope. We're not that's, allowed they, to. They're doing that. NFL won't let us. That's right. Yeah. Actuals? Yeah. Uh, These people are paying them. Your payday's coming. I pal. thought the NFL is. We're I'm off season, right? Yeah, you just need three more good years. Yep. All right. And then you're paying because they're it's talking gone. about like forty million a year for wide receivers. Exactly. Actually, well, Justin Jefferson's <laughs> about to. Oh, Justin yeah. Jefferson's about to try to go get that. About to reset the market. He's texting Coop right now. Hey, we need to start running routes tomorrow. Yeah, I'm like, <laughs> hey, my knee feels a lot better. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Puka Nakua. All right, we're gonna take a quick break. Josh Allen will join us on the other side as we wrap up this glorious Thursday live from Radio Row with a wonderful group of people joining us outside. We can't thank him enough. Puka, you're the man. This the suit pants with a shirt tucked in. Wait. Like yeah. like the fit? Clean. Top notch. Trying to switch it up. Queen chain too. Super duper. Hey. All right, be a friend, tell a friend something nice that might change your life. Take five. Bye. 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 Well, nonetheless, as of February 1st, uh, Pat McAfee is officially a contributor 
with WWE. I've been preparing for this my entire life. There's a point in my life, all I could think about doing was professional wrestling. We're gonna have to get the okays, obviously. And we did from people high up. They were the only people that knew for a while. There was like three people that knew in the whole world that that was gonna potentially be a situation for a little bit. City of Stars, Boston Connors. We will be there tonight. Nobody's supposed to know we're here. It's gonna be tough. And if you're a man that's only known for wearing tank tops, you kind of gotta cover it up. There, you know, there's a shit on a shower here in the back. They sat in that bus six, seven, eight hours, yeah, nine, ten is. hours. I'm telling you that, I think. Holy fuck, what a view that's gonna be. Hell yeah. Look at all those fucking people are gonna be there. Just waiting, you know, for an opportunity to potentially have a WrestleMania moment. It's ridiculous. This is awesome. WWE is just like the best at operating. They take care of the non-obvious. So we're very thankful to be here. And tonight should be fucking sick. Hell yeah. I think there's like three people that know I'm here. Are we not supposed to come in here? Seven. No. Yeah. All right. Four now. Four Look now. at you. I want to say a word. I'll see you at uh, SoFi. You're going to be in LA? I don't know. George is, uh, you know. It's a loaded question. George, we don't know, George. You don't <laughs> know. Maybe. What's up, Stark? Oh, nice. <laughs> As soon as I saw George showcase that tight end university tank top, I knew there was a chance old George about to do something special. Yeah. <laughs> Are you kidding me? Welcome to WrestleMania! You know, the night was getting late, weren't you? Yeah. We, we didn't know if a moment was going to pop up or maybe my services could be utilized. I haven't been in a ring since SummerSlam. Okay? Like, not even in one. All I wanted was the Miz to have an opportunity to have a, match. Just a WrestleMania match. Yeah, yeah. Good guy. Stand and then the Miz mentions, I sent out an open challenge, and we go, oh my God. there it is. And I put out an open challenge, and no one responded. Why? Because I'm the Miz! I have walked out into a stadium as a WWE superstar probably a million times in my head. WrestleMania was missing Pat McAfee in the Pat McAfee show. And I'm thankful to the WWE Universe that said hello whenever I came out on that massive fucking stage. By the way, there's only two announcers undefeated in WrestleMania history, me and Pat. I can't believe McAfee's here. But good news, this is my WrestleMania tank top. If you still would like a match, why don't you let me beat your ass right here, right now? You all want to see The Miz versus Pat McAfee right here? of WrestleMania, and I cannot make matches official. Miz, I do believe your tiny balls are showing. Tiny balls. Tiny balls. 
seven. People here, somebody has to be able to make a match official somewhere. I am the dog father and the host of WrestleMania, so I feel like I could make that match happen. Right now, we got a ref, we got you, we got you. Let's get cranking. I'm out. show stinks and the fact that you listen we are very very thankful for it. the all-time leading tackler for the green bay packers you pay damn it your friend tell a friend something nice to change their life hello beautiful people and welcome back to Radio Row here at the Mandalay Bay Convention Center on this glorious Super Bowl 58, Thursday, February 8th. Hour three of the program starts now. Football! More like hour four, and we are lucky to be here. I'm joined by A.J. Hawk, Darius Butler, Coach Pagano, and the Toxic Table at Boston Connor and at Ty Schmidt. Ty, you look alive today, pal. You look fantastic. feel great. I feel absolutely great. We got in pretty early last night because the U2 concert sucked. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I might have been I, actually you know what I should thank Bono you're right because had that been a good concert um, we probably would have stayed the whole time I would have had six seven more drinks and I would have been in a much worse spot today so yeah. shout out Bono shout out the edge appreciate your voice well to be clear we have heard that they have good songs yeah. We didn't hear any of them last night. Oh, no, 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 not one. But the sphere is worth it. Yeah, it's awesome. Yes. The sphere is top notch. Unbelievable. Uh, Ty's underselling it. He, he did have a little hiccup ha halfway through the night last night. Uh, unfortunately, he woke up this morning. A little bit of puke in the uh, sink. In the, oh, uh, oh, no. oh, Ty. Pl Vegas got you. No, no, no. Planning for the next day. I All said, right. hey, you know Smart. what? Get this thing out right now. Joining That's us great. right now is a man who's always planning for the next day because he's only been getting better and better since the day he arrived in the NFL. Out of a great college. Hell yeah. Wyoming? Wyo. Woo. Ladies and gentlemen, the Buffalo Bills quarterback here for Subway, Josh Allen. Yeah. Josh. Woo. Brother. Oh, yeah. Oh, yes. Great. Here, this is for you. Perfect. Thank you. Thank Let me you. make sure it's plugged in so you can hear. You got me? Yep. Can you hear? Yep, I got you. Let's go, Josh. Right, boys, Great. how we Let's doing? Go. Josh. Josh. How are you? Okay, here for Subway. This thing was out here. What is this? So this is a safe, and we've got three of Subway's newest creations in here. We've got the Footlong Cookie, the Cinnabon Footlong, Footlong Churro, and the Annie Ann's Footlong Pretzel. So Whoa. three of their newest wow. items, and we've got a nice little code we got to carry around in a safe because it is such a hot commodity right now. We're going to let the boys take a guess at what the code is, and if we get it right, we get to pass out some goodies is for the that boys. Real? It is. I got it. Yeah, I got it too. You're gonna hit. You're gonna hit. Easy. You think uh, it? You know what yeah. it is? How many digits? Four. Four digits. What am I gonna hit? Do I gotta hit the star or pound beforehand? Oh uh, no, that's that's at the end. Hit the, okay. Star. Okay. Star. Star. Okay. star. Star is at the end. We got yep. one. We know one. All right. Now. So we know. Is it four and star at the end? Yes. All right. Who's going first? I mean, I'll go 17, 17 star. All right. You think? You think I'm that? Son of a bitch! Let's go yeah. 17. Ah. 14 star. Oh, he hates dicks, damn it. Uh, Set, uh, but at, the, well. at, the end, at the end of the interview, I'll, I'll, I'll see if, if the interview goes well, well, we'll get it open. Oh, AJ, what? what is it? AJ, what is it? I don't know, 69-69? <laughs> yeah, that's it. I I'll, mean, what I'll else? Good guess. Be. That's, good that's guess. a great guess. Oh, well. <laughs> I was across There's got to be a 12 in there for the foot long. Oh, you're right. Oh. Got to be. So maybe 17. 17-12. star. Oh. That's a good year. Was it? Uh, no, this is for a foot long cookie. Is this shit worth it? Sure, it is. Sure. One, two, foot, three, four. Right, one, sure. two, three, four. Gotta that's start, 12. Gotta start that's simple. 12 in it. This son of a bitch. Right. We need a hint. 
At the end. We'll get it at the end. Just this the whole time. 1759. Yeah, yeah. Come on, Josh. You got to know your personnel. <laughs> the fuck, Josh? Can you spell out Wyoming? <laughs> With your numbers. 9966. Six. How about 1759? <laughs> we'll, we'll get it at the end. So you were close. Uh -oh. I'm just going to say that. It's close. Oh. 69, 69. I would, I would, if, <laughs> how, how we doing? Josh. <laughs> <laughs> How are you doing? I'm doing I, to, I told doing you good. backstage. Felt like through the year, different vibes from the Buffalo Bills. Okay? Going into the last couple years, Super Bowl, Super Bowl, Super Bowl. I think Aaron goes, no, no, oh, no. Christ. Safe down. <laughs> Safe down. Snap and a half. We'll get it out. Where's Jared? At those those long, those. <laughs> but not that one. AJ. Hawk. AJ. Come different on. person. Who's Show's that? the worst, Josh. Come on. Who is that, AJ? <laughs> I'll tell you, if that full long churro got broken right there because yeah. of me, I am going to be so pissed. Good We've Lord. been guessing all these cones and everything's broken now because because I dropped it. I'm sorry about that to the subway people and you, Josh Allen. Uh, this year, going in, different expectations for the Bills, but not really. Nobody's talking about the Buffalo Bills going into the season. Vibes felt different around the Buffalo Bills. Then, hit piece comes out on McDermott, seemingly. Then, the Kadarius Tony line. And... From that moment afterwards in the locker room where Brandon Bean said, it's our fucking coach, and you guys gave him a speech, felt like you were a different team. Did you guys feel that as well? Was that a moment? Was that a turning point? And why do you think you needed it yeah, up there? Yeah, I, I think that was, that was a turning point in the season for us where guys got around each other and rallied around each other and played for each other. And uh, I'm not saying that we weren't doing that early in the year. We lost a couple games by uh, you know, one score, you know, and they could have gone either way. So... We just ended up finding a way, trusting each other, and um, obviously that last game didn't get the job done. And I don't want to be doing this shit right now. I want to be playing in the Super Bowl. So, um, but I'm here, get to hang out with you, and that's a good consolation prize. And we assume you're going to be in the Super Bowl in a matter of. I mean, the AFC is hilariously loaded, but it's hilariously loaded because Josh Allen's in it. You know, in Buffalo, it's going to be the conversation. You weren't in the MVP talk. And you were the only guy who had like 40 at one point. Yeah. Yep. You had like 40 tuds. You're obviously being dominant. You're making better plays than you've ever made in the past. But you weren't being chatted about at all this year. Did you feel that? And then there was that one game where you threw the ball like five times. And you're like, I don't feel like I did anything this yeah. game. And Cowboys. Yeah, did you feel that this year, that there was really no hype around you? And how did you feel about that? Honestly, there was a point in time where I just deleted all socials. And I, I felt so good. Uh -huh. You know, I was just I was just worrying about what I got to do for my team. When did you delete it? That was around the uh, halfway mark, you know, and, and not not to say that that was a difference maker or anything, but mentally, like to not worry about what other people are saying. I think there's there's a lot of power in that, and um, again, just doing what I felt necessary for our team to try to win football games. Freeing, freeing feeling. Much so. Yeah. Will you, have you continued to do that? I, yeah, I think so. This is the new you. I think so. Off the grid, Josh Allen. That, that'd be nice, just to be completely off grid. No one knows what I'm doing, where I'm at. Just in the lab, working. Wearing flannels. What? <laughs> Wearing flannels, yeah. <laughs> Doing your thing. Uh, AJ has a question for you, Josh. So whenever you, we hear people talk about you, they say, like, when's he going to get down? When are you going to run out of bounds? When are you going to not lower your shoulder and run dudes over? I, As a fan, I don't want you to do that, but I, I worry for your health. You think? Do you ever make those decisions? Like, let's say you're running. You know, you're know, you thinking, who, I'm gonna, who am I going to truck? Am I going to go out of bounds? What am I doing? Do you think as you get older, you're going to take less of those shots? But I, I would assume you're still going to always revert and want to use your athletic ability and your physicality. Yeah, I think at some point that becomes uh, number one most important thing, right? The best ability is availability. Yep. And you don't want to be taking these hits all the time. And um, you know, there's going to be times where I'm going to have to. You're delivering a lot of them, though. That's the thing. And, and they say in a car accident, you don't want to brace for impact, right? You yeah. get hurt doing that. You just Yeah, but you don't want to be in car accidents. Correct, correct. True. We don't so want to that's, do that. That's the whole, True. you know what I mean? That's the thing that doesn't get said about that whole. But yeah. also, yes. be the hammer, not the nail. Oh! There we go. So, Hell yeah. There's, there's, there's some truth in that, too. So um, I try to try to use my athletic ability right now since I have it. Yeah. And at some point, uh, it's going to diminish a little bit, and I'm going to have to be a little bit smarter with that. We talk about Subway, obviously, these new full-long cookies and churros, and there's a safe down here. Oh, yeah. It's <laughs> but we heard you say, let James cook. Mm -hmm. That felt like a big piece of your offense coming together whenever. Now, we had James Cook on. He said seven words. It was uh, <laughs> certainly That's something. That's him. Yep. Certainly, yeah. The things he did as well. Yeah, he did Pro the things at the Pro Bowl as yep. well. That made us feel good because yes. uh, we had not seen him talk to anybody else. I was like, this guy hates us, obviously. And then we watch him. He's like, all right, so he's not really a Fair big, much. how you doing? So we were thankful he came on the team. 
but are on the show. We've been wondering all year, though, like why this guy feels like a weapon, feels like a weapon. And then after it started like clicking with the new offense coordinator, Brady, he was a big piece of it. In your video, you said let James Cook to a camera, I think, in a tunnel. And then in the locker room afterwards, let James Cook. What does James Cook mean to the team? And why do you think there was that moment where he became like almost the focal point of your offense there? Well, he's got so much ability. Um, he's shifty. He, he runs the ball hard. And again, the more that we got him the ball, you saw him produce. You know, at a, at a very high level, he's a, a pro bowler for a reason. Um, catching balls out of the backfield, you know, did some different things, getting him lined up against linebackers, and he had some success doing it. So, the more that we can get the ball in his hands, the better we're going to be off. Stephon Diggs, you hate him. He hates you. Yep. Of course. <laughs> yep. Everyone knows it. Enemies. We're, Enemies yeah. don't talk to. Well, yeah. he's right. trying to DM you on socials. You delete your socials. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> no, your relationship that is talked about. No. Yeah. You guys know that everything you do is going to get talked about. On the uh, warm-ups, you guys are dancing. Oh, Josh and Josh and Diggs are dancing. Look at them hanging out on a sideline. Oh, Josh had a frown on his face. Uh -oh. Stefan, everything you guys do is judged. You have to know that at this point, I assume. Absolutely, and you know we we've talked about it, and literally anything that that we do on the sideline, whether it's good or bad, if it's communicating the right way, if it's communicate whatever it is, it gets micro. Uh, you know, yes. Put under the microscope and judged every certain way and every angle. But um, again, we're just trying to be the best teammates that we could be for each other. And you know, I owe a lot of my success in my career to him. And I think he would he would feel the same way about me. But I love that guy like a brother. Always will. Um, you know. And you know, we're gonna do some some big things next year. D Butt's got a question for you. Hey, we're uh, obviously here for the big game and all that stuff. But I want to ask about your golf game. Where's your golf game right now? I know we're a few weeks out from the season. And I had a chance to golf with a legend yesterday, lefty Phil Mixon, but you met Tiger Woods. Like, what was that moment like when you met him? What was that conversation like? What was the mana like from Tiger? There it is. He's got this, he's just got this aura around yeah. him, right? Like, you you can feel the presence when he's walking in. Um, my favorite athlete of all time, like, when he's standing over, like, a three-foot putt, my heart's pounding, yeah. right? Like, I want him to make it so bad, and it was so cool to meet him last year, and um, you know, life's life's crazy. You know, I was in junior college not too long ago, and now I'm sitting here and talking to you guys and meeting Tiger Woods and doing some pretty cool things. Well, and you're in a celebrity relationship. Yeah, yeah. yeah. that was the whole that. thing that got thrown into your life. Way to go, you're officially an NFL quarterback. <laughs> pretty sweet. Way to go, we're watching you in your personal life. It's Unbelievable. You got paparazzi following you. Yeah. Welcome to the NFL, Josh. <laughs> right. welcome, welcome to the NFL, Josh. No, you don't sign up for that part of it. You know? Well, it's buddy. Crazy. You should see the shit we get in. Yeah. <laughs> Couldn't even imagine your world at all. Uh, Josh, we know that you have a lot of people to go talk to. We know that you're an absolute legend. What does the offseason look Got like? It. There's some golf involved, getting away from it. Do you suck at golf? Because Tom said, what, you shouldn't be, what, you said you're a nine or something? To Tom, that video with Tom Brady. I need more strokes. Yeah. Uh, he, 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 he wanted me to get, have less strokes, meaning I. I Sandbag. He said you were sandbag. Yeah, we're not Aaron Rodgers. I was going to right? He did say that last year. Yeah. Like, Rod Aaron sandbag. So what do you think about his handicap when he won? When yeah. he won the pep. What? He got more strokes than I did last year. This, really? I love you, Aaron. <laughs> but there were, some, there were some dudes that were legitimately pissed off. At who? Aaron. For sandbagging. Well, I, I guess it's not Aaron's <laughs> fault. Like, you want to get as many strokes as you can. I think that's the name of the game. But whoever was in charge of that. Who did he pay uh, off? He, he, he got paid somebody he, off to get He only got four off. strokes this year. And, yeah. Um they didn't. They, we beat them. They didn't. Win. Oh, look I will say you. that. Nice. I got yeah, he's both, coming I got off an Achilles. I got both of them. Yeah. Josh, he's going to kill you. Aaron and Tom. We got both of them today. Oh, <laughs> so your game's good. Oh yeah. It's uh, I wouldn't say it's good, but it's it can be. No, we saw you at Top Golf. Remember he? Hit yeah, that he thing. can hit it a country oh. fucking mile. Basically, yeah, you won the big, whole thing. Yeah, absolutely. No, second place. Oh shit. Second place. Yeah, it was yeah. second place. Because there was a set. Remember the last one? Someone threw away. There was actually a little bit of a controversy. Yeah, yeah. some drama. There little was. little controversy there. There was a little yeah. controversy yeah. that we could have passed it. We're over it. Here we are. Shout out yeah. to Top Golf, by the way. All the way back. What kind of driver you hit? I got the new QI10. Ooh. It's pretty good. Pretty good. He makes that. Not in the smoke. That's what I got. I'm a Taylor made guy. You drink beers, whiskey? What do you do? A little bit of both. It depends on the, the mood. Golf course, it's typically uh, a transfusion or confusion. Mm. Ooh. More, more tequila in the day. And then, uh, you know, if we're going to warm up, it's, it's going to be a little bit whiskey. You know, what? Beer, what? beer what for kind me. Of whiskey? I don't do beer anymore. I, I, I like Corona. Okay. That's like, I, I kind of grew up in the region where Corona was uh, top dog. Okay. Beer, oh, well. beer nowadays, though, it just oh. makes my tummy hurt. What's your whiskey of choice? Whiskey of choice. 
you know, I love me and Michter's tenure as like the daily. Um, oh, what is that? It's really good. Fancy. It's a perfect for our blood. What do you know? You're putting that. You're putting that. Yeah, it probably is quarterback stuff. Do you put one of those big ice balls in the middle and then you put that in there? Typically, and I think the more that I've got been around whiskey and drinking whiskey, like you take you take less of that as you get more into it, right? You don't need the ice. Like it just starts to taste a little bit smoother as time goes on. Oh, so you're not even putting ice neat, in this. Neat, neat. Maybe a ah, little bit to start. Give me a neat. Neat. Need that at a QB. Uh oh, a little, 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 little hair, little hair, uh-huh. little chest hair. Oh, you shave that. That's not. You have to shave that. That's <laughs> no. not how your actual chest looks. Twenty-seven years. No way, Josh. That is what your chest looks like. <laughs> what happened? Oh my what god. Is that bad. There's nothing there. Really? It's he right. looks like he's a swimmer, like an Olympic swimmer. It's baby's bottom. Hey, look at this. Like a body. How old are you right now? Twenty-seven. Good for you, dude. So you plenty of hair. Don't do it all, Josh. We're about to sh- we're about we got, to we got to get into the. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Please. So, hey, try, try the reverse sixty-nine. Do nine six nine six. Oh. He said it. We we're close. Yeah. Uh-huh. Here we go. You were close. Have you opened this before? Does it launch yeah. subs out of there? You've opened this today. Uh-oh. You what? You said nine six nine six. That's what we said. Yeah, try. Yeah, try that one. The is reverse. There Danger Witch in there. Oh, what does it mean? I First of all, it's the pound too. It wasn't a star. Oh, <laughs> I mean, never oh, it, it was never. That we would have never got wait, it. Wait for it. Look at this thing. I thought it was about to shoot out. Oh, wow. it's like a bank thing. Yeah, we got. That's that. Churro. Already I fish. Full on cookie, dude. This is man. Oh, this warm. Is that thing a microwave yeah, too warm. or a heater? Yeah. yeah, dude. Look at this. For the oh, uh, churros. Look at the cookie oh. here. So does anyone else have this safe or just you? Just me. Josh, do you eat this stuff or are you like super duper no. healthy? I eat it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. All right. I, I'm, I'm trying to get on my healthy grind this next year. Pretzel. but uh, pretzel. Are you? Pretzel. Trying to. What? I gotta, yeah, I got to keep it keep it toned and fit. You know? Because you're old? Getting older. But quarterback it's bodies. Hard, hard, quarterback hard to bodies. keep off. Some yeah. of them need a little thickness. Like you've seen that picture of Eli Manning on the beach. Yes. Yeah. That's, that's what I strive to be. That's peak male performance right nice. there. Well, I think with that... The, the baby chest that you have, no <laughs> hair. I don't have any pec definition either. I don't. Well, that's good for all this. elasticity. I don't need it. Yeah, I think it's good for that. Yeah. Let's talk about the quarterbacks in the game. You and Pat know each other very well, yep. Patrick. Brock Purdy, obviously, brand new to the game. Do you talk to them? What are your thoughts on them? And how do you think about quarterbacks in the NFL right now? So many greats. There, there's some some talent in the NFL right now. Um, obviously, Brock and Pat are playing at top of level. I met him today. I'm a big fan of his. C.J. Stroud. Okay. He, oh, yeah. He through. can absolutely spin the ball. Yeah. And, and the way that it comes off his hands, he's so fluid. His mechanics are great. Um, he's impressive to watch. He really is. Do you still have the strongest arm in the league or no? I'd like to think so. Huh. How far can you throw it? And by I like to think so is yes. There you go. There you go. <laughs> okay, yeah, yeah. yeah okay. It was very humble of you. There you go. You said what? You think you throw 85 yards with a little, a tiny wind at your back. Tiny. And at elevation. At elevation. At, at Laramie. That, yeah, that's that could have been Hell down there, yeah. Coach. But, Man. um what was the thing that you wanted to ask about at Wyoming? Oh, yeah. Buckhorn Bar. Buckhorn Bar. Did you do the buck roll? What's that? Exactly. Uh, yeah, this is back in the uh, 20s. Have you, up, have you ever been up the stairs? World War II. Oh, f- falling down? <laughs> yes. No, on purpose. No, yeah, that's the 20s. Yeah. So that's go, we, go in there and have a couple whiskeys. Why? What? what? Maybe just, a couple of edibles. What? Whoa. You're yeah. not you, Josh. No, no. no. Stay away from the hell, Chuck. And you know how the door goes right out to the sidewalk, the street? So you roll down, try to survive the door, land on the street. You did it. And now you're you're an alum of the the buck. You roll buck down roll. the steps. Are you a stuntman? And you win a Super Bowl. <laughs> That's now you now that you steps? said that, coach. Everybody's gonna be doing it. Yeah. Well, so they, no, they, this they, is what they used still to be. Doing it. This is back when the Cowboys were tough. That's what. <laughs> that's back when the Cowboys. Were, to 70, I guess you're right. That's, that's right. That's right. Uh, Josh, have a great one. We appreciate you, and uh, hopefully we can see you this off season sometime. Sounds like plan. You're the best. Thanks, Josh. Appreciate Josh. it. Josh. Hey, Josh. Thank you, Woo. Josh. Safe is cool. Yeah, safe is cool. You told me star. You take it, it was a pond. Yeah, did you get you to keep it? Man. I, he didn't want us to get it, did he? No, not, not at all. Off season. He didn't want us to get it. So now what? The they got to reload this thing and he's got to go do another show with it? Yeah, they got no, that no. bank thing. You better you change, the, uh, wild, change the code wild now, right? Couple wild guys. Okay, yeah, two okay. Wyoming guys. Big stage in Super Bowl. Wow, look at you guys. Look at How that. about that? Uh, <laughs> hey, where you go, Josh? All right, Josh. Baby Josh. All right, see you, Josh. All right, go Subway. Good luck, Josh. How's the churro coming? I know. was it? Tell me. Jesus. Do it. Do it. Come on.
No, 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 I'll hold it. No, you gotta hold it for your boy. That's where you should let Chuck, yeah. Chuck, 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 He's an innovator. What? This man is an inspirational human. What? This man created something that we all got on board with. The founder of Gary V. Mon. Oh. What? Ladies Gary and v. gentlemen, Gary V. No That's way! So Gary! <laughs> yes! <laughs> Woo! You know we recovered Gary V. Mon? Let's go. And you know What's up, Gary? How you doing, buddy? Yeah. What's up? Yeah. What's we up? nailed it. We nailed it. What's up, man? How are you? What's up, Gary? <laughs> How are you? How are you? Here we fucking go, boys. Here we, Here we fucking, fucking go, go boys. Gary. Here we fucking go, boys. Chuck. I can hear everything. Can you hear? He's got a question. Perfect. Can you hear? Chuck does. Okay. Chuck. Er, I'm sorry, Gary. I don't know if you know this. <laughs> Gary. Yes. We're in on Gary Vimon. Yeah, bro. If I tell you 85 times a day, I get DMs with the card on your table. Yes. It is insane how much you guys are loved. No, Gary, that's not the case. No. And it's insane how much you just ate off that. <laughs> Cheek. <laughs> <I'm> <laughs> fucking hungry, that? Gary. Bro, you are really hungry. <laughs> oh, shit. Yeah. We've been out here for a while. We're all hungry, Gary. That, your, the, your hunger is what we inspire. I'm, I'm oh. hungry oh, in the macro. He's hungry <laughs> for food. Yeah, actually. You hungry. feed these dudes? Well, we've been here for four hours. I mean, I mean it's tough to get it in there. What, what we're allowed to bring in, what we're not allowed to have, it's a whole story. Four hours. Gary, yeah, we're doing it. That's, that's why people see the Gary Vimon on there. That's growing, right? Growing. Bro, I'm going to build a monster company on Be Friends. Be Friends, sorry. I've, no, I like we, how you call it. Honestly, all my friends now call it that because they like <laughs> you more than me. Well, Pokemon. Yeah. So I know it's you. Just, it's, in the, it's in the same realm, right? It's in the same kind of world, but your own take on it. Did my team send you the video that I sent you guys yet? I filmed it the other day. I don't think you got it yet. Okay, I can't no, wait right. for the surprise video yeah, coming out. The surprise video is I own Pat's best trading card. Single best one. What? Yep. Ooh. Really? What the is select it? one of one WWE card. I am now the owner. Did I sign it? Of the single best card ever made of you. Shit. Let's go. Yeah, I appreciate it. Damn. Hell yeah. Hang on. Let's clap that up, hey, Hawk. Yeah, let's Come on, Hawk. Come on, Hawk. Put Hawk. your hands. What, what, you know, Christ, he Hawk. got me a three-pack of Vimon for my birthday. I yes, I did. That. He did. I'm telling you, I'm a, I'm a fucking months. supporter of the Gary Vimon. That's because you're a crafty businessman. Yep. Bingo. You're obviously a media darling, but deep down, I don't see you the way they all see you. No. Oh. I see you as Ooh. an entrepreneur. Mm. I don't see you as a media mogul. Okay. I don't see you as a solid punter. What? Uh, I see Hall of Fame you. nominated twice, yeah. twice. Two time I, Hall of Fame nominated. I say nominated I see twice. you as an entrepreneur. Thank you. So I appreciate you're very that. good at it. That means a lot. We obviously are all following in your footsteps as one of the entrepreneurs who's really leading the way to teach other people. Thank you. What do you got going on next? Or what's this outgoing on your on your forehead? And are you making any of these commercials? You yes. have your hands in everything. We have everything. Vayner, Vayner, Vayner Media does have a commercial. Let's go. Which one? I'm not allowed to say. Ah, oh, Gary. Gary. Son. Little taste. His little nut. Do I have to That's tell anybody about corporate stuff? Have you not had your own Bridge. battles Bridge. with corporations? Buddy. We be, we're battle tested. Right? Uh -huh. We are battle tested. Battle -tested. So, we are battle -tested. If anybody should be empathetic that I can't disclose, it is y'all. When are you going to say it? Immediately afterwards, though? When of will course. we? Of course. I'll be fully in the bus. I'll, I'll we did it. That's all. That's all. Um, <laughs> Look, Vayner Sports is going well. Okay. Big shout out to AJ. By the way, you gave AJ, an, you said something nice about AJ that you've heard he's a nice man or something. Yes. That was huge okay. in our in our group chat. Ah. That was very nice of you. Okay. We're so, fucking in the Vayner. Yeah. But like, you know, Sauce Gardner, Aiden Hutchinson, Kirk Cousins. Yeah. Who's just sitting Dog. here. So Vayner Sports is going well. Vayner Media is going well. V Friends is going well. The only thing that's not going well. Jets, yeah. That's right. Oh. Yeah. And this has been a consistent theme of my life. Yeah. yeah. Uh -huh. Everything's good. Because I keep it simple. Mm -hmm. Even if the businesses aren't going well, mm -hmm. I don't care. As long as everyone's healthy, Pat. Bingo. Right? Mm -hmm. But the Jets. Yeah. It's a real problem. Yeah. And it's been... It's what been it last? Four fingers. plays this year. It was good. Four plays sick. until Aaron got hurt. And then you guys just punted on the year. How'd you feel about it? Fine. Who cares, suck? No, not who cares. Used to. But all these fans are delusional. They want you to trade for this and do that as if getting a journeyman in for a second 
is going to win this. Were the Jets going to win a Super Bowl? Flacco. With a yeah, they signed Joe Flacco. Joe Flacco. Nice. You bring Joe Flacco, Flacco Gary. Gary. As, did this crew not watch the Flacco game versus the Texans? Uh, you guys not watch? Ryan's. Yeah, yeah, Ryan's. Don't give me that crap. We got plenty of defense, too. Okay. We were not winning a Super Bowl, and I'm not giving up a fourth-round pick. To, uh, people are delusional. No. Yes, Pat. No. The world is delusional. Hawk agrees. Hawk's delusional. Oh, yeah, okay, okay, what do you think? Or next year, though? You know what they have to Super do. Super Bowl or bust, right? Of course. At least AFC Championship or bust, because then my hope is if Aaron feels like we were on the door, oh, yeah. that'll run it back. No, he said he's already playing. He already yeah, said yeah, he's playing. No, no, no. Years. I'm not talking about this upcoming year. I'm talking the year after that. Yeah, he's already said Locked signed. in, great. Yeah. So then, then well, we don't know if it's locked in. Okay, got it. But he has said it. Yeah. There. So it's, I, I believe it's a playoff win or bust, because if it's not a playoff win, then I think we're going to be in a little weird spot. And the reality is, again, this is a very educated crew. Uh, There's a lot of work to do on the offensive line. Yeah. But Elijah Vera Tucker has been hurt out for the year, the last two years in a row, so you can't trust it. But if he plays, he's at an extremely high level. Stud. Joe Tipman. Joe Tipman's a dog. Who's got your hair. Love is Joe a dog. Mm. Oh, I love that. So he showed a lot his first year. So we're three, which is, I don't say this lightly, we're three offensive linemen away. And another wide receiver. They're saying this draft very deep for yep. offensive linemen, especially left tackle. Connor has a question for you, Gary. Con Vader Sports. Yes. You guys signed Sauce. Yes. What is what is your guys' pitch like when you're going? Are you going to the draft to get these guys? Or are you getting them? You know, in during college, high not, school, year high school. You're like, how does that work? I like third grade. Okay. Okay. That's when the get brain's really developing. Sure. <laughs> That's when it's really going. Buy high. If it's a five star, it's literally as early as senior year of high school. It's college. Jeez, everything's, now, everything's different now than a, the way us boys grew up. NIL changed everything. So we're doing a ton of NIL for a lot of guys, which has been great because we, Vayner Sports, and there's an iconically great agents out there. We all know them. C.A. Wasserman. There's a lot of terrible ones. Too. There's, Rose and Haas. Fair, but there's, there's a lot of great ones. We, our big advantage is we are really good with economics off the field. Right, we really actually get guys marketing deals. I'm an actual businessman, not an agent who says I'm a businessman. And that really helps us. With NIL, these kids get to see it for real, not maybe that's what will happen. So you're able to build real relationships, so that's good. And so for, for the guys that really look at us, they are absolutely thinking about life after football. Look at this guy. Mm. This guy made more money today than he did in his professional career. Yeah. Entrepreneur. Hey, wow. Because there's a WWE event today. That's right. That's right. Let's go. Yeah. There's good, a lot of events happening today. Good day. Right? Yeah, pretty good day. Yeah, okay. I, don't, I don't know if I go gamble with Dana yeah, tonight. Might, go. Might might win. Win. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, pretty big day today. So that's what everybody's trying to aspire to be. This is the modern athlete right here. <laughs> no, but it's Pat, listen, I'm not going to. I just took my 70th milligram, okay? We're Pat, in hour four. You understand? Right I'm not giving you these accolades because I love you. It's because when I did this show, when it was first starting, sure. yeah. and I made the prediction that it was going to be a monster. Yes, you did. So I'm just here reinforcing my prediction. Yeah, this okay. Is selfish. This I'm is not good. being selfish. Uh, yeah, well, you, you took two sips of your Starbucks coffee that morning. <laughs> I remember it like it was yesterday, and you were very kind to us. And in, in return, I think we have tried. We're to real some, friends. Hey. Yeah. This we is are. our Oh shit. my God, this the V friends. Shit. The Gary Vmon is our shit. Who's the headstrong honey badger of this crew? Who's, uh, who's the most headstrong? Chuck Pagano. Yeah, of course. Right That's the head Legend. of the table right there. Legend. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. That's, a head, That's, That's right. the head of the table right there. Finish your story. Who's the hot shit hornet? Uh, uh, Hawker. That's AJ yeah. Hawk. <laughs> yeah, he's hot For shit sure. always. The humble hedgehog? That's... I don't think that's anyone in nope, this crew. Not no, not no humble go hedgehog. To I. I'm go to I. Go to I. Uh, iguana. Yeah, the intuitive oh, you, iguana is a real one. Beast. Yeah. Boom. Look at there that. we go. Look at that little that's goatee. Me. Yeah, that's me. I get it. Grow it out a little. Yeah, I got it. Right yeah. there. The hungry hippo, too, is another one. Bring no. It. Dog. Absolute dog. Bill. Yeah. The major moth. Hell yeah. Yeah. Love that. Moth. Hype horse. Ooh. Let's go Mojo to Mojo Mouse. Mojo Mouse. This one. You got to get into the hype horse. We got to go down. I don't know. That hard trooper seems to be a real yeah, but hang, hang out, Hawk. Oh, hang out, Hawk. Yeah. Hawk. Oh, God. How much AJ. is that hey, How much is that one? I've arrived, Mom. This AJ. is amazing. That's like five, 6000 Access token. Dollars? Yes. Uh, How many points is that one worth? Whenever we, If we're trying to beat oh, the in boss. The game, the, it's not in the game because it was a unique one. Five, six, that, if you own that <laughs> NFT, Sorry about you it. also got... 18 meetings with a group of other hangout hawks with me for an hour doing business consulting and stuff. And oh, my God. So there was yeah. value besides the collectible. AJ. So, Gary, let's Buy say it. my grandma has never heard of anything going on here. Yes. What What do you tell her? What is this? 
I say, Grandma, remember when you were a kid and all your siblings and cousins and friends? He has no idea. He, he's been trying to figure it out this whole no, time. I'm, I'm going to give it to you right now. I'm okay. curious. Hey, Grandma, curious what, what's cat. Grandma's name? Georgiana. Georgiana. Good remember name. when you were a kid and all the boys in the neighborhood would take Mickey Mantle rookie cards and put it into their bike so it sounded like a oh, motorcycle? Yeah, I did, that. Yeah, I did that. Or, or a can. And those were, Benito Santiago. those were worth hundreds of thousands of dollars and millions of dollars. Really? Today, there's another collectible that in 30 years people will understand. Instead of owning it physically, you're going to own it on the something called the blockchain, Grandma, which mm. I know you don't understand, but you didn't understand the internet 30 years ago either. True. And now you get that it's important. And that's how it is. How do you know how many to make? How well, many, like, to, to make it valuable? I'm sure you got Well, the Hangout well, Hawk, it's, there's only 18 of them, yeah. you asshole. But will there be more? He, no, no there'll never be more. That's, that's, that, that's oh, like comic geez. book number one. Again, one, first, one of one, WWE card. Where'd you, who'd you get that from? Where'd you get it? What is it? Real cheap. Nice. What? <laughs> Buy low. No, no, it was, a, it was a nice price, but I, oh, knew I, had, I knew I had to own it. Where's it from? It's now, by the way, it's now on my shelf. So now when you watch my content and my podcast, mm. there's a Pat McAfee wrestling one of can, one card over my Can you get that show. in Beat the Boss? Because we watch Beat the Boss. Beat the Boss yeah. is the best. You like it? Yes. Uh, you hammering four bottles of wine. That was fun. Oh, <laughs> oh my God. I was tuned in three hours. I watched three hours yeah. I was watching. I'm, I'm going to do that more often. Lost yes. Luca card. Yeah, yeah. Can, you guys are so busy and you actually work and you got family now and all this. Like a little one. It's all, you got to tell me what windows you can consume. I'll start doing content live. At the Beat time. the Boss. Yeah, we yeah, were in. Yeah. We were all that in. That was evening? Oh, yeah, yeah. That was at 8 o'clock. Oh, we were all done. in. Was eight awesome. to ten. My wife was watching through my phone on the other side. And uh, I think she even talks about me never. Like, I don't watch movies. Me neither. I don't watch shows. Nothing. I have ADD. Same. Beat the boss, bub. I was locked in. By the way. Ty right? was in there, too. Yeah. Uh, and I'll be in there every fucking night if you're doing it at 8 p.m. My I guy, that. I love you for that. Listen, that's what I felt when I first was on with you guys. This has been so fun to watch from afar. Come on. Honestly, I have so I'm so happy for you. Come on, mm. I we love appreciate you. you. Man. Who's gonna win? Who's gonna win the game? I know you got to win the Super Bowl. Win the Super uh, Bowl huh? I think the Niners are gonna win. The Niners are gonna be able to run the ball okay. on the Chiefs in a way that most people have not been able to. The Ravens went away from the run too early. Yep. You agree, Coach? Six six rushes. Crazy. Come on. Crazy. To running backs. I think I think they're gonna be able to run the ball enough to win in overtime. Hey. Clip this on Double? Monday Double? when I'm right. Okay. Niners in overtime. Single overtime? Single. Okay. How about the, the NFL being script there for Taylor Swift? What are you talking about? I think the NFL has been more scripted for you than Taylor Swift. Watch your mouth. Whoa. For <laughs> us. We get no handouts over here. We get sued by the NFL. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> uh, we appreciate you. You're the man. Keep leading. Keep doing it. Ladies and gentlemen, hell yeah. Love you too, yeah. Gary V. Hey, Gary. Thank you. Hey, Gary, thanks, man. Gary should dunk you. this. The guy's yeah. doing stadiums. Hey, you should dunk this. Was sweet. Yeah. Hey, Gary, safe. Gary. Gary, you should. Gary, Gary hey, you I don't know about a dunk. We need you to shoot one. that, though. Hold up. Dunk it. What if I just fouled you like you do? <laughs> oh, oh, finger roll. Oh, that was a finger from roll. Behind. Iceman. It won. D. Iceman. It won. What if you just say it Gary, That's... In my mind, I was going to go hack him. Because oh, of the video. Cool. Oh, oh, damn. Literally, as he was walking there, I was like, do I have enough energy right now? The body him real to hard. Sprint around this thing and just foul the shit out of him. Should have just gave me the nod. I would have done it. Could have put it right. through him, the brick. On, Bro, how about the Gary V mods? What? The we Hawk? What there do you mean, what? Ooh, thank, thank you. you. Oh, yes. baby. Nice. Yes. Yes. Oh, yes. Fearless, okay. We love that. Thank you. I'll try it. Oh, is this? <laughs> nice. I Ambitious, love I don't care. Hell yeah. <laughs> Very fucking go, boys. Go. Thank you. Hey, thank you, Here I'll we go, go boys. Much yeah. more like me right there. Yeah, the Algo. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, the Algo and have Gifted. What you got? Is, is that say lifted or gifted? Let's swap, let's swap <laughs> going out. Yeah, blue. Oh, I used to be so dedicated. Oh. Yeah. They're going to love me for my ambition. Damn right. Yeah. Yeah, they are. It looks sweet. Dedicated. You're dedicated, dude. Dedicated always, baby. This, so this is like uh, big. fearless. I got a massive dome. Is this gonna fit, AJ? Oh, uh, look at oh, look at the look. face on the side, dude. <laughs> Demon, Demon mode. Right. Sorry about it. Let's go. Yeah. All right. Ladies and gentlemen, it is time now to be joined by a one of one legend, icon. Not only in video games, but brought video games to real life. Michael Vick. Wow! Oh! Is this you come in? Did you yeah. do this? Yeah. Yeah, I believe so. All right. Is it is it is it the Mike Vick or is it a different Mike Vick? Oh! oh yeah. One man. and only. It is. Man. Hell yes. Hey. Okay. All right. Hell yeah. Sorry about it. How you doing, man? 
All right, Michael Fick brought me a new hat. Good, Sorry. what's good? good Sorry. Yes. Michael, what's up, babe? Good to see you. Thank you. What's up, Mr. Vick? Still ambitious. Oh, fantastic. How are you? Let's go. Yeah, oh, yeah. And this is your headset right here. Hey, you. Hey. Oh, it's not going to be able to go. You're going to have to go oh, around the back. Go around the back. Let's go yeah. around the back. Yeah. You have to go around the back, I think. Oh, they put that all on day. Oh, you got it. Boom. Little, little promotion. There we Boom. go. Hell little yeah. promotion right now. Okay, so okay. You, you're here with the Super Bowl? I'm here with everybody. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody. I'm here doing a little work with Nike, and you know, it's, it's a good time. Okay, so time. let's talk about, first of all, you tweet our show uh, all the time. Yeah. As soon as we found out that you were uh, a supporter of our program, we we're all very excited because you're Michael yeah. fucking Vic. Yeah. You need yeah. to know that. Well, you know, I was on the show a couple years ago. Bingo. So I've, I've always followed, you know, what's been going on. Which I think it was me, you, and AJ. Yes. Mm. And, uh, you know, sorry for... If it was somebody else's a couple years ago, but okay. yeah, man. Yeah, and all white people look the same. <laughs> uh -huh. Yeah, so we know. I will say this: we, <laughs> we we had a great time. We had a great time, and uh, you know, I, I thought the questions was was valid, and uh, you know. Well, we know it was a lot good about energy. You. Yeah, we've known a lot energy. about you, and like if um, when you, we asked Dan Marino this question yesterday, we said, Dan, do you think you could throw for six thousand yards in this particular uh, mode of the NFL? What did he say? He said, Yeah, I don't have to prove it. So yeah, I could throw for <laughs> seventy five hundred yards if I wanted to. Basically, <laughs> that, was, that was a good answer. Yeah, exactly. But for you. The RPO game, yeah, and when offensive linemen are allowed to like basically get down the field, and then you can still pull it, and with your flip of the wrist, flick of the wrist, like if you were in this modern NFL, you would be the product. Super Do you dangerous. see that? Super dangerous. I mean, I would say this: I would have to end up in the hands of the right coach. Hmm. Like, coach, you would have to make sure I got the right offensive coordinator to make sure that I can be me. Yeah. See, that was, that was the great thing about Dan Reeves when I first came into the National Football League. You know, in the time he had just coached Dan, uh, John Elway for years. Yep. Um, John and myself, we was different. Yep. But he had to re reinvent the wheel a little bit. You know, I got a guy who's a four three guy, super dynamic dual threat. What do I do? And so he, you know, co our coach was calling like quarterback isolations, quarterback draws, like allow me to be me, which was wasn't the norm. But, man, we was doing it in 2002. And to do it now when it's more spread out. Oh. Yep. And the rules. I'm breaking records. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think so, too. AJ's got Coach, we're going to get a couple rings. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> AJ's got a question. Hey, what do you think about this matchup, Mike? Obviously, Patrick Mahomes, people say, oh, I can't pick against Patrick Mahomes, how great he is. Brock Purdy, we've talked about it a little bit on the show. I don't think he gets the credit he does deserve. Like, what do you think about that matchup? And some of the Brock Purdy kind of slander, thinking he's a game manager and not that special. What do you think of yeah, that? Yeah, well, I don't know why it would be any Brock Purdy slander because, um, you know, it's been two years consistent of the same type of quarterback play good quarterback play now you know it's going to be some games mm -hmm. we know as players former players and coaches that it's you're not going to play every game perfect out of a 16 game season when it was 16 games i'm like okay it's you know every quarter we got four games if, if i screw up one game uh, had a bad game, one game, which I don't expect to do, but you know, it happens. You got to give yourself and, uh, some. Then that's okay. Yeah. You know, that's okay. Um, so I think with Brock Purdy and what he's been able to do uh, in the course of two seasons, and I look at consistency, um, has been remarkable. Um, he's playing in the, in, in the biggest game that some of us have yet to play in or didn't have a chance to play in. So um, that doesn't surprise me. Like I say, you got to have the right coaches got to have the right people around you and then you could just be you and and Patrick has that it's been it was been an up and down season for the Chiefs but you know they closed it out beating some of the best teams in the league on the road um, they found their identity it feels yeah, like they're yeah. running the ball more yeah. Patrick doesn't have to do as much yeah. that's nice too you talk about uh Reeves adjusting Dan Reeves, yeah. it's like Andy Reid has adjusted this year with this offense turning into what they are with the defense yeah. as well it's beautiful yeah everybody get mad at me and say I'm being biased and you're always rooting for Kansas City because you know Patrick and you know Andy personally. I'm like, no, I know what type of strategy they're going to come in with. Like, I watched them against Baltimore, and Baltimore, what, aggressive defense? You know, they came out throwing screens and a lot of short passes and just dinking and dunking. We, we haven't seen anybody do that. Everybody's trying to run the ball, 
and stretch the field. It's not going to happen. You got to take your time against a team like Baltimore, and they took their time. You know, the first half was was outstanding. Second half, Baltimore caught on to it because they, you know, it's a, it's a great unit. Yeah. You know, so they're gonna yeah. make, they're gonna make the necessary adjustments, but uh, it was too late. And yeah, Chiefs case, defense. They got defense. Yeah, he got defense yep. too. Yeah, so now is... we got, you know, what I'm saying we got stalemates all over the place. Oh, so people say you're biased towards Reed. All right, now that I know that in this interview, we will I address am, everything I that am. you say going forward. <laughs> Ty's got a question for you, Mike. Yeah, Mike. Uh, I'm fairly certain I read somewhere that you've picked up chess big time yeah. over like the past several years uh are we getting anywhere towards like grandmaster level well and uh, as a quarterback you think most guys like most quarterbacks would they be better at chess or checkers that's a great question um I, to answer your first question I'm, I'm getting better getting working towards the mastery uh stage i've got some wins over the last couple of years and i'm playing on my phone and i'm playing on medium and I'm losing more than I'm winning, but when I go play somebody else, I'm whipping them. So, I, it's, so it's oh, so there's like in real life, yeah, it has yeah, to be yeah, a little yeah. bit no of an doubt. aura. No doubt. Yeah. The AI. Yeah. 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 What are you playing? Close yeah. Sicilian? Is that a is that a um, move? I, I can't. Let me pull my phone out, Pat. Um, I don't know shit about it except for that girl that yeah, took those drugs that tripped and then she saw. <laughs> yeah, Beth Queens Harmon. What's her name? Yeah. Beth Harmon. Queen's Gambit. Yeah, yeah. yeah. that's the only yeah, thing yeah. I know about chess is Queen's yeah, Gambit. Yeah, yeah. No, she was good. Dog. Um, you're trying to get that queen, I think. That's the, the you yeah, gotta get the yeah, queen. You're trying to, uh, or trap that king. Yeah. Take the queen, trap the king. You know, and then you got something. I think quarterbacks would be really, really. I would love to have a game of chess with with Peyton or Drew, okay, or Patrick. You know, or Jaden, just to see, you know, what how they think, how they, you know, because chess you got to be two or three moves ahead without a doubt, like because it, it's gonna be some time in between where you go. You're gonna be watching your opponent thinking, he's gonna be watching you and what even when you make your moves, you just running through all these scenarios. And that was the cool part about playing quarterback. You know it was gonna be a couple scenarios at the line of scrimmage, coach, that um, you was gonna have to really like have to decipher in like twenty-four seconds and maybe like sixteen seconds by the time you get to the line of scrimmage. And then you gotta go. You gotta make a you gotta make the right read, good decision, right decision, keep it moving. So I love that part of, I think that's why I was a better quarterback when I came back and I was with Andy, because I learned to play chess while I was away. Wish you would have played chess before. I wish I'd have played chess on the field when I was younger, because once I learned to play chess, I'm like, this is like football. Mm -hmm. Like, you got to make the right decisions at the right time. If not, something get taken away. Yeah, but the little bit difference is, and I know the queen can go all different directions. Oh, yeah, she did. You were the only the queen that, <laughs> we'll talk about the chess piece. Yeah, right. we get it. Yeah, yeah, you were the queen. Uh, yeah. Hmm. Mm. I don't know how to describe this. The king of queens. No, that makes yeah, you were the king of Kevin James. You were yeah. the Kevin, you were really? the king Kevin of Kevin James. Yeah, because yeah, you're the only I'm one control, go all the way. So. I'm controlling the board. Yeah, well, of course. Yeah. Exactly. Anywhere. Of course. Exactly. Yeah, because a lot of those quarterbacks were just the the horse one that goes in the L position. Oh, that's the horse is uh, dangerous. The knight. Now. The knight, yeah. There it is. That was you like Peyton. Stuff. Yeah, you know your stuff. Peyton was like an L. It just kind of like, this is the only move I can do. You know what I mean? <laughs> I can only do this. And then the pawn just. <laughs> pawn yeah. stink. Just well, not really mobile. Line not really mobile. Kind of just but, lets. But the pawn can turn into a queen if you can push it down the board. Bingo. Yeah, and you need good development and good coaching, obviously. Yeah. It takes some time. Yeah, get it to the finish line. Yeah. And the we king, won't, we won't king kind of spoiled old. Yeah. You know, he can't really move much. Right. But queen, you were the only one there for a while that was just moving all different directions. Yeah. And then you took that one football and he threw it out of the stadium. What yeah. was that one? The vortex. Oh, the vortex that was so ball. sweet. That was so sick. That was oh. real, by the way. People oh, 100%. Oh, yeah. I, we know. We know. We know. We we know. know. Oh, Mike, come on now. Yeah. Yeah. Obviously. Have you, have you tried to throw the Russell Wilson dorsal fin ball? Oh, don't. No. No. Um, I think my no. too. Well, Russell got a big hand, so I, no, that, that, that ball is catered to like Russell's like hand. I don't think it's scared to aim, but they, they say it's actually it's the hard to football throw. of all. Yes, yeah, possible. Yeah, yeah. Impossible to catch. I mean, both. Yeah, it's not, what is it football for? Yeah. Trying to throw it or catch yeah. it? Can't do both. Yeah, I, yeah. I, I, Probably, I think you can it. calibrate it to left-handed, though. Really? Yeah. True. That yeah. might have been the issue. So that back. Right. I think Russ made a lot of money with that ball. No, no way. I don't. No, no way. I mean, we yeah. hope so. Russ don't take it. We hope so. Shout out to Russ. has <laughs> <laughs> <So. laughs> got a question for you. We <laughs> hope he did. Hey, but you obviously had a phenomenal career on the field, and traditionally a lot of quarterbacks go into the booth. You've been killing it in the booth the last few years as well. Is that something you saw as a player that maybe that was going to be your future? Or is that just something that happened post-football? Uh, it just happened. It's 
not something that I've seen as as a player. I know Andy, one time we was having a conversation and he was like, maybe you should pursue a, a TV career when you're done. Uh -huh. I'm going to introduce you to Chris Berman and, and John Madden and some <laughs> of those guys. So I got an early introduction. Um, but, you know, at the time, I'm still thinking Super Bowl. Yeah. I'm trying to get it. Coach, why are you even talking about... <laughs> I'm like, Coach, why are you even talking about post-career? But see, that's the... You know, that's the father figure. That's the mentor. Playing chess. You know, chess. Yeah, playing chess and set me up for something that I can't see. Yeah. Um, and then it actually happened. So when I was actually in coach, coach's training camp interning um, to become a coach when I got the call from Fox. And, and so when I Oof. when I went in and told Coach. You could be happened, a coach? I could. Um, you like that schedule? That's a lot of time. You made the right choice. Yeah, I, mean, I, I, I wouldn't say that I wouldn't want to, because, Coach, I love pouring into kids. Man. Yeah. I, do a, I do camps every year, and the one thing I hate is to see them come and go. We get two days together. I get to watch a 10-year-old quarterback or 13-year-old quarterback make some mistakes early and by the afternoon correct them and be kind of hitting his little spots. And I'm mm -hmm. like, wow, I, mean, I wonder what it would be like if I had him for two months or two years. You felt the fulfillment of it. Yeah, yeah. man. It's, it's so fulfilling. Uh, I still get the same fulfillment on Sundays when we get up and and uh, and we talk about we talk about ball and I still love to talk about it during the week and I, I, I'm i infatuated with the game. Like, I, I loved it as a kid, still love it now. Chuck's got a question for you. So, this game coming up, from a quarterback uh, perspective, what are the challenges for each of these? Pat Mahomes facing the 49er defense, looking through their eyes, and then vice ver versa, Brock Purdy versus that Steve Spagnuolo. We've been hearing a lot about the Kansas City defense, the scheme, especially on obvious pass downs type of pressures that they're going to see. What do, you, what do you think matchup wise and what's the biggest challenges for each of these guys? Yeah, I, I think for Kansas City, I think you're I think they found something against Baltimore in maybe the last couple of weeks. And it was, you know, we don't have to stretch the field. We don't have to send uh, Rashid Rice deep, but we don't have to have a Tyreek Hill to, you know, I, we can play within ourselves and kind of make the defense move a little bit, um, make them recognize what we're doing and just, I'm not saying play, play it safe, but just play it smart. And, uh, you know, I think that being said, they're going to have a game plan to, force Fred Warner and those guys to, you know, they, they're going to have to cover. They're going to have to cover, and, you know, we know we got Bosa and, you know, some great pass rushes for the 49ers, so Andy likes to negate that, you know, so whether it's chips and thumps or whatever you got to do, you know, backs setting the edges, it's, it's, it's going to be a lot of that. Uh, I think for, for Brock Purdy, it's going to be tough. Steve Spagnola has done a great job over the last five to six years um, with the Kansas City Chiefs, and I think he's studied under, I don't know if he studied under, he's always been a great coordinator, but it's a lot of stuff that um, Jim Johnson used to do back in, day, back in the day coaching. So it, it, it poses problems. It, it shocked me when they um, gave Lamar the problems that he gave Lamar. It wasn't a lot of freebies. It wasn't a lot of open space. And guys was covered up. You know, he kind of had to make um, plays just improv -ing. And so Brock is going to have to deal with that, that pressure that they bring from everywhere. And even when I played against the, you know, Spags and played against Jim, it, it's just really kind of confusing sometimes. You know, just never know where guys are coming from. Yeah. Um, and, and so Brock is going to have to really be able to get the ball out really, really quick. Last question, Aaron. You brought up Lamar there. Um, you obviously the only human that can kind of speak, you know, from his perspective. Do you think the narrative that he let the people get into his head so much about being a running back that affected him against the Chiefs whenever there was, like, wide-open running lanes and he just wanted to throw to win? Do you think that's something that Lamar thinks about? No, I don't think he think about that, Pat. I think what happened with the Baltimore Ravens was that they got away from their game plan and what made them so great. How many times did we see them run the football in the first half? Once, twice? I think oh. it's six total. Six second yeah. half, yeah. once, twice. I mean, Lamar was just dropping back every play and throwing. I don't even think Dan Marino could have did that against the Kansas City Chiefs defense. you got to have some balance. And even when the run game is not working, you still have to run the football because it sets up what? Play action. AJ, 
he still yeah. might bite on that player. Sucked up. Get yeah, sucked up. Still might get him sucked up. It's still suck I might get him to suck up. Yeah, oh, get him yeah. sucked up. So, so I'm going to, yeah. you know, I'm going to give you this, you know, this, um, this look and make you think that certain things are coming when it might not be. And, man, I, so I just think Lamar, you know, they tried to put it on Lamar. Go win it. Go be the MVP. Go show Patrick Mahomes and Andy Reid that you you got it. And and that just wasn't the route. They had they needed to run the football and then when it's time to hit a pass or running lanes open up, you take advantage of it. Everybody was out of rhythm. They was all out of rhythm. Yeah, I think so. Can you still run or are you slow? <laughs> I can still run, but every time I take off three quarter speed, I pull a hamstring. Yeah, damn. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah man. That's so gonna it's happen. Like, it's, it's over. It's over. <laughs> it's working, gonna happen. Working out now, squatting a little bit. How are you basketball? You gonna get basketball shot? Right there. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. From here? Def- yeah. With that hat on? Not with this hat on. Oh. No, okay. I'm gonna hit that. Yeah, yeah. That, I was a little bit worried about what I'm you're gonna hit that, do. Man. All right. So if you make a ball, I can hook it. If hey, I make a ball, there's lights up here though. Okay. I watch. That. Watch it, the environment. Now, the hat, are you sure you're going to keep the hat on? Take the hat off. Smart. Go backwards. Smart idea. It's for the people. It's for the people? Yeah. All right, if I make this, then what? If you get a, if it's a swish, 40 people, $500. Nice. Hold up. Ooh. If it's just in, 25 people. Mm. Okay. So, like, if you just make it, like, bank it, or if it, and it falls, 25 people. That's still pretty good. It's still a lot of people. But if you splash that thing. 40 people, 500, that's 20 grand. A whole lot of people. Just like that, just like that, just like right here. You know bum, what I mean? Bum, 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 I, like, bum, bum. I like helping people, man. Hell yeah. I Let's can go. help them just with this one shot. One shot, one opportunity. Don't miss your chances, blow. I just got nervous. Yep. Oh, oh, oh that make me so mad. Oh, no. Mike. That make me so mad. Damn, Mike. Oh, oh no. That was him. I I mean, a bitch. It's all the way down. Try it. Oh, my God. Let's try it, Pat. Some things aren't meant to be. Yeah, you know, somebody gonna somebody gonna sit in the same seat and knock one down. Puka did, yeah. Puka Nakua, cool. yeah. Oh, Puka Nakua, cool, man. Yeah, he took four shots though before he took. Yeah. One. Oh, okay. He got some practice in. Mm. If you were to shoot another one, you think you're making it? Oh, definitely. Only swish opportunity though. Only swish opportunity. Okay, don't even need like a basic make. No. If Only. We were, hey. Hold up! Hold up! Hold up! Whoa! 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 whoa, whoa. Only swish. Only swish. Yeah, I mean, I was close. Yeah. I was close. Last all right. All right, if Michael Vick swishes his shot here, come on. 40 people will win $500. Do this just Here's like he used to do you know, to you. Gotta, we never beat him. You know, you pump like Where, Virginia Tech? Yeah. Yeah, yeah they, were, they were dancing on your faces, Did too. Did we ever beat you? Maybe when you had the ankle. At the U? Yeah. When we, when you I came ankle. down our place. It's the only time we beat yeah. you. You had an ankle. Did you go out there? You, know, you couldn't finish that, that game, right? No, I didn't finish, Coach. I got lucky that morning. <laughs> that afternoon. Oh, hell. <laughs> That was a good team. Remember though. we zeroed, zeroed you up in yeah. Virginia oh, Tech, man. and you broke at line of scrimmage. And I, had, co- I was telling. I didn't think anybody name. could catch you. There was one dude that ran you down that day. Who was it? Ed. Ed caught me. He caught you. That don't surprise me. Future Hall of Fame. Hall of Fame. He's in the Hall of Fame. Yeah. No, he's in. He's in. He's in. Oh man. Hold on. You got caught though. I didn't know you got moving fast. I didn't know you got caught though. Yeah, I got caught. Changes. I had a I had a bum ankle. Yeah, you're lucky you weren't a punt returner. Oh, thank God. You know what I mean. You and me in the open field, Vic. Mm. Oh, I'm going to ride down. I'd have ran right, right. past him. No, <laughs> I'm going to ride down right in there. All right, Vic, you switch this. 40 people will win $500. All they'll have to do is repost this and say something nice to somebody. It's really a beautiful thing. Oh, yeah. It's a beautiful thing. What's going in. Spread of joy. Come on. For the people, Michael Vic. Oh. Oh, that's oh, oh this guy sucks. Bonus ball, bonus ball, bonus ball, bonus ball, bonus ball, bonus ball, bonus ball. Yeah, it's got to at least touch the rim. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That wasn't even a shot. Hey, was that a swish? I mean, we can't. That was a good shot. That was a good shot. That was a good way to get out of here. That was a good way to get out of here. That was a good way to end it. We all win. Hey. Thank Shout you, man. Noggin boss. Thank you, sir. Use your noggin to be a boss. Absolutely. Oh, yeah. well, shout out to Noggin boss. Shout out to Michael Vick. You're the man. Ladies and gentlemen, Michael Vick. Yeah, yeah. Mike. Michael. Oh, it's very kind of you to stop by. Dude, is this your hat? Got to be. Hey. Dude, just jacked. Hey, Still it. jacked. Yeah. Absolutely jacked. Flat Hey, what, 40 right now. What do you think? Actual. <laughs> oh, it'd be faster than that. How old are you? How old are you? How old are you? 43? 
four six. Four six. All right, sweet. Right, Slow. Hey, appreciate you guys. Thank you. Michael. 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 Hey, great, great idea. There you go. Hey, no problem, man. Thank you, Mike. Hey, oh, yeah, Mike. thank you, Michael. I um, I ate that? half a foot of cookie. How was it? Wow, was it good? Pretty good. Had to be good. I'm starving. What Come are you on. dipping it? You dipping it in something? Yeah, no, I wasn't dumping it. I had half back there plus a whole pretzel. Those are good. Yeah, pass that. The pretzels. I was almost done with. It. I've, eat, I've eaten probably about eight inches or so. Well, Pretty good. Well, maybe, maybe a little more. Is that right? <laughs> gotta relax. That's awesome. Uh, before we get out of here, we gotta shout out somebody that has been sitting right over here from Boston, I believe. Hell yeah. Um, the name is Mark Fucarillo, oh. I believe. Mark Fucarillo, if I'm saying it accurately, right? Yes, you are, Pat. Okay, you hear that? Okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Are there? Your cousin from Boston. Yeah, we love that, Mark. Uh, Boston Marathon bombing survivor who is now raising money to make the world a better place and awareness and also absolute dog. He was talking to me earlier. It was just picking up his leg and just swinging it around. Hey, what a hero, bro. Let's Hell go. Yeah. Thank you. Thank Let's you. go. Obviously, we watched a documentary about the Boston bombing. Yeah. I, impossible to know what it was actually like. From that moment to now, life's just been a whirlwind and just trying to make the place a, little, a world a little better place or what? Oh, man. God has opened up many doors for me. I've been blessed. Okay. And right now, you're raising money and um, awareness for the... Mobility Awareness Resource Community, the Mark Network 2.0. It's a free app to download. Okay. What is it? It's an app where people can engage with people struggling with the same situation. Amputation, spinal cord injuries, Parkinson's. When you get that new diagnosis, it's someone to encourage you, motivate you, and provide opportunity as well as resources. Okay, that's awesome, yeah, that's by the way. Um, for you, it's right leg, left, what is it, what, what happened to you? So when I got blown up, I lost my right leg instantly through the knee, so I'm above the knee, amputee, left leg, salvaged limb, uh, three and a half years of recovery, I have shrap metal in my heart, and a few other things, 80% of my body's burnt. But look at you now. Living life. Fuck them. We yeah. appreciate the hell out of you, man. Yeah, I appreciate yeah. you, buddy. Way to go, Mark. Okay, so how can we learn more about this or help out? Um, so in the Apple and Google store, it's downloadable, it's free, create a profile, uh, just share the, you know, share the message. It's, I visit people in the hospital and they always feel alone and we're trying to let people not feel alone. So www.marcmarcnetwork.world, you can find out some more information there. And we can donate, I assume, to help out the cause? Is there any way uh, to do that? Yeah, there is. There's plenty. Um, throughout the website, you can get it on the website or on the app. I think there's a, um, pretty... My technical guy over here. I wish he could fill it in more on that. He's I holding a. He's got a. Sweet you see what he's got on his phone? Yeah. I mean, that is. Oh, that, that is still that is sick. <laughs> yeah, look up at that. The guy that holding thing. the. Yeah, look at Scorsese <laughs> with that thing. <laughs> sweet ring. That is awesome. Hey, I had to pay seventy-five grand for my knee, so you know. Had to steep out somewhere. Well, that's bullshit. I feel like somebody else should have paid for that. And I appreciate your mindset, dude. Thank you for yeah, allowing us to life. spread the word. And we will certainly help you continue yeah. to do your thing. I appreciate it, Pat. Thank you very much, buddy. Hey, hey. nice to meet you, Pat. Bye -bye. Bye -bye. Hey, all right. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, Mark Fucarillo. Yeah, boy. Hell yeah, Mark. Mark. That was awesome. What a cool Still, guy. Jay Jones wow. played that guy in the movie. Really? Oh, yeah. In that, the one that I watched? Uh, right. No, that was the Wahlberg one. Okay. That different one, different one. Um, ladies and gentlemen. Wow. Yes. Oh, yes. Yes. I don't oh, know how to pronounce it. Holy I shit. Don't, yeah, you're right. I don't know what it's pronounced as. My I don't, guys. I don't know how it's pronounced. Say your name. Okay, uh, Say your joining name. us now, the general manager of the Houston Texans. Nick Casario. Casario. Yeah. Casario? Casario. Oh. Ben said. Tom Brady said Sussario. He, he yeah. doesn't know. Yeah, we'll have a long conversation with him about that, but that's okay. Yeah, let him have it. Let him have it. GM of the Houston Texans. Uh, so what you've been able to do over the last year with a rookie head coach and a rookie quarterback, and obviously no other pieces were made, just those two, yep. the only change, now is going to give unrealistic expectations to every other team in the league whenever they're down. Could you have fathomed that this quickly the culture would have turned like that with D'Amico and CJ seemingly? That's the way the NFL works, right? The expectations go through the roof. But no, I think, you know, we're very fortunate and excited about the opportunity in front of us. I think it all starts with people. We got a lot of great people starting with D'Amico. I mean, you guys have talked to D'Amico. You guys have talked to CJ and Will. I mean, they're great people. D'Amico, I mean, can't say enough about the job that he did this year, who he is as a person, how authentic he is, the way the players respond to him, the way his energy permeates the entire building. It starts at the top and it trickles down, and it's our responsibility to support you know, him 
and the players and just give them the resource they need. And, you know, all the credit goes to the players and the coaches for the work that they put in this year. Hey, thank you for taking time to talk to us right now. You bet. Uh, this is awesome that you're doing this. So there was, and the boys are going to have questions because yep. we've covered your team. Yeah. I don't know if you've got to hear it. I know, hey, we got blinders on and shit. We've talked a lot about your you team. You want to talk to me? I, you just talked to The Rock, so I don't know how I fall in Pretty cool. order. The Rock actually that. got booked on our show by The Rock. Right yeah. right so that, that, was, uh, that was a cool moment there. <laughs> but there was, a, there was a C2 test during this last draft process for C.J. Stroud. When did you know? Now, granted, the Bryce Young hype was happening before you, so you didn't know. At what point did you know C.J. Stroud was the right guy? And what was all that shit going into the draft? How, how do you kind of compartmentalize all that? Yeah, it's twofold. So I think sometimes there's narratives that get created for whatever the reason, and it's, it's not fair to the players. And honestly, it's not fair to the companies involved either because I think they're actually a pretty reputable company. have done a lot of work in a lot of different industries. So... Again, what we have to do is just sort through information and just figure out, like, all right, what's the right information, what's the accurate information, make our own assessment. Because in the end, we can rely on all these, this data, all these other sources. But in the end, we're the ones that have to make the decision. And when the player comes in our building, we have to understand what we think we're getting in the player. So I would say we went through March, and then as we got into April, and then we had, you know, CJ in the building. We had a lot of people in our building. And the more time we spent with him, the more I would say he's – He's very confident and self-assured, and he believes in himself. And I would say he's very he, – he can – again, some people might not be able to handle that, right, when you have a self-assured, self-confident player, but he cares about winning, he cares about being great, and he cares about work, and he wants to be coached. And he, there, he just had something about him. When you sit in a room like this, we brought him in. When we do our visits – we actually put them in a room, like there's 30, 40 members of the entire staff. So you kind of get to feel for what you're going to deal with on a day-to-day basis. And there's other players. And the way he handled himself, I mean, it's not an easy environment to be in, right? We try to put him in some uncomfortable situations. But I would say he's unapologetically who he is in himself. And that's real. And it's awesome. And I think you saw that. And look. You guys know, I mean, you guys have been in the locker rooms. Players know. Players are smart. They know what it feels like. Darius has been in AJ. Been, I mean, you know what it's like. So when a guy walks in, don't try to be anything else other than who you are because that's good enough. And I would say what CJ has is damn good enough. And, you know, I think we all reaping the benefits of that. Yeah, hell yeah. We are his fans as well because mm-hmm. getting a chance that's to watch him has been remarkable. I'm happy to hear that about the, him showing up and just always being himself, being something that you take into consideration whenever you're trying to pick somebody because it feels like the more and more bullshit is being used for why people are drafted and not drafted. That seems to make sense over there. d oh, yeah. got a question for you. So uh, speaking on that, I had a chance to spend some time, a lot of time with Drake. May um, yesterday, and when you speak about uncomfortable environments, it was golf, so it was pretty comfortable. But some other things you see him show up, you see him how he reacts, how he interacts with you know his family and other things like that. How much does that weigh in into that decision? Obviously, you're drafting the franchise guy, talent is one thing, but you're sitting there to two pick. You know, you got AR there, you got Levis there, you got all these guys there. How much does that factor into that decision as the decision maker? Yeah, DB, everything. You factor everything in because yeah. that is emblematic of who they are. Yeah. So the way they were raised, who they are around, what they believe in, what's important to them, how they interact with their teammates, how they are on the sideline during the course of the game. Do they handle their emotions? Can they? So we're looking at everything, but who they are as people, in the end, this is a people business. Yep. Like we can say all whatever we want to say, but it's a people business. You want to get the right people with the right mindset, and you want them to be – who they are, and I think the thing about D'Amico, that's the thing about our building, the players can be who they are. We're not gonna force them to be a certain way. They just be who the hell you are. Yep. That's gonna be good enough, but I would say how you were raised, where you come from, what were your circumstances, that's part of our responsibility to understand that, and you can't use something against a, pl- a player if yeah. that's what it is. So we have to figure out, okay, that makes sense, and in the end, like I said a little bit earlier, are you comfortable with that, or are you not? And then ultimately, you gotta make a decision, and again, Coach has been in a draft room as well. Like, yep. You're not going to be – it's a 50-50 proposition, right? So even if you think you're right and you know what you're getting, 
there's so many other things that come along with it that you don't know how they're going to react or respond. So we're there to help, we're there to support, we're there to nurture, we want them to succeed, and that's all we can really do. But you, to your question, like you have to, you look, you factor everything in. That's yep. part of our job and responsibility. Caring about culture is a big deal. Yep. You know, like caring about, and seemingly, you guys down there got everybody that's like a Texan. Like you have yeah. a culture and identity. D'Amico has it, and the boys absolutely love it. Go ahead, Tony. Yeah, building off that, we saw you on the uh, sidelines pregame national championship, oh, yeah. getting eyes on all the boys. Um, like, do you, can you draft someone off of just tape, or do you have to meet them in person to make sure that they do fit your culture, or is, how does that work? Yes, <laughs> yes yeah. and yes. So everything is kind of a part of the evaluation. So what you ultimately, how they play on the field is important, but I think the one thing that you have to, we're all learning is, look, when they get back, when we get them, they're almost starting from scratch. So sure. what happened in there, it's a credit to them. No one can take it from them. When they come in the building, all right, then we kind of have to restart and reset a little bit. So you're trying to get them in as many environments, many opportunities. You see them play. Are they at an all-star game? You can visit them in the combine. You bring them in the building. You go work them out. You, there, maybe there's some other things that you do with them to see. And you're looking for consistency across you know, different you know, layers of it. Or do they act one way here and then they go over there? I mean, I was in, I've been in a building. This happened in New England a couple of times. Oh, yeah. Had a player. one way with a coach. All right, then he's in the dining room. Uh -huh. And a staff member says, well, this guy, it's like, wait a minute. Like, are you getting consistent behavior on a day-to-day -day basis? So, again, that's part of our job and responsibility. It's not we're trying to play gotcha. We're just trying to say, what do we have? Are we comfortable with it? Do we believe in it? And it's going to be good enough. Why don't you get out of the AFC South? <laughs> everything I'm hearing, right? You yeah. know what I mean? Like everything yeah. there like makes sense. This all seems like common sense. Rude. Yeah, we should take into how he's treating like the kitchen staff versus how he's treating everybody else. That might be an indicator. How he yeah. treats the Pat McAfee staff when he sure. comes on the show. Like, uh, that's yeah. going to be important. Uh, that shouldn't matter. But do, does it suck that you're in the Colts division? <laughs> do, you, do you think about that? You know, because I'm thinking about the other way around. Like, it's not great that C.J. Stroud is only going to get better. No. It's not great that D'Amico Ryans is only going to cultivate the culture even more. Like, I don't love that. And, uh, yeah, you ever think about, like, trading yourself? Sure. <laughs> you ever think about doing That's that? That's not up to me. That's up to ownership. So they want to ship <laughs> me somewhere else. So we've had many battles in the AFC South, but I would say, in all seriousness, what the Colts have done, they've done a great job with the program. I thought Shane did a great so, job this year. Jags, too. I mean, we got Trevor Lawrence is young. It's a competitive division. I think young. it's probably more competitive and young. And Look, this league is littered with good players and good coaches. I mean, that's the reality of it. So you can go on down you know, rosters, divisions. It's competition. And what are you doing on the margins to maybe put yourself in a position? Because the league is designed, everybody is probably going to lose six or seven games a year, so, right? So can you kind of put yourself to me have a few less? But it's so damn competitive. There's too many damn good players, and there's too many damn good coaches. So, you know, again, we have a lot of respect for uh, the competition. And each year is going to be different. And... What happened this year is great, but nobody can take that from us, but we're kind of starting over here, you know, for 2024 season. We're so thankful that your team and you have been so good to us. We appreciate you. I've heard you had a take on WWE. <laughs> All right, he does. Here we go. Really? I, I, it is a story. Yeah, I'm a Rock fan. was right here. Rock was right here. What do you want to say? You want you want a Cody Rhodes oh, cry, baby? Uh, no, I look. I, I don't. I'm not part of the casting. Uh, so I just like watching. So I'm not worried about who's bitching and moaning about you oh. know who the fans want. So okay, that's ultimately going to be up to Triple H and what he decides. Oh, he so wants. you follow? You follow? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. I'm immersed in WWE. I was a big, honestly, I was a big fan growing up as a kid. Probably had a window there where I wasn't following as much. But I kind of, you know, keep tabs. It's kind of my release away from, oh, that's from football. Awesome. So, wow. Get out of the Asian. That's what so a awesome. weapon. That's was, so awesome. Nick, were you the GM that said Braves is too big and too intimidating? <laughs> yeah, was that you we heard about? Uh, sorry. Guys... With all due respect, whoever said that, it's, it's <laughs> at, you know, it's asinine. Yes. What, you know, but maybe somebody did say it. I don't know. Look, if they did, Boozed they up. just don't want to own it. You know, so, like, look, I mean, Mike's a great coach. I mean, you guys have had Mike on. I got a lot of respect and admiration for Mike. I'm talking about a, co a damn good coach. Like, But Mike, if, he, yeah. if somebody was to walk and, and you got to meet for the next 20 years, which sucks yeah. for the Colts. Absolutely <laughs> sucks. But if you're interviewing for coaches, somebody walks in and they got three tins of Zin in their <laughs> mouth. Okay. They got Zin here, Zin here, two vapes, yep. Marlboro cigarette, yep. reds, reds, Red. one packed in the yep. yeah. uh, tucked in. And then maybe a beer as well comes in. 
That's not a turnoff? <laughs> I'd probably give him an ashtray number one, number two, probably give him a cup for his dip spin. <laughs> <laughs> this guy knows. Yeah, coach. Oh, yeah. that's, what I'm that's good. That's understanding, your, uh, that's understanding your talent. Hey, we appreciate the hell out of you, man. I appreciate you guys. Good thanks luck the rest of the way. Yeah, Ladies thanks. and gentlemen, Have fun. Nick Casario. Yeah. 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 How serio? I like to hear that. Yeah. We were right. We had it right time. the whole time. Yeah. Uh -huh. yep. Thanks a lot, Do Tom. It. He seems to have it all figured out. Yeah. yeah. Bobby Slowick. Also yeah, staying. Around. Yeah. I wonder what the contingency plan, because they dodged a bullet. You know, with him not. Yeah, but it seems like with Ben Johnson, you just never know. You, like, there's a chance that he's there for like another three yeah, years. Exactly. Got a good situation. I bet he got paid. CJ Stroud. No. Maybe no coaches get fired next year. Hey. Yep. Hey, you have said you haven't wavered. Seven to eight. Seven to ten. You said you haven't wavered, and we've gotten to the time now where. Yeah. Mm. Well, oh. hold on. Rapport's out there, I think. He was. I saw. Oh, yeah. he, he, he flicked, flicked us, flicked us off, off from the back. There's Rapport the right there. there. There he is. Perhaps she was in the back there. Look at how sweet it is. Hey, lower that. Uh, I wish I had some. We got <laughs> yeah, to lower Bruce. 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 Hey, Bruce. Does this thing go down? down? There we go. Thanks. Keep going down. <laughs> That's sweet messed up, but not wrong. No, now it's good. Keep going down, Bruce. Yeah, Bruce. Oh, Bruce. Bruce. Bruce, keep going. I can hear you guys just so you know. Oh. Okay. Oh, shit. Okay. Please keep going, Bruce. To put these on and not mess up my hair. Is it? Ladies and gentlemen, Ian Rap. Let me be in. Oh, yeah, Rap Sheet. Always Ian. Rap Sheet, Chuck's about to make his pick for the weekend, you know, and he's been really hot in the sports gambling world this year. Really? Is there anything he needs to know? Like, who was the player that got bit by a coyote? Yeah. Like, that type of you know, information. Sadly, I hear that's false. Uh, oh, Las Vegas oh, locally is not putting out. That's bullshit. That's not lie. real. I heard that was false. Now, not confirmed because it is always possible that that happened. Um, You're drunk. I'm not drunk. Yeah, 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 how drunk I mean, have I you been? It. How drunk have you been out here yeah. in Vegas? Vegas, what a what a what? Oh my God! It's a whirlwind. I went to U2 last night. I may have had a drink there. Oh. Not it's, a lot of. What do you like think? What do you think yeah. of it? I thought the actual like um, visual product was good. The yep. music was kind of okay. He was right, might, he's in it right I, here. I might go to Wu Tang uh, Friday. That would be better. sure. At the Sphere. Bet you will. No, but I don't care. So we uh, we were at the said event last What'd night. You think? Pretty much what you said. Yep. Exactly. Terrible. We opened up the show. Terrible. Okay. Yeah, they stopped one minute into the show today, we did a nice 10 minute breakdown of how I was bad. not going to say. <laughs> no, you can say Terrible. it. You can yeah. say it because we all feel it. Say it. Sphere was cool. <laughs> say it. It looked good. Yeah. It and actually, when they were using it, good. but then they stopped using it. For like an hour. Yes, <laughs> yeah. thank you. Yeah, yeah, we all felt the and same at way. At the end, I was like, oh, now we're talking. Oh, you stayed. Oh, oh you, yeah. we left before the end. We got out. Well, they there. were still serving, so I'm not going to like. <laughs> Just saying. You really walked out. Did they oh, do yeah. any songs that you knew at the they end? Play a hit? They played a beautiful hits? day or did play Yeah, they day. they did both of those. Uh, uh, a. We it's missed a it. Beautiful day. Three hours in. It was uh, it was like muted though. You know what I mean? Oh, like, oh my god! god. Kind of like, Can't even hear the song that we know. Hello, oh, he hello. sucks. No, they, we did not hear hello, hello. No. That, no. that seems like the first song of every. How does that go, Ty? Oh, I can't do it with my voice right now. But um, whoa, you you play an intro? There it is. Me. You're playing injured? Yeah. Uh, not really. I kind of lost my voice on uh, the first night we got here. Maybe not the wisest move when you got to be on TV for you know, four hours every single day. But, uh, <laughs> what were you doing? Gold Knights. He's beating, beating the Oilers. Edmonton Oilers. <laughs> yeah. Breaking the streak. You know what? Worth it. I yeah. take it back. Is there any news we need to know about, though? Is there anything that you're working on, or is, is this all like, hey, Raps meeting new people to get information from, Raps doing There's podcasts? Some of, that, right. some of that. Not a lot of pod, a lot of NFL Network stuff, not a lot of podcasts. Are you guys Dodge. in here? Yeah, we're over there. Nice. Yeah, not not as nice as this. This is a good setup. Pretty good set. Pretty good setup. Pretty proud of it. Should be. Mystic Studio. Yes. From Norwood, Massachusetts. Matt, they nailed it. I thought so too. Now my wife snuck in and took a nice picture behind your desk. What? She looked. Yep. Yeah, that was kind of an issue the first couple of days. Was it? Yeah. Will Compton did our show from here, yep. yeah. which is cool. I'm happy to hear that. You're a lot of photos of the place. Uh, but I didn't share on social media. I was told don't share, so I shared it properly. Well, oh, okay. Well, others did. Wow. Yeah, good. don't worry about it. You're a good person. So there's nothing we need to know. No. All right, Jeez. ladies and gentlemen. Insider from NFL Network. His contract's up soon. You saw the big Wall Street Journal yeah. article. Oh, yeah. A couple articles. Yeah, they're on your side. We don't know what that's like for those people to write stuff on our side, but they were putting you over. 10 million a year. And they're right. Yeah, maybe 40 million a year. 40 million a year. 50 million a year. What? He deserves a big one. Doesn't he? Does he? Big one. He was your sure. source? You leaked to him? Was this your guy? No, not enough. Right? Not enough. Others in, don't the settle. Others in the don't building settle. leaked more, I will say. Rap sheet. Others in the building leaked There's more, I would say. More. Right. Whoa. 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 Chuck, did you, you hear that? You never get what you want in life. You get what you deserve, and you deserve more. Chuck, you had rats in the building? <laughs> Chuck, did you hear there's you no, rats? No, rat. no, 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 no. All good. rats, Chuck. You had All good, but, you know. Bellagio Bob? 
Is that who it was? <laughs> you Ladies and gentlemen, he a rapper. Thank you, buddy. Thanks, guys. Hey, rap team. Rap team. Play rap. Dying, thieving rap team. rat. Nobody's really giving no us injury. anything. No injury, nothing. Ever. Nobody no, nothing. gives us anything. No. No, no. He'll break it on the way to where he's going right now. Schultz does, up. but it's as real as... Schultz walks by. He didn't see him. Dust. He didn't yeah. see him earlier. All right, we're out of here. It's been a long one today. Great one. I didn't expect this coming into today's show. Ooh, look at the mic stand. <laughs> it's much different than the thing is that somebody's that. belly button <laughs> for the normal human. We had some telltale tubbies on earlier. Okay. So Gary man needs a nap, Connor. What'd you say? So man needs a nap. You, you, a hey, nap. hold on yeah, though. You need some applesauce too. Hold on. Oh, Ovaltine, maybe. So hold on. Ovaltine. Hey, uh, nice you, need, you need to let us know who we're betting on though. You yeah. said you haven't wavered. That means it's right. Yeah. So as we think about who we're going to pick for tomorrow, who do you like? Kansas City. Why? Chiefs? I did not expect that. 15 and Reed. Andy Reed. Pat Mahomes. I think uh, Kelsey. Spags in that defense. Oh. Bide. Bide. They'll Chris have a Jones. plan for CMC. They got to they gotta limit him. Limit the explosives. They're going to create a couple turnovers. Kansas City. Get Brock like, like Baltimore. Forced him into four, four interceptions. Jeez. I don't think he'll throw four interceptions, but I like Kansas City in this one. I have a hard time betting against. The underdogs What's are all the line? right. One and a half. Oh, it's down to one and a half. It started at it, two and a half. Anywhere right? you can find it. One and a half what's to two the, and a half. What's the uh, 47 public? and a half. Oh, 70% uh, Chiefs. Mm. But, but, wow. I'll say that. Hold on. 70% Chiefs, but like the million dollar, $500,000, those are all in, coming in on the Niners. So the big money Niners. The, the shops. Oh, oh. The shops. Or just, going on or just rich Mattress people. Mac, what's he doing? I don't know. Well, he's he, always day before. He, he's on a kind of a losing streak. What about Billy Walters? Uh, it's, in in a, book. it's in a book. It's in a book. I can't read it yet. It's in a book. All right. So you're on the Chiefs. To win. win Chuck. Never waver. Go, Chuck. You? I'll pick tomorrow. Oh, that's right. Tomorrow's Friday. But you and I might be on the same side. Ooh. Or might not be. Oh. Might not be. We might be on the same side then. But there's a chance that we're not. Ah. ah. But. Ooh. Hey, thanks for yesterday. Yeah. And all season. Oh, yeah. You. yeah. You. Yes. You're stud, Chuck. No, that was memories, right? We do this for memories. Yeah. That, yeah. Was, a, that was a moment. Babies and memories. That was you're, a moment. You're a man. You we had a, a lot moment. of great ones this year. You boxed. Yep. Yeah. Three, round, Joe, three Joe. full rounds. Three full rounds against Uncle Joe. You said Frick and then fuck him. That was so hard. AJ, <laughs> you know how hard that was? I, I apologize. You beat Ugly Joe. He's though. like, oh, hey, you played ping pong? <laughs> yeah. But you beat that the hell out of him. You know, three full rounds with this guy, and he threw probably 6,000 punches. Now, two. You know I've had open heart. I mean, I've been through some <laughs> yeah. stuff. Yeah, yeah I thought you would knock him out. What if I go down? I didn't think about that. What if you would have been bummed out if I would have went down? We would not have been on a wide shot. We would have moved the drill down 10 yards. Riverside. defibrillator. We would have moved. In the, yeah, yeah we, we, we got all the safety yeah, stuff. Yeah, yeah. Can't be bummed out. I texted the chat coach. Hey, guys. Chuck's got hard. Let's keep out. We might want to tag him out. Yeah, Darius was in Florida texting. <laughs> Excuse me. Can we throw in the towel maybe for our guy? <laughs> <laughs> I, hey, I, I want to awesome, make sure you're man. good, coach. This is a bad Got gray a little bit here. Hell yeah. Ugly Joe. Jonas Sato. Jonas Sato. It was a hell of a year by you, Chuck. Oh my god. Oh, absolute Is blast. this PTSD here? Oh, absolute blast. This guy. <laughs> yeah, fuck. We're not sitting through this. Yeah. Let's get out of here. All right. Remember what you put me through before we even started boxing? What's that? The Rocky song going, you know, and Oh yeah. Trying to get you hot, f fired up. That's what you showing. Italians do. You Boy, box. That the Italians wear, box. That wears sweet Ferragamo. Sweet, you look sweet today. Yeah. Commendatore. Yeah. Minga. Remember That's all you kept saying. What was his middle name? Francis. No, no. Sebastian. Commendatore. Vincenzo. No. Apollo. No. It was. It was something. What? Leone. Leone. We're done. What? Leone. Leone. Okay. Chuck. Chuck. <laughs> all right. See you guys. Go, hey, go. great work today. Hey. You too. Hey. Great great work. Work. You too. You too. You too. You too. No. 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 You, you won. Not you too. No. You too. You. What? Just like last night. Yeah. You, you too. You too. No, you. Edge, Bono, manager, drummer. All the boys. All the boys spinning around up there. Yep. If How I about Ian Rapport having the same take as us? Yeah. Yeah, I was surprised. I thought I, I was. He I was hoping he was going to come and be like, loved it. It was the best concert I've ever seen. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I think Which everyone one? had the same takeaway.
Town Diggs, Darius J. Butler, A.J. Hawk, Chuck Pagano, all the people that stopped by. We will be back tomorrow wrapping up this radio row. Uh, WWE press event is happening yeah, in is. like a couple hours. Go. Yep. 210. On the cock. I was supposed to be there nine minutes ago. Sorry, what? Okay. Yep. No, yeah, because I'm hosting it no, alongside I know, Michael Cole. But that's a little obnoxious. Yeah, I don't know how they expected that, to be honest. Three, and I told him that seems like a seems like a three hours beforehand. Seems like a far. There's a lot to figure out. I think it's a pretty big story. No, there's, there's no, not. No. There's got, a lot of stories. There's not. You got to let him there's, finish the story. No, no, no. You don't. You got to tell him. Hey, I was talking about Rock. Oh, okay. Let Rock finish his story. Well, that ain't how everybody feels. And what did he no. say? The Cody fucking loser Twitter people. The, the Cody crybaby. Cody crybaby. Cody cry babies. Cody cry babies. Cry babies. Cry babies. Those oh. nuggets. <laughs> how you gonna do it? Fuck I don't it. have to chug coffee. Bono kept me up all night Ed. <laughs> with his wizardry ways. He walked around that thing like he's a wizard. He oh, yeah. he he's floating around yeah. that thing. He carried a balloon that was like 8,000 feet in the air. Oh. But Down the street. What happened with the door, Bono, if you see this? What happened with the door? We had a door and then just nothing. Nobody was home. Um, he's going to give the balloon. And then just actually nobody was home. Nobody's home. We're I just moving along. I guess. Yeah. Like, uh, people should leave just like I did this door. Where'd you guys get these sweet hats at? Gary V. You miss it. Yeah, Gary. Where? Oh, you guys only got hats. Here yeah, right here. Yeah. We got ambitious. We got holographic Vmon back there. Damn. Damn. Yeah, hundred thousand dollars per card. What? Oh, yeah. Is it an actual card or is it a digital thing? No, it's an actual card. Well, I do wonder who's set the value. All right, let's go. Uh, we'll be back tomorrow. <laughs> We'll see you guys then. Be a friend, tell a friend something nice. It might change your life. We're in this thing together. Come on. Team on me. Team on three. One, two, three. Team. Hell yeah. See you tomorrow. Goodbye.